So the cool thing is the with the new OBS, I can see chat in OBS now. Uh, the other one I had didn't, so I'm kind of neat. Sweet. However, we are not public. So right now, there's an EFAP stream happening and no one knows about it. That's pretty exciting. It is. Again, back to the basics, all right? We just sit down. Have How a cozy is that? That's the thing. That's the, I've titled this one. We're just having a chat. We're winding down. Having... Just chatting. Just chat. Just chatting. In fact, we've got lots to chat about because the we're going to use this one to catch up on all the stream labs that I haven't caught up with in a while. Huh. All right. all right. Do that first, and then I think we'll gun for the Rings of Power ones. Go for as long uh, as we can. Yeah, can we, we, we can finally close the chapter, the door on that chapter. Of Maybe. <laughs> We're still closing chapters to other Super Chats offline, so it's, you know, it's this whole thing. That's true. It's been a, it's been a great year for, uh, for like big, you know, big speculative fiction like media. Yeah. This year, like big intellectual properties, you know, it's been great. Now, uh, uh, if you have chat, let me know if me or the guys need to be leveled up or down, because this is new, all right? Uh, this is the first time we've streamed EFAP from this new PC, so things won't be quite the way I probably want them to be. In fact, I should probably check my levels for um, the PC, right? I think I settled on like 50 for when I was doing it. I see it's 39 right. right now. I don't know if that's too low or not. Okay, now it's on 50. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. 50 seems solid. I don't know. Yeah, halfway. Not it's too... It's funny because, Rags, when you first told me about the option, you were like, oh, yeah, make sure you kick the whole, like, don't let it change from other stuff. It's like, I've done that. It didn't do shit. Oh, yeah. The, it still changes. The other... You know, it's just mm. like, don't let other apps change the, the sound of the volume or whatever. And it's just like, well... It still does. Still does. But, but mm, seems very quiet, strange. But very strange. It's, what, it's worth noting, guys. I've been... I was playing God of War, like, not just a couple hours ago. I haven't slept. <laughs> I'm very tired. We've all been that's, that's the update for those who don't know in the EFAP world is that uh, God of War hit many of the EFAP Spherians as a, like a train. We've been going nuts on it. Yeah, um, and I, and I'm well behind of uh, Muller and, and Metal. They're they're well ahead of me. So. I think yeah, Metal's almost at the point of having completed everything. I've mm -hmm. started doing the end game, well, post end game stuff, I guess. And I'm like, what, only halfway, maybe? Um, yeah, it's hard to say, you know? Even even as someone who's completed, it's hard to say, because I can't remember how much stuff you've got to do that's not story. Mm, which I I feel like I've been doing a ton of like non-story. I, I feel like I'm trying to make sure that no stone is left unturned. Like, try and find everything in every big open world stretch. So, kind of taking my time with it, absorbing it in. Having a blast. Is that controversial, chat? I think it's probably nice. this this I think, it, I think it's really good. This humble hear, chat here is <laughs> see the first thing I, I see, it's woke, say, but it's alright. <laughs> I hear you've been saying some cringe things during Waller's playthroughs. Uh oh, I someone told on you, chat. Yeah. That that there's been some cringe things like God of Soy or whatever. <laughs> You're always. I guess you would have a god. You'd have you'd have Talk a god of of war story. or something. I don't know. <laughs> like it's, I, just, I would probably uh, have a, a god of soy if I made the game. <laughs> His name is the yeah. god of soy. What he's made of soy or like he's what, what miserable he and he slowly slaps across the floor as he like tries to. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's like got this attitude of just not wanting to do anything. They're like, come on, yeah, man, we gotta yeah. go. And he's just like, oh. Oh, no, that, that would be God of Boar. Uh, oh. Yeah, God of Boar. The thing yeah. is, the God of Soy, he would come through in the end. You know, that would make that arc happen. We'd need to see it. The God of Soy would come in Theo right when we need him. We, ch we chatted with Theo on my stream just, like, not a few hours ago. Uh, he's got interesting perspectives on the game, for sure. Yeah, to say Theo hates the game probably gives you a, a particular impression. It's a little bit more complicated. Productive. Yeah, it's it's more complicated and, and interesting and worthwhile. Like in terms of like examining <laughs> that perspective, Theo's perspective I see shared by very few people, and I don't mean that in that it's unreasonable. I mean that he's got a very unique POV compared it's to better than, it's better than God of Soy. Let's put it that way. Like, <laughs> in terms of a perspective against that game, yeah, I don't think he's gunning for the God of Soy thing. Um, yeah, Boy of War, 
Christmas sucks? What is this? I will not support that sentiment. Christmas is cool. It's no, always I, better. Okay? I don't like well, yeah, Christmas is, is coming. It's, it's it is. And, it's and I'm already prepared. I, I've spent ages getting these all set back up. But look, the Christmas cover is already good to go. Complete Ooh, with icicles. I think look the, look the one thing I forgot Christmas. when we did the Halloween one this year, because his old thingy was putting the webbing in. Um, but see, we got gaming is, is good to go. Mini mm -hmm. movies. They're all functioning. It's good to know. But they're all working. Mm -hmm. Do you understand how fucking long it takes? You need to set them up all individually because, like, when I say individually, I mean individual files and names because OBS, like, has a program-wide control over every single, like, source. So, th let's just say there's there's not many efficient ways of setting it all up, but now that once you've done it all, it's very efficient. It works perfectly. So, yeah, the vibes will be there. Don't worry. We'll have to record a Christmas Eve at movies. Momentum will increase well, because of uh, this new station I'm at, I'm sure. How very exciting. Yes. What would be the Christmas film, though? What, what would be the Christmas I mean, film is a great question. Die Hard, uh, Die Hard is a Christmas movie, as far as I'm concerned. We could, we could watch Die Hard. That'd be fine. Yeah. We'll fetch yeah, some I'd people to watch it with us. Um, will it be something that will be a good EFAT movies, or will we just be sitting there watching it and enjoying it for a good movie? Well, I watched a good Die movie. Hard last Christmas. Um, so if I knew we were watching it and had to commentate, I'll go look at the IMDb trivia so I have something to say. Did you know Bruce Willis was in this film? Mm hmm and Then you guys be like, Whoa, dude. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. I oh, imagine that. Why don't we get started? Uh for those who are curious, the plan is now Ot D E Fap in a week's time. Um, and then Ragnarok E Fap a week after that. Okay. Post that. Not 100% sure, because we still need to take um, a week off at some point. I suppose it's better to space them out instead of doing them at some time, so we'll uh, we'll figure it out. I see loads of people waiting for that hot D, so I'm going to have to spend the next week doing mm, a rewatch, getting some notes. We'll try and get suitable guests, but um, we are running out of the time to the point where if they can't make it, we're just going to have to go without them. Um, which sucks, but, you know, the uh, last thing we want That's is for Hot D for to get Moon Knighted, okay? We don't want that. That would be bad. Moon Knight so, didn't even deserve to be Moon Knighted. Or well, it did. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know if it did or didn't. That's a complex oh, question. That's a good question. And or. So I think the plan right now is that myself, Rags and Freemy, will try and catch up and watch it, make some notes, and we'll do an episode talking about the show as a whole. Not sure what the format will be in terms of, like, a chronological breakdown, or might rather just like big subjects. I think that's more likely, though. Mm. Um, I know that everyone has been very upset that we haven't talked more about Andor. The thing is, I'm just gonna be completely honest with you. I just it, it it sunk under my radar. It just disappeared. Uh, There's been a lot of stuff we've been doing, a lot of things to watch, a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, it's remember there was a time when we were watching four shows. It yeah, um, and it arrived right at like the peaks and ends of the Rings of Power and She-Hulk stuff, and then right before the obsession with Ragnarok was about to start, and so it didn't get its time, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, I question they release plans with stuff like that, because Disney is Star Wars and Marvel, right? So they should probably move them around to be less fringe. Uh, I imagine that they have tried to do that for a long time, but the sheer quantity of like stuff that they're making probably makes that quite difficult now. I suppose so. To make you know, especially when it's twelve episodes, that's that's gonna be like it. And and you know, there's uh, I think it pr premiered with like three, so that's like at least three months, right? Would you ever like, if you were them, be like, oh, we need to move it around so that like something like Wakanda Forever that needs to be on an island, it needs to absorb as much attention as possible. Meanwhile, you know, Andor, I'm so worried about it being boring to the audience. We need to release it alongside something else or something like that. Um, I I would. I can imagine that there would be those types of conversations about when it should come out, like optimally in terms of making money rather than I'm pretty sure that like the film, uh, they're set in stone like years in advance, whereas TV shows are a bit more, you know, like they can sort of be adjusted, it seems. Because mm -hmm. like I'm pretty sure that a lot of I'm pretty sure that like Disney, like you can just look up their slate up until like 2025. And they've got a bunch of things. A lot of them would just be like untitled Marvel or like untitled disney live action but like they know when these things are coming out and they've got set set dates which are usually like may july november you know peak times though i don't know how many favors it's really done them this year by the looks of things they're still making money but like you know well, 
Um, all right, like I said, I'll start with Streamlabs. This will this will cross between all kinds of subjects, so who knows? The grab bag. Uh, the comment that anger and rage is seen positive in men is wrong. As small, weak boy with a temper that was bullied, I was always told how I should not get angry in any situation. What's a food that doesn't go well with bacon? That is literally the follow-up. What the fuck? Okay, we'll, oh, <laughs> we'll separate like these. Oh, chocolate. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll separate these out. So, <laughs> as for the first thing, the, uh... Anger and rage is seen as positive in bed is wrong. I, I didn't realize that was a thing anyway. The anger and rage is yeah. always seen as a positive in men. I think it's surely it's a neutral. Like it can it can be seen as a positive. Well, it can it ever see, can it's rage often be seen as a negative? I think I, I would say know, it's more likely to be seen as a negative and positive. Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anger, if anything, I think it's quite vilified. Yeah. Yeah, because there are times where a person will have something done to them, and them getting angry, it'll be like, "Well, that's very suitable, and I can respect that they're gonna fucking rage out, sort of thing." But uh, most of the time, yeah, it's a sign of like, "Uh oh, they're gonna do something that they shouldn't do." Um, yeah, it's the dark side. Did we learn nothing from Doya? As for Wants a food that doesn't go well with bacon. Yeah, I think you're right about chocolate. That's not exactly... They don't seem to blend, do they? Yeah. Maybe, no, uh... Why? Maybe, like, a. Uh, what about, like, mayo? <laughs> put some... <laughs> put some... Get it, get yourself a nice strip of bacon this and just... just guarantee... Put some mayo on there. There's someone uh, in chat who's uh, like, You don't like mayo and bacon? Well, there's someone who's probably does the same thing with chocolate, but those are the very strange, weird people. There you go, it goes good, there you go. BLT has mayo, they're all citing BLT rags. I think what they don't realize is, I assume you're talking about almost using a piece, slice of bacon as like a spoon and... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> that's so... God, that sounds like hell. Oh, I suppose nice all sources... Spoon to just... Yeah, and you can reuse the bacon if it's crispy, so you can just... The, oh. the mayo off the top of it and then dip it back in. Oh. It's like a meaty piggy spoon. Uh. <laughs> Bacon should never be used as a spoon. <laughs> There's probably some times where it's okay. Uh, next one says Han shot last. Oh my goodness. I don't think that's acceptable to say. Well, unless they're trying to say he shot last in that he was the only one who shot, so he, he shot both first and last. I suppose ah. that's true. Yeah, you're right. The Greedo oh, that was a chance. Joke. I think that was, was... joking. Robot Chicken, where it was like he shot. Oh, but that was about Boba Fett. Ah. He shot first and last. He doesn't use the force. He just uses force. He's never had a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Robot um... Chicken Star Wars is pretty funny. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the, those those clips were popping up in our uh, Kenobi and Boba Fett coverage, right? Or at least the Boba Fett coverage. Mm. Um, Mola, can you recite? Oh, yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Can you recite the first verse of Master of Puppets in the voice of Davy Jones? After PTSD from Rings of Power, I rewatched the extended Lord of the Rings trilogy, and it was great. Yeah. Oh, that's not to do with the first bit. Well, um, recite the first verse of Master <laughs> of Puppets in the voice of Davy Jones. I don't, I don't know the first bit. I like, I love the song. I'm afraid I don't know the lyrics that well, but I also. Um, I haven't tested my Davy. <laughs> I say that I haven't tested my Davy Jones accent in a while. It's pretty much my Mamiya voice. Like the same thing, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, maybe someday, uh, if I can prep it or something without sounding hyper cringe. Um, after PTSD from Rings of Power, rewatched the extended Lord of the Rings trilogy, and it was great. All right, thumbs up to that. <laughs> just, yeah, just in general, good. good stuff. Uh, what is y'all's favorite extra scenes? Mine is Saruman's death and Bilbo and Frodo in Fellow Fellowship, I guess. Um. Yeah, my my automatic pick is the Saruman scene. It's it's top notch. Yeah, I I think the issue there is that it's probably the deleted scene that's most required to actually resolve yeah. plot issues. So it kind of elevates it above everything else, as far as I'm aware. It does everything. So it fills you in gaps. Have to say it. Yeah. But it also does some great character shit. Like Saruman dresses down like everybody there really well, and it makes for a good start in terms of we build like because especially for like Theoden. He's, he has his own shit to do in that movie. Basically, everybody does. And then, of course, yeah. Grima, giving him, like, a bit of a redemption of sorts and telling us what happened to him. Uh, but not counting that one, because I almost feel it's it's, that, that, it's almost unfair. Yeah. Uh, but I would probably go with the uh, uh, Boromir, Faramir, and Denethor and Osgiliath. That's a chonky scene, too. Yeah, and it gives it you a lot of info. 
Yeah, we learn a lot about Baramir Faramir's relationship. <laughs> Baramir. More about, of course, Baramir Faramir, <laughs> uh, Forimor. Uh, we learn about the two brothers and Denethor and all of their relationships with everybody else. Um, and, and I more Baramir is always welcome. So I think that's probably my favorite. But it's really tough because pretty much all of them, I think, except for one... I like. I don't think I like the one where the Witch King just breaks Gandalf's staff. I'm like, how the fuck did you do that? What, what what the fuck? How'd you do that? What? And then nothing ever comes of it. Uh, but uh, I'd have to rewatch it and see. But I think that's the one. It's the Osgiliath scene, which is in the Two Towers extended edition. So yeah. we kind of learned post Boromir's death some setup for him going to Rivendell and his relationship with Faramir. You got one, Fringy? Uh, well, yeah, just go with Saruman, <laughs> like that one. I think I agree with what Rag said. It's like so essential that it, like, kind of just like necessarily. Well, any is, if is they the, were, if that one was discounted, is there any others off the top of your head? Um, not right now. No, my brain is. <laughs> What's funny is um, I've seen extended so many times. Sometimes I can't actually forget which ones are even that, extended. Yeah, yeah exactly. What's exactly. That, no. They are the correct versions. Jailed mm -hmm. if you think otherwise. Did it, I'm pretty sure I've told you guys, but I'll keep telling you guys this the most shocking information ever. It was only as of like a half a year ago that Drinker saw the extended visions. What? Wow. Jesus wow. Christ. Really? Yeah, and he was like surprised. Oof. And me, Gary, and Az almost died. We were just like, how did you the horror? It should be required viewing. I I think a yeah. close second for me would be um also in the two towers when Faramir captures Bilbo and no. Frodo and Sam. When he captures Frodo and Sam, he they have that that ambush on the Mumakil and all the and the guys going to help out Sauron, and uh, he sees he, one of the guys gets killed. He gets shot by the arrow. One of the uh, one of the baddies gets shot off the Oliphant and he falls down, kind of next to Sam and Frodo. And Faramir sees him and he talks about how basically war is shit. Like what? What could have brought this guy so far from home to die here? Yeah, what was his story? And, you know, basically, isn't, isn't war just shit? Which the more you know about Faramir and what he's trying to do to please, you know, his father and why he does things, he's like it makes a lot of sense. I um see that's a scene that if you had asked me was that theatrical or extended, I might have guessed theatrical because I couldn't remember. I think that's an extended scene. No, so. you're probably right. It's just that's what I mean. Like my mind is a bit blended on that one because I've watched extended a billion times. You see. Um, Lord Longo Two Guns of Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Is there a chance of an Andor fap of Disney's Andor when there's less going on? <laughs> when there's less going on, door, <laughs> 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 it would be a completely normal EFAP of the ages. Uh, yes, <laughs> there is hopes. That, how long until that show is over? Now we've got like another uh, two weeks? one. I think the uh, no. I think oh, the, this week is a finale. Fuck. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, we can't delay the Ragnarok one because that one's already delayed. Well, it just the hot D one was delayed, that so that's there, just right? yeah. There's delays everywhere, everybody. It's funny because mm. if I had, I'm like, well, we could double up. And it's like Christ, mm. and like, we can't double up. At the this thing point. is, is that it feels like there might be a few gaming. Real, like I don't know. I feel like Callisto Protocol might end up being. one. That's true. Dead Space it remake, might. Resident Evil Four, and the remake. They're all going. Resident Evil. This 4 one's going to be seems tough. Guaranteed. This this <laughs> next few months is going to be tough to get uh, everything done. We're going to have to start. Oh, it's going to be tough, but at the same time, it's going to there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Oh, it's going to be fun. Fun about fun and on the bun. It feels like we've got some nice positive ones <laughs> sort of lining up. Ragnarok is more important. Screw Andor. I want you to have to talk about something good in Star Wars. Like, ah, oh, I feel. See, we're gonna get. We, we got I you guys, talk, right? I, we got you. I do want to talk about. I do want to talk about Andor. Like, I, I do. Yeah. I, I want to see it. It's, <laughs> like, I haven't seen well, it. I, just, I also finished I watching keep, it. I keep hearing really good things about it. Jesus Christ, it wouldn't surprise me if the Harfoots ended up extinct by the time the movies took place. Their sheer lack of hygiene and cleanliness is a breeding ground for diseases just waiting for a pandemic to take the barbaric oh. race out. Oh, don't get our hopes up. <laughs> They're probably immune, unfortunately. Like, they got this far. Uh, Galadriel pulling out a dagger just to point at a spot on a map is like Rags pulling out a gun to point at a super chat. Yeah, the difference is that I actually do that. That makes a lot of sense that I do that. But yeah. when, when Galadriel does it, it 
a lot of the scenes feel like that mandated. She has to pull out the dagger scene. She has to be holding a weapon, brandishing a weapon, or using a weapon in some way because that's how that's how you make characters cool is you just have them having weapons. She is very cool, I would say. I am very a... cool. Uh, do, do. Lad Longus Bongleton of Moobtube Avenue. Is there any chance of a monk fap of PP? Jackalson's big monkey movie. When there's less going on, it would be a Harambe of the ages. Dicks out for Frongold. <laughs> I thought at first when they said monk, they were talking about the show Monk. I thought you know, so too. Jungle out there. <laughs> monk. I, uh, yes. Long Kong, I assume Epo Jackson Long Kong is going to happen at some point. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Picture a little Peepo that looks like Peter Jackson now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did you know when did the when the did the Spanish dub of Stuart Little the renamed him to Small Hondro? Small Hondro. Small Hondro. Really? <laughs> Apparently, that's actually funny. Small Hondro. I can believe that. Small Hondro. <laughs> Harfords. Our hearts are even bigger than our feet. Also, Harfords. If you can't keep up, we won't think twice about leaving you behind and letting you die. Yep. Or sabotaging you. I don't know how you miss this as a writer. Like, how? How do you miss that? Yeah. Like, maybe if you want to make them somewhat sympathetic, don't make them also evil. I just... There's stuff like that all over the place. It's just the inverse of when you find the little cool connections of old dialogue with new or different things, like a like an action that represents an overall point of view the character has. You go, oh, that's cool. This is just the opposite of that, where you're like, guys, did you catch that? They said this, but they do that. Like, do... No? That's kind of weird, right, guys? Feels that's like... kind of really strange, isn't it, y'all? Feels like that's not your intention. And then they're just like, oh. Yeah, whatever, it's done. <laughs> You're like, okay. Makes you think, what were, they, what were they trying to do when they wrote that line? What was the intention of the, of the writing? Yeah. I guess I we'll what, you, what did you want me to think? And did you want me to forget about it in five minutes? <laughs> yes, yeah, so must definitely like, yes. You must have thought more, that I'd forget about it in five minutes. But I didn't, more, you see. I know those words were said. Exactly. Like you, I, I actually watched your story and paid attention to what happened, which seems to be <laughs> my mistake. Yes. Yeah. Um, Sorry for giving a shit. Know, like, good stories just seem to more often than not not be flukes. They're like deliberately crafted in in a way where like what they evoke out of the audience is very much intended and like was part of the plan. Yeah. And deliberately, all of everything like coalesced in in favor of realizing that. I don't know. It, it, it would be strange to like, accidentally make a good story. Yeah, it yeah, it really does feel like that. Like that, it's it's way more likely that you accidentally make something shit because <laughs> <laughs> nobody nobody wants to make anything bad, right? Um, have you watched Apple's Foundation series? Two storylines happening in parallel, and it seems like they're both by different writers and directors. One of them is significantly better than and much better Wait. acted. So Apple TV is making a Foundation series, as in I Isaac Asimov's Foundation series? Oh yeah, I've heard of that. I've heard of that, yeah. That, yeah. Ooh, that would be an interesting story, or book series to adapt. But it would simultaneously oh. be something that would be easily destroyed, presumably. Absolutely. The way that it's structured, huge gaps in time, huge different... It's almost like an anthology. Well, they just um, said there's two storylines happening at once, and one of them's bad, one of them's so good, that... in terms of execution, so it's like, oh... Hey, maybe uh, maybe it is multiple writers, or maybe they're just not consistently good. I don't know. Dude, imagine you had a show like that, that it was about two different eras, and it was run by two different like directors, and it was like Rings of Power and Lord of the Rings, like back and back. You'd just be like, oh my god. Mm -hmm. What kind of experience would that be? <laughs> it's like, do you continue? It's like, mm. Brain shock. Yeah. Um, for a fellow fan of Avantasia and Power Wolf, Rhapsody of Fire is pretty sweet too, I guess. But how do you feel about Nano War of Steel? Also check out Arion. The day the world breaks down is longer than the Scarecrow. Oh, uh, no, I haven't. I haven't even heard of um, Arion, but Nana War of Steel sounds vaguely familiar. Um, I always feel bad for the metal fans who expect that I am much more familiar than expected. It sounds but... like the, it sounds like the title of a Joseph Anderson book. Nano Nano War of Steel. I don't know. I think that's better than what he would. He, he, he into Stella Marines. Like <laughs> Stella Marines is very. It's. Hmm. Yeah. It is not the most generic possible thing that you could make as a parody of science fiction at all. Do you know? Um. Because Rags, you watched. Uh, I showed Rags the first scene with Odin and Thor, so he's seen that. Um. Apparently, Joe Fantasy when he was playing it, he asked 
why wouldn't Kratos take the Odin deal? It was a good deal. I'm not familiar with uh, what, uh, what the sun is doing, so I couldn't say myself. Well, so the thing is, like, even with zero context, could you speculate even why he might not take the deal? Well, he doesn't want people controlling him, telling him what to do, and he doesn't know if he could trust these people. Plus, if Mimir has probably told him that this guy's a liar. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rags, for the, for the record, has played zero of God of War. I, wait, is that, that's, I assume that's right. Listen, you, you guys. nailed I've, it, that's it. Here's, here's my experience with Ragnarok. I've literally seen this one scene. That's literally it. Mahler and I were just hanging out, and he said, hey, check this out. I want to get your thoughts. And so I watched that scene, and that was that's all I know. I don't know anything else. I have no I'm, idea what happens. I just assume that's I obviously think what's like, going on here. It takes like one brain cell and basic good faith to be like, Kratos probably doesn't trust him, you know? Yeah, like <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's, kind of, it's kind of baffling that he would say, why didn't Kratos take the deal? It's like, oh, I don't know, man. Uh, where do we start? <laughs> it's all I've seen. I don't know. It's all self. It seems pretty self-contained. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. almost the entirety of your adventures through 2018, you find and discover and are told information of how Odin is a liar. Basically, everything he does is lies. I mean, Mimir. I guess that's. I think that's his name. Yeah. He says specifically in that scene that Odin just lies. That's all he, he says. Does um, well, if Odin tells you the sky is blue, he's lying. Yeah. And a big thing from Kratos is he has got really no reason to distrust Mimir. Like, he has been nothing but helpful yeah. to him. Um, he trusts him, and the fact that he doesn't trust Odin, like, that's enough. Among many other factors, I can't believe that he would have said, why didn't he take the deal? Like, <laughs> I mean, how do you... Like, I feel like you're not even, like, engaging with the story. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> I think, like I said, I didn't even... I was partially bewildered that he would even say it, because I was like, well, even if I didn't know the characters in the story, I could probably imagine plenty of reasons for someone to say, I don't want to take this deal. Mm -hmm. Like, it just seems pretty straightforward, but yeah. Um, compare Supernatural legal shows, She-Hulk versus Angel Season 5. <laughs> there is some legal stuff in Angel Season 5, but it's not really focused on it at all. Um, but it no, probably was... Neither She-Hulk. Well, <laughs> That's yeah, the writers, probably. She-Hulk kind of thinks it is, though. That's the it's thing. weird, yeah. It's, uh, really bad. <laughs> uh, Wong's behavior is completely consistent. He's secretly a Skrull. Uh oh. Mm, maybe he will be. Who knows who's yeah. going to be revealed to be a Skrull all along in Secret Invasion. I'm sure that show won't have massive world-building implications. Also, with magic being discovered thousands of years ago, wouldn't any copyright expire? These people are abusing legal terms more than Ant-Man abuses quantum mechanics. <laughs> well, what does it even mean to impose copyright on like a system? Yeah, like a or some some like force of the universe. Yeah, it's like, like copyright saying, gravity. Copyright over gravity. Yeah, ah, exactly. Yeah. Like, so copyright, how do you do that? Copyright over thermodynam like thermodynamics, or I have copyright over I don't know chemistry, just like as a discipline. <laughs> Man, all. you'd be making shit tons of money with that. And even if you enforce it in the United States, like yeah, cool, bro. And even if you probably only be in a specific state even if you got in all of america it's like yeah there's like another 200 countries that you would have to deal with why don't you just like not get ah oh, sorry no we talked about that show it's done it's done we, we, finished we will it. never ever talk about it again until the next super chat hopefully or oh, talk about yeah. it because oh, yeah, they're all about it they make one well if mm. they do yeah which who knows like that probably is the one that had the worst response, like, of anything they made, right? Like, at least as Can't far as Marvel why. would be concerned. I guess what I mean is from the Marvel I would POV, say yes. that was probably their worst response, because people hated it when it was coming out, which is not the case for most. Like, and Thor, right? Thor probably was another example of... Yeah, Thor is probably a, a runner-up. Yeah. Whereas they probably look at multiverse and go, eh, it was okay. You know, it wasn't as good as we hoped, but it was okay, I bet. <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny. I know you're not a fan of musicals, but have you considered watching La La Land from writer-director of Whiplash? The writing's pretty strong and in... and in... oh, sorry, and is stellar uh, in all other categories. I typically don't like musicals, but it's one of my favorite movies. Um, I, feel I hadn't thought about of, that one. I don't know praise for La La Land here and there. Chat, how do we feel about well, La La Land? If you remember, La La Land was the film that they erroneously gave Best Picture to when it was actually Moon... Moon uh... Moonlight? Yeah, Moonlight won. Right, yeah. What do you mean that they erroneously was, yeah. gave it to? 
Uh, oh, do you not? So uh, at the Oscars, they were like, oh, the, the best film, with the, you know, the, the Oscar for best film, La La Land. And then they get up on stage and talk and it's like, no, wait, no, it was Moonlight as best picture. You didn't win it. Moonlight won. They gave it to the wrong they, they people. They said the wrong card or yeah. they read it wrong? Well, or? He had the weird. wrong card. The card actually was for best like actress and it was for Emma Stone in the film. And like he read it as them having won the, the best picture. Oh, you had Moonlight. one job. Just read the cards. Have... Well, the funny <laughs> part is that I think there were two of them up there and the guy kind of hesitated because he was looking at it and probably confused. And then I think the person next to him read it out. Ah, <laughs> I see. Yeah, that was yeah. tragic. Oops. But this I was... Mean, um. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel like that happened with something else. Somebody was supposed to get an award and they read it wrong. What? Oh, I remember that there was a, I remember it was, this is such an obscure reference, but I remember it. There was a, there was a show called Australia's Next Top Model where like they, the, the runner up was declared the winner and then they had to like go like, oh wait, no, whoops. <laughs> you uh, didn't win. <laughs> they won. It's just <laughs> Trump is mine now, bitch. I'm keeping it. It's awkward for everyone involved. Well, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like. It's an honest mistake, but like, man, sucks. <laughs> you thought you won and you lost. <laughs> like, oh. I saw him. Um, um, I asked for takes on it. We got like a mix of it's great, it's okay, it's not very good. I liked it, overrated. And then someone said, La La Land is where the Teletubbies live. Which <laughs> I think. Is well, that true? I thought La La was just one of the Teletubbies. I thought La La, you, yeah. Uh, where, well, I could, I could look it up. I'll bring you telling his story. Did either of you watch First Man? It was. From the guy who did La La Land and Whiplash I did, actually, well. yeah. What'd you think of it? Meh. I think it's, like, meh generally, but I really liked the moon, like, sequence. I, I thought that was pretty great. I don't know that... Yesterday... I've forgotten yeah. a lot of it. It didn't do anything to me, heart-wise. Um, well, so, for me, the, the moon landing stuff was much more, like, spectacle and, and like, filmmaking. Like, the, I thought that that was really impressive as a sequence. Um, like that part, I remember pretty distinctly. Um, but yeah, like the rest of the movie is more like, eh, w like Whiplash, man. <laughs> like Whiplash. It's so great. Yeah, yeah. But I hear La La Land's really good, so maybe that's worth looking at. I didn't see the same meh movie that you guys did, but yesterday I saw a movie that I thought was pretty meh. Uh, Local Hero from 1983. Haven't heard that of it. I thought it was pretty meh. Anyway, uh, to, to answer the Teletubby question, the TQ, <laughs> uh, Teletubbies live in the appropriately named Teletubby land, ah. <laughs> which is like calling where I live America land. Um, no, it's just, it's just um, American like calling, land where well, the Americans it, live. I guess it would be like calling it human land, right? Because it's all human. Sort of. It, I guess, yeah. Well, so the that's the thing. Are the Teletubbies a species, or is that their tribe name and that they've killed all other... <laughs> <laughs> well, I assume my head canon is that each of the Teletubbies, Tinky Winky, Dipsy, Lala, and Poe, because they are different colors, um, and Dipsy does seem to be a, a different shade of flesh, uh, that they are from their last surviving members of four different tribes, uh, as they live in a, a, a radically uh, bar uh, barbaric and uh, feudal sort of system. They found peace uh, where, where after so much yeah, war. So, yeah, they they all were brought together by the the grief of having their <laughs> tribes wiped out, and so they they banded together. Uh, another very interesting fact, as you all know, do you know what the name of the the dome, the the sci fi Shire place that they live their house? Do you know what it's called? No, no I it is called the Tubbytronic Superdome. Now, <laughs> see, there's a lot of tech being involved in their existence that. Begs questions. Let's put it that way. Well, I mean, yeah, they got TVs in their their bellies. They cyborgs. And yeah. I'm going to give you another very fun fact that I just happened to click here. Uh, under the people also ask section that Google has, the question is: Is the Teletubby house real? Um, and while it's of course real to all of us, uh, the answer is the Teletubby's famous home is now a pond after the owners got fed up with tourists. The iconic Tubby home has been filled with water as the show celebrates 20 years since it hit our screens. The sloping green hill and wimp stone works was home to Tinky Winky Dipsy La La and Poe from March of 97 until 2001. So unlike the, uh, unlike the Shire, it seems that the owners got so fed up with tourists that they just leveled it and turned it into a pond. <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. Uh... And why do we cry? 
because it was real. Wait, 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 wait. There's the other, the question beneath this is why did Tinky Winky get fired? <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, he got fired. <laughs> he got fired. Okay. Um original Tinky Winky actor Dave Thompson left the show after the first few episodes following creative differences. <laughs> <laughs> How many creative differences? Just <laughs> bounce around in your costume and make noise, you freak. <laughs> many creative differences. Like, oh, I really wanted to take Tinky Winky into a more Renaissance man philosopher kind of angle. Well, it's like Bumblebee him. Man when he's like, I just, I just don't, you know, like <laughs> we're trying to create like, like <laughs> art here. Well, yeah, you like uh, jump to the side. Go, he's like, I just don't think Tinky Winky would do that. I just, I feel like yeah. he's. He's a changed man. He's a different man. He'd say, oh, really? Yeah, after his tribe was executed. <laughs> <laughs> then as the last survivor, I feel like that would affect his Dude, there's character. like an episode where he discovers like ancient tablets that describe the Great War and his tribe having been <laughs> annihilated by Poe's like, tribe. Well, <laughs> well they're out there. Uh... As he reminisces on his lost life, <laughs> his family and all, friends. All, all the four Teletubbies. <laughs> Screaming as well. It's got to be Vietnam flashback. <laughs> flashes them screaming as heavy. You <laughs> and I are taking different podcast. angles because in in my mind we've got the four Teletubbies and they're out and they're dancing and singing and having having a great time and everything's wonderful and the baby's son God is laughing and then we have that Milan moment where they're singing and then they come across the remnants of the battle and they just cross <laughs> over a hill. It's like a mass grave. <laughs> That's and the music stops. See, again, that that inspires the like a different fighting. <gasps> different story in my mind of like they have a guest, you know, because they sometimes have guest humans or whatever, and it's just like a human's really happy. And they discover that the second any of them discover the mass grave, the, the detectives have to kill them. It's like you wandered too far. Um, but it was uh, too. F <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to post this. That caught me off guard. That's an image for you to think about. So, first off, <laughs> the Tinky Winkies are fucking bigger than I thought they were. The Tinky because Winkies of course are big. <laughs> I'm sorry, I meant the Teletubbies. The Teletubbies <laughs> are bigger than I thought. For whatever, I don't know why that should surprise me, but it does. Because I know there's adults in there, so I guess they are adult-sized. But I guess I imagine them much smaller for whatever reason. The point being <laughs> was that the thing I was reading about the Tinky Winky actor Dave Thomas getting fired following creative differences is this article here. Uh, says that it was later reported that the show's production company had implied the character was gay. <laughs> he didn't want that. He was like, no, Tinky Winky is not gay. Uh, yeah, the uh, some disgruntled viewers claimed the character was gay as he carried a red handbag sold with a U.S. evangelist warning parents that the lovable purple alien was the gay pride color, <laughs> while his triangle oh. antenna was the gay pride symbol. He's the what? gay one because he has a bad back. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's pretty oh, impeccable yeah. logic. I like how their mind went went instead to, he. it went straight to he's gay instead of, oh, it's probably a girl then, I guess, right? <laughs> I can't have Tinky Winky be a girl. <laughs> It's it's better that he's gay than he's a girl. <laughs> but also, that's not allowed. <laughs> I, as well as, like, you can be inspired and entertained by this psycho-alien horrible monster thing, but not if he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> what the What's amazing what? is they have, they have a picture here, and it just screams gay to me. I don't know about y'all, but this is the gayest stinky winky. <laughs> oh. Oh, my goodness. This is a legendary show. There's so much to dig out of it. What a rabbit of hole this is. I mean, I mean, there are lots of rabbits in Teletubby land, so it does make sense. Yeah, in a sense. Dude, look at those eyes. Head. He's seen so much. <laughs> war. His land is being ravaged by so much war. <laughs> He's broken Teletubby. His soul. That handbag was his mother's. He hangs on oh to it as a memory of what was. <laughs> So what was was and what was lost. <laughs> so um, so the fired Tinky Winky with the creative differences, uh, Dave Thompson, he said he was uh, proud of his time in the role. He went on to have a successful comedy career, replaced by Simon Shelton, who was a trained ballet dancer and choreographer. Now we know Tinky Winky's gay. Uh, Simon said he received fan mail from kids and parents and said the speculation surrounding Tinky Winky's sexual orientation what? was really I quite silly. 
Oh, oh well, really? Hold up, hold up. I got I got to finish this. This is the part that sadly he <laughs> died from a hypothermia in January 2018 at what? the age of 52. Damn. How did you die of hypothermia? Like that happens, but wow, was that's like, weird. Was he climbing a mountain or some shit? I don't know. It, that's all it said. That's uh, that's interesting. Rest in peace, Tinky Winky, the gay alien. That is, wow. Um. So anyway, anyway, what was the super chat? I don't know what one caused that to happen. Um. I better turn on my. <laughs> got to turn on my fan real quick. Just a second. Have you ever seriously considered permanently ending EFAP for any reason? Um. Well, the only time it would be considered is what would happen if something horrible happened to one of us three, sort of thing. Because um, or... I think all three of us would be happy <sighs> to just keep talking about movies and video games and stuff. Yeah, because that's all EFAB ultimately is. And I've done that. I I think I've told people before, EFAB was like my fifth, either fourth or fifth podcast, and it finally worked sort of thing. But they were all the same. They were all just me talking about media. Like, so I was just trying to find a format that worked better with the right people sort of thing. But the fact is, yeah. like... If, for example, I think we talked about this before, but if I got hit by a big old van or something and you guys had all of the materials to be able to stream it, I think I'd be okay with you guys carrying it on. It's just really up to you guys if you'd even want to at that point or not. Or if you'd rather I make would, something I new. wouldn't call it... I would, I would carry on doing podcasts, but I wouldn't call it EFAP. I feel like it would become something else. Um, I feel like it, 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 it would just... It's like Top Gear without Richard Hammond and Jeremy Clarkson and... Uh, James May, you know, it's just like you can call it Top Gear, but is it really? Yeah, no, I'm with you. Yeah, it's like why not just start a new show so that it's all, it's all contained. It was a big old arc, and it ends with the one of the bigger contributors, you know, being unable to contribute anymore, sort of thing. Dying of hypothermia. Yeah, I bloody hope not. Then again, if I was to be hit by a van or die of hypothermia, which would you prefer? It's probably the van, right? That'd be faster. The van. It probably happens. Yeah, really quick. You don't see it coming. Uh, um, well, we talked about it on uh, the yeah. Final Destination, right? We had the girls who were really... The only thing they were characterized by was they liked sex, and then they were kind, and then they got killed horribly over a long period yeah. of time. Meanwhile, several of the like asshole characters get insta-killed to the point where they don't even know they're dead before they're dead. Yeah, they they, they just stop existing, yeah. It's like... Uh, you know, it's not fair. Yeah, it's like, like it's it would fix the movies, but if they, how can you not get basic shit like that right, where the the worst characters get the worst deaths? Like, yeah, uh, basic shit. And yeah, the, the, I don't like that. Unsatisfying things like that can really ruin a movie for me. It just seems mean spirited. I agree. Um, I forgot in my last chat for the first ever Super Chat, I said I liked Season 1, that Season 2 has issues, The Season 2 was, oh, a 3 was okay. Upon reflection, there's some good stuff in 2, but still like a 3.5 out of 10. I've completely turned on 3. How did I not think about how they build the base without anyone noticing it would have taken years to build? I have no idea what we're talking about yet, by the way. With at least a mile digging down. Oh, now I know what it is. Stranger Things. Hopper was ruined, a 2 out of 10 being generous. However, Season 4 somehow managed to redeem the show. Eddie was a spectacular character. 6 out of 10, I think, is what they're saying. Which is probably somewhere near what I would settle on, because there's plenty of problems in Stranger Things Season 4, but it was it was a fun watch compared to 2 and 3. I enjoyed um, it. Laird Lungbuns of Mubly Road. Can you do a Kung Fap? Peter Long's one sometime. It'd be fapped for ages. I'm feeling like a lot of people are asking for this now. It's getting around, you know? The Kung, know. The Kung Fap? The, the <laughs> Long Kong. I, I just, you know, I, I don't know what they're going to do when we finally release it. It'll be a, it, I dare say it might be an EFAP for the ages. You know, for our, it, it better fucking be. <laughs> if we finally do it. Uh, dear Mola, your high welsh send us Sir Philip A.H. for acclaimed Red Dragon Silence of the... Lambs, West, World, and the Marvelous Father. Why on God's green earth did you justify... Do you justify to send us Panath's morbid plaque? Hest as her name rings as Cower. It's a very strangely written thing. A lot of that was not was the words that I ended up yeah. going with. Um, but yes, I understand. Was oddly. That, was, that was the price for Anthony Hopkins. I'm sorry. That's how it works. I'm just having for free. You have to have some, some other... Actors, right? 
I figured it out. The secret of Fringy's goo. The evidence is Fringy himself. It causes liver failure. Green skin pigmentation, spontaneous beak growth, and simultaneous frog and bird transformation, followed by delusions of being a plague doctor. That's interesting. I mean, that's an interesting sort of, like, fan fiction, but that's just, you know... You should get diagnosed. Or not true. assessed. We don't know that he has it, right? Oh, we know he's got it. You know he's got something. Yeah, he's got, be... he's got something going on. Be too much like of a particular drink or something. I don't know. Lay off the the. Maybe he's drinking his own goo. I don't know. Ooh, that could be interesting. Hmm. Uh, rarely is the main character so awful that I'm starting to side with Sauron. No clue what he's like, but at least Sauron people value their dead instead of leaving someone to die because of a limp. Also, Sauron wasn't in. Uh, wasn't at least. Uh, why is this written? Sauron. At least isn't autistic in social situations. There we go. Um, Allegedly. I mean, we got another four seasons of watching that man do his thing, so. Oh, I can't well, believe it. Four uh, more yeah. seasons. I Possibly would be curious what they're, what they're going to do if season two has the exact same performance and reaction. Oh, that's got to change something, right? <clears throat> Even this one season's probably enough to change some things, like big time. I would be thinking so, because okay, you always get, you know, you can get the, you can pay off the shill article writers from this site and that site to talk about how, oh, it fixes so much from Lord of the Rings, and oh, my, it's so empowering, and it's so great, and wonder, but, like, people just aren't, people don't buy that shit, at least a lot of them don't. Um, I don't know, it's just, nobody just talks about it, nobody, it's already yeah, it's done. gone. Well, can you talk about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Man, didn't what you love it? character, one of them? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I really yeah, liked maybe. when um, Galadriel jumped into the ocean. That was uh, that was fun. A weird choice by a part, you know. Uh, I think it's the environmental save the forest message. Look how we affect the planet. If you're talking about the volcano in uh, in Rings of Power, I doubt I it. Don't uh, I uh, I doubt that that's an environmental message, especially if, because of how it happens. I don't see how that can. I don't see how that relates to like our <laughs> actions. Don't let your as, hobos as stab his spooky hilts and swords into strange to... dam mechanisms and let orcs build massive tunnels or ditches. Uh... Yeah, I'd find it difficult to find an allegory for that. That's 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 one of those ones where you're pulling pieces out of it. Cause you're just like, I don't know, it's a volcano, right? And it's like, yeah, but. Also, I don't think humans cause volcanoes. Well, I think those are a pretty natural affair. I certainly Except don't for mean this to, one. all right? If there's a volcano near me and I set it off or whatever, it's like, I didn't know. I don't know, what I, I don't know if I can be trusted with that kind of power mm -hmm. to create volcanoes. Uh, have you seen Andor yet? We actually get to see the motivation of characters. We're breaking new ground mm. with Disney Star Wars. I'm still not, uh, yeah. It's still not a tenth as good as Hot D, but it's progress. I rags. Hello. I agree, it's definitely progress. It is progress. Yeah. Yep. Hard, soft magic is bound to the amount of knowledge that's given about the magic system. Tolkien has written down the whole system, but this knowledge is not given in Lord of the Rings, so for Lord of the Rings, it is even softer than Harry Potter. Um, yeah, I think that's that's what we... Didn't we conclude that, Rags? This is what we were talking to... Um, yeah, platoon uh, with, pl yeah, Little platoon. Because our understanding of soft the versus rules, hard... more rules, the harder it is. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and if you watch the, the Lord of the Rings movies on their own, there's barely anything you can get in terms of rules for. Uh... Yeah, it's 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 simultaneously its strength and its weakness. Um, very kind of up in the air as to what you can do and when you can do it. But yeah, that was definitely surprising to hear him say that because pretty much everyone I know and all of us, we all understand a hard magic system to be more structured with more rules and more <clears throat> stipulations. Essentially, the closer it is to an established science and a craft. Yeah, like uh, if, the if it, it said like there is only one spell in the world and it is to levitate any object of any size with a maximum of this weight for five seconds and you can only do it once per day, you're like, whoa, it's quite the hard. hard. Yeah, it's an extremely like hard. Super system. hard. Yeah. Meanwhile, like Harry Potter, I can understand people calling it soft, but it, it has more rules it's in it. It's pretty hard. I think. Yeah. Compared to, uh, I mean, a lot of stuff. Yeah. I think the problem is that there are too many of these rules, and I, I yeah. think that's where. Yeah. I think it's it, not that it's hard or soft. It's that there's just too much stuff that seem like they interfere with plots and stories and things. And I think it's gone to the point as well with 
because we'll we'll try and maybe check them out at some point and give our takes but i'm I'm pretty sure there's a lot of overlap with rules where you're like wait a minute so uh someone in the chat <clears> mentioned it but alchemy and full metal alchemist is a hard magic and yeah it, that's a very hard ma it's it is essentially it's treated no different than a science is that has to be studied and understood it's a very hard system yeah <clears throat> Knowing that Gimli wanted Sam and Frodo dead the whole time, was there any time during the Fellowship where he could have carried out grisly murder on one or both of them and just got away with it? Probably. probably um, he probably could have done it. I don't know if he could get away with it. If you keep an eye on him are... in all the scenes, there's a few times where he has a few glances at Frodo and Sam and just scowls at them, and you can tell he's planning it. I think. Yeah, they're like, how come? How come Gimli looks at the? <clears throat> How come Gimli looks at Frodo like Boromir looks at the ring? That's kind of weird. Yeah, and if you remember when they're like, oh, you know, let's go save the hobbits, Gimli's like, oh, yep, let's go do it, because he knows that means they're not going to help Sam and Frodo. And so he's like, that'll definitely make them die. It'll be great. It's all coming together. And then it's in Return of the King, he together. finds out they survived, and he's like, what the fuck? That makes no sense. And, uh, yeah, poor guy. Could have been more definitive when he had the chance, I think. Um... Shout out, there's an amazing Harry Potter fanfic book written by an AI researcher who basically wanted to fix the universe while preserving a lot of its aspects but making them a lot more, make them a lot more, make, making a lot of them make sense a lot more. Interesting. The Methods of Rationality. I guess that's the name of what it's called. Also, hi, chat. Oh. Uh, if you had the choice of becoming a ghost after death, would you? Being a ghost in this scenario simply entails that you would only be able to, be, to move around and observe freely while you can still retain your mental, fa mental faculties as if you were in your prime. Hmm, I don't know. It's tough. If the question would be like, is that or infinite nothingness, I'd probably go for the infinite nothingness of death because I'd be worried that... Am I, mm. am I doomed to be that forever if I decide on the ghost? Exactly. Yeah, I think. And I don't want to be... take that choice away from myself because uh, only have it once, sort of, you know. But it could be fun for a bit. You get to observe like all the crazy and awesome events throughout the world, and you'll know more than you ever would have and stuff. Answer some questions you've always had. But uh, yeah, without. But then um... again, you can't do anything about anything you learn. Yeah, if there's no way to influence things or do anything, if you don't have any agency and it's purely passive, you know, just sort of observing things, yeah, that's that's a that's a really tough call. Um, yeah. Uh, did you see Andor? It was okay at best. The real problem with the show is that we haven't seen Vader, Ahsoka, Kenobi, Boba Fett, Palpatine, Bo-Katan, Maul, Rex, Cody, Tarkin, Luke, Yoda, and Mace Windu. It could be a good show if those characters had cameos. Well, yeah, let's hope they get all them all in in the last episode, because otherwise the show will be shit. It will be. Because How I do think... you make good Star Wars without Luke Skywalker and lightsabers and Darth Vader and Boba Fett? I have heard... It simply can't be done. That that is a take, apparently. Uh, the, mm. the show is not very good because it doesn't have enough lightsabers. Who was it, and... like Star Wars Theory or something like that? Possibly. <laughs> I, uh, the funny thing for us is, I think, I think we go way further even than our audience is ready for. Like, if they didn't, if they just had, you know, John, just some guy called John, and he was working 9 till 5, and the whole show was about that, there's not a single reference to even an alien. We don't even find out what planet he's on, it could just be Earth. If it was just really good, and they said, this was Star Wars, by the way, we'd probably be like, that was neat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> it's interesting that that was Star Wars, but... All right. If it's a good story, it's a good story, you know? Exactly. Don't if you to took exactly what Bly Manor was, but instead of, you know, a contemporary-ish England, it was, you know, just a planet on some Star Wars world. Yeah. Then I'm like, I think it's a good story. I don't know how this does before it goes, but yeah, it's a good story. Um, And what's interesting to think about as well is you could do all that and people could be so invested in this guy called John and, and he gets a resolution or whatever, like, issues he's having with maybe the work or just the people in the bar that he's running if, if it's one. and then like you give that thing right at the end where last episode maybe not even post credit scene just the, the final thing he concludes all of his stuff and then a Jedi just bursts in looking for cover because he's being chased he's been hunted down and that's that's the, the setup for season 2 it's like there you go okay now it's this is how it fits into the Star Wars universe you rabid stuff like that's fans. interesting to think about it's yeah. funny because you might think How i'm you... joking but i guess what i'm trying to say is like you get them to like the character first and then you start involving star wars yeah. stuff exactly yeah 
get the story set established and then at the very end go oh by the way this is in the star wars universe and you would, I, I think that would excite people it's, it's kind of the same as what's going on with the the god of war games where it's just like oh they said heimdall i know that name and it's like he's going to be able to beat mm -hmm. kratos at some point you're like yeah how neat is it Lord Longbong of Mubschlington Abbey. Is there any chance of a Kong Fap? Of Nintendo's Donkey Kong? When there's less going on, it'd be an EFAP <laughs> for the ages. Um, Which Donkey Kong game, though? Well, unless they're talking about the soon-to-come Peter Jackson Donkey Kong movie. I hope they're making. <laughs> or, I guess, DK's Adventures in the Mario movie. Or Seth Rogen DK. Oh, fucking no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah. Such a meme. Why did they do it? I don't know. I don't know. Because you guys know Seth Rogen. I got, what yeah. if we had to beat our words and we're like, actually, that was an amazing casting choice? Uh, then I, mean, then I guess we will if that happens. <laughs> Can you see yourself like, saying that for you? Is there a chance? <laughs> I mean, it's always possible. I just don't really have much faith that that will be anything other than, like, I don't know, like, fine at best. But maybe it'll maybe it'll blow me away. Who knows? Yeah, I think the most it'll get to is tolerable. I'll be like, um, mm -hmm. fine, but... Mm. I'll need to take mushrooms. Mushroom kingdom. And grow twice my size. Fun exercise. Pick a Buffy episode, replace Buffy with Jennifer Walters, and then describe what would happen. She'd break the universe and reinstate her own rules so that she doesn't have to deal with pressures, suffering in any way, shape, or form. It would be great. Kind of the same thing she'd do in every single show she's in. Hooray. Oh, if season two, when they do the exact same payoff in the finale, because they're fucking absolutely out of ideas, and they're like, oh, you found another way in? We're gonna have to fix that one too. I hope this doesn't happen again. And then she's like, any word on the X-Men yet? And he's like, stop asking that question. And then everyone laughs. Because it is so funny. Because it's like kind of like how we ask. And then they finally do the X-Men movie and it's fucking horrible. And then everyone is like, we really... I, 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 I don't know. And then they give him a trailer for, for the next X-Men and Galactus is in it for some reason. And then they're like, oh my god, actually, no, I like it again. Give me. It's gonna be great, guys. Doctor Doom. It will be great. This Mephisto. Hang. Uh, Shrek the musical lyrics sung by the big bad wolf. They tore my cotton granny dress and called me a hot. And I can't say that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can get banned for saying that. I don't even know anymore. Yes, these are real. Is that actually a real quote? Because I'm assuming uh, Shrek the I, musical. I I've got no clue what it is, so well, I assume there's. A, I guess there's a musical for it. They could, it depends but if it's on when edgy, it came like out. The first movie is a little bit. I was about to say it might. It might be real if it's older. I could believe that's What's real. What's the first letter? Can you just, you just post it in the chat for <laughs> the rest of your hosts? To know what it was. We. I. I'm not that invested. It's fine. We can. Be... Okay. If well, forced right. to live in the following options, what would you choose? Pakistan or a physical manifestation of Twitter? Oh. Oh, would that so be like Pakistan a... or San Francisco? Would would a physical manifestation of Twitter probably be like a big, a huge building filled with like thousands of rooms, and every room is there's a, several people in there, and every time you say anything, many people will show up and possibly shout at you, right? Well, which we're talking about Pakistan or I don't see how you could possibly think what I just said was Pakistan, but that's oh. all right. Um, I. How your ability to escape Twitter is probably quite easy, though. If you can just walk out of the building, yeah. Because if it's a, if well, if it's a physical manifestation on Twitter, you can get like expatriated forcefully if you say a. No, oh, you're right. Word yeah, if you say the right words, you can just. Oh, you say the right words, you just get kicked out and you're free. Uh, and it's not like that. It's like kill how you. getting banned on Twitter actually is. Yeah, it, it, except Pakistan, because I, I probably wouldn't be very well appreciated in Pakistan. So I, I'm going to go with the Twitter one, probably because it's easy, it's easy to safely get out. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, Dear Lord Muller, thank you for Otto. Uh, thank you for Otto Hightower. This actor, this good actor, sorry, come from Hewlforth. Uh, this plays. This balances more without. 
I presume. Thanks you again. Kisses for our Kazawa. Kazawa? Okay, Scritches for the good boy. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, no problem. Auto was great. I can't wait for more of him in season two. Yes. Uh, happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. Hope you could enjoy time with friends. I don't know who that's directed to necessarily. Would it be me? Um, Mine was probably. a month and a half ago, but <laughs> it's probably still, yeah. I guess that tells us where we are in terms of catching up. I hope God of War goes on for long enough to eventually involve figures from the Abrahamic religions. Imagine a QTE sequence of Kratos personally nailing Jesus Christ to a cross as a cinematic oh, finish. Based and red pilled. <laughs> Crucifixion. Well, it's like when we talk about Marvel. They're not gonna they're not gonna canonize like Yahweh or the Christian God. They're not gonna do that. We were, that would be we're bringing this up. Do um, that. You often have Christians saying, like, everyone always makes fun of Christianity, but you're not allowed to make fun of, like, certain religion stuff. So, like, I still don't think something like God of War would have the balls to represent Jesus. I don't think it would. They they wouldn't want to risk it. They'd be like, no, 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 no. And to be honest with you, if they suggested it while I was on, like, the board of directors or whatever, I'd be like, don't do that. That's just going to piss loads but of they, people off. But they would sooner make fun of Jesus than Muhammad. Oh, absolutely. There's there's a hierarchy, but I still think that there's a level of yeah, protection. Because those people will the thing fucking is, kill you. If I... If someone like hired me to do it in a way that would like, I, I would just be like, I don't know if it's gonna work. People don't. I don't think people want to see that. Like the idea that they're gonna have don't him associate Jesus with being cool, and even Christians who are like, yeah, Jesus is cool. Yeah, being a virgin is really cool. They're like they're, they, they don't actually think that he's like cool. I, you know, I think if you portrayed him with like he teams up with Kratos and he has like he hits people with a cross or cast spells or whatever, I think some people would be like, this is fun. I like Jesus. Some other people would be like, this is disrespectful. Jesus is not supposed well, to be. Well, you'd like have this. to have Jesus like tagging along, trying to temper Kratos's mood. You know, he's trying to tell you know turn the other cheek and you know do this sort of thing and you know think about that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> no wooden cross. The, the, the worst really thing weapon, that Jesus yeah. would do is flip over some tables, but. No, That's he, pretty extreme. he worships the table because it's wood and he's a carpenter. Yeah, you could do it. You, you just probably, there's, there is a way to do it, I'm sure, but... It's I a tough just, one, why would you, tough one to risk, especially when you've got so many other options. Like, just go for Egypt. Do it. Do it. Yeah, do it. Rags will play the next one if you go Egypt, okay? I might. No, you will. On this. Is it on the... And it's only on PS5, right? They don't it releases on PC, PC until later. eventually, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't. I'm not gonna get a PlayStation for it, but with the eventual PC release, I will maybe play it if it's Egyptian themed. That Harfoot hag suggesting they steal their wheels and leave them to die has the same energy as the orcs in Two Towers talking about eating just the legs of the hobbits. <laughs> yeah. They don't need their legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't need their wheels. Oh man, that's really funny. Again, when they write in that sequence, you need to be like, dude. Do you know what you've just written down? And they're like, yeah, it's kind of fun, isn't it? It's a fun, like, oh, Lou, take the wheels. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, oh. uh -huh. it's almost like saying, ha, let's unplug his insulin drip. <laughs> <laughs> what a fun prank. What a fun prank, bro. Let's eat his flesh. <laughs> yeah, do it. I will say, though, um, it uh, by taking their wheels, it's essentially not just um, sabotaging someone else. It's increasing your own chances of survival. Now we have extra wheels. That's like a get-out-of-jail-free card for death. Yeah. If our wheels break, we have their wheels to put on our cart, so we're more likely to survive. Mola, I assume you're a good writer, but I haven't seen you publish any fiction. Have you thought about writing for the Ripiverse? I can't imagine it not turning out great. I haven't got time to even write more stuff or just screw around. I can around barely writing. write emails. I am too busy writing. If ever I'm writing anything, it's scripts. And those, as you guys know, some of them are complete and videoless. That needs to be remedied. So, um, yeah. if I enter a point in my life where I'm writing, it's going to be probably to at least try and write something for my, my own sort of thing, but, um... Yeah, that's... Obviously, I wish the best for the rip of this. Probably, Looks yeah. like it's going to be cool. Yeah. In light of PayPal's recent announcement, I can no longer justify using their service, so this is my last Streamlabs. It's inconvenient, but it's time to find better ways for us to exchange value that are actually in line with our principles. Um... Yeah, I mean, the what we've got set up, I think, is the, uh, well, you have Super Chats, Patreon, Subscribestar, and Streamlabs. So, if all yeah. four of those are unacceptable, I'm not actually sure if there's another more viable alternative, but... Yeah, th those are all pretty good options. Um... Obviously, don't worry about it. If you find that there's no ethical way to get money to us that you would like to, you don't have to pay. Just leave it. It's alright. The view Send it in is an envelope. more than enough. 
Yeah, just put put your money in an envelope. <laughs> Always a solid idea. Slingshot and write, it. Yeah, like write, put it, uh, stick it to a boomerang, and write Fringy's house on it. Uh, Forty two Wallaby Way, Sydney. And oh then my just God. throw that bit. What a Finding Nemo reference! Nice. Oh, you know what? What's interesting too is that randomly um, on Friday morning. I was think for whatever reason I was thinking about finding Nemo. It was Dory's swimming song that would have for whatever reason popped into my head. And I was thinking, is it a contrivance that the address to the, you know, Nemo's kidnapper just happened to be on the goggles that fell into the water and he just so happened to find one of the only fish who can read English in order to track him down? Is that like a huge contrivance? It sounds like you've already concluded whether or not the answer to that question is yes. But I'm at well, maybe, but that's why I'm asking. That's I'm that's I'm I'm legitimately asking the question because I'm capable of changing my mind. Uh, without with how you've described it, I'd say yes. I just I need to re-see it, see if there's anything else that can I I think because I, I really like that movie, but I, I think I'm accurately portraying the events um in my retelling here, but I don't know. Um maybe there's something I missed, but I I think so. It it helps that it's sort of like the inciting incident. So that gives it a little bit of a you know pass to start a story about it, but uh, huh. I don't know. Just fish thoughts mm -hmm. or whatever. I, was, I never saw Finding Dory. I don't know anything about it. I don't know if it's good or not. I don't know anything Which about Finding Dory. Of the major God of War games, would you say is the most flawed writing-wise? I would rule out 2018 Ragnarok and God of War 1. It is between God of War 2 and 3. 3 because it kind of goes back on a lot of what God of War 2 sets up. This is something that several people in chat were telling me about as I was playing it and I hadn't thought about it before. But um, a couple things, including but not limited to, like, they set up all the Titan stuff and then the Titan stuff becomes completely irrelevant almost in, in the third game. Not, like, completely, but you probably understand what I'm saying if you've played them. Um, also flipping Gaia to become a kind of like a villain almost. It was a really strange choice. Then the stuff with Kali not Calliope, a uh, uh, Pandora was pretty cringe. Uh, the big resolution at the end, they say the word hope way too much, and, like, it couldn't be more obvious what they're going for, and for some reason they think you haven't picked it up. Um, so there's, there's that, um, but God of War 2 has, I think, the biggest writing flaw across all of God of War, which is Kratos' family was killed. He killed them because of a god tricking him. It was the most horrible event of his life. It's basically defined everything and everywhere all at once. And, uh, he has the chance to go back in time and stop Zeus from stabbing him way later than when that happened. And he doesn't think to himself, I should probably go back in time and save my family. Uh, He's the god of war, not the god of wisdom. I, uh, well, and so that that was a that was a, a sort of a thing that was highlighted. Then it's like, okay, but, you know, maybe there's something I missed. Maybe this is like, what did the writers say? And apparently they said he was too angry to think about that. <laughs> We've all been there. We've all been, listen, guys. There's a few things that you should know about life. Two primary rules. Don't go to the grocery store when you're hungry. And don't step into a time machine when you're angry. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple rules to live by. If you follow these rules, you will live a long and fruitful life, full of happiness and satisfaction. And so, um, it's hard to say. It's between two and three. Three seems to have more flaws, but they're not, a, like, nobody's, nobody's got a war game is going to beat out that flaw. That's... I would argue that's the biggest flaw in all of God of War because it's like the games themselves, they the Kratos' is like consistent characterization is the best thread they've got, and so dramatic damage to that is really bad. Um Mullard is very clear that Rags is an old doggo at this point. Biden moments would be expected. Maybe it's time to pass the mantle like a Marvel hero. Might I suggest you give Metal Commander sunglasses, spray paint him orange, and rename him Metal Rags. <laughs> Spray paint him orange. All right, <laughs> I'll see if he's on board. Uh, Listen, I still got plenty of gas left in the tank, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on keeping on until I just give out. Mm -hmm. Um, Big Bill Hell's ad Goodell edition. Fuck you, YouTube. If you're dumb enough to pay for Disney Plus, you're big enough schmuck to watch Game Developers Essentials Lessons book. Bad pacing, visuals that don't match what's being said, themes. If you think you're going to find inside like reference. at Goodell, you can kiss my ass. It's our belief that you're such a stupid motherfucker that you'll fall for this bullshit. Guaranteed. Think you've made a better channel? Shove it up your ugly ass. You heard us right. Shove it up your ugly ass. Bring us your first draft script. 
Bring your stock music, bring your Ransona, we'll fuck him. Okay? I, I don't know this reference <laughs> at all. That's you don't? right. Oh, we'll fuck your Big PFP. Bill Hells. <laughs> because at Gadelb, we don't know the meaning of the phrase parasocial friendship. Take a hike to Gadelb, home of the challenged editing. That's right, challenge editing. How does it work if you can cut to new footage five times every second and not get a headache? You get a free channel membership. Don't wait, don't delay, don't fuck with us or we'll DMCA your bitch ass only at Goodell, the only channel that tells you to fuck up. This, this is gonna keep going. Hurry up, asshole. This ad breaks end. Uh, this ad break ends the minute you confirm on PayPal and you better not cancel or you're a dead motherfucker. Go to hell. Goodell, YouTube's wordiest and most intellectual home of the wisest internet sages that's this side of Tunneled Loke, guaranteed. Well. Um... Yeah, I guess that's that's something I never saw. Uh, but it sounds like it's some classic internet memeage. Yeah, it's good. It's yeah, I think it was ba uh, the SFM one was based off the original. So whichever one you think you'd like more. Ah, uh, okay. Um, it's 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 pretty funny. It's a minute, you know. You, you do that later, and then you'll be yeah. up to date on all the memes. Yeah, I can't be out of date. That would be ridiculous. Um, I'm doing a joint replay of God of War 3 in 2018 to prep for Ragnarok. It's nice to jump between the two and appreciate the stark differences, but also how much the pure God of War DNA throughline carries on. Thanks for the years of unparalleled content, Benedict Long. Well, thank you. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of neat how a transfer of gameplay mechanics so dramatically can still maintain a lot of what you'd expect to be there. Uh, a friend of mine just moved from God of War 3 to 2018 and was saying it's so neat that they still had the, uh, light, light, heavy, when you get the Blades of Chaos in 2018. It's still there, even though it's different controls and a different point of view and stuff. It's like, yep, they kept it. Probably because they knew that players would want to do that. Uh, what do you find more dramatic or jarring? The change from traditional Resident Evil to Resident Evil 4, or the change from traditional God of War to God of War 2018? The over-the-shoulder change is the most obvious, but what about all the other details in terms of gameplay and story? Um, Resident Evil 4 was my first Resident Evil, and I haven't played any of the God of War games, so I literally cannot answer this question. I am one of the best posed to answer this question, I think. Unless Fringy has played more than I realize. Uh, of of what? Resident Evil? Yeah, because classic Resident Evil uh, to Resident Evil 4 is quite a dramatic change, but... I haven't played any of those games, though. I haven't played, like, 1, 2, 3, or... I haven't played a lot of Resident Evil. But is it more dramatic than God of War... Three to 2018, it's like, hmm. That is an interesting question. Hard to say, actually. Because the thing is, it depends on who you talk to, I think, would tell you. Like I said, I've talked to people before who've said that, like, Resident Evil 4 destroyed Resident Evil, and then there's plenty of people who say God of, War, God of War's New Direction is destroying God of War as a franchise. Um, the Village DLC was so disappointing, there's no way that any of us three are playing that shit. <laughs> like, we're done with the village. Oh, fuck that game. There's no way I'm playing that game again. That yeah, game it's, sucked. It's funny, because I was about to say, yeah, definitely soured over time. It's like, no, I'm pretty sure we were pretty harsh to it at the time, weren't we? We, we were, were all... very harsh to it. Yeah. That game sucked. <laughs> like, how could you be so mean? The fact that everyone thinks it's so great is legitimately depressing. It's why we're never... We are never going to get another Resident Evil 4 again, because fuck having good gameplay. It's funny, because you're, you're, you're thinking of gameplay, I, my mind is just going to how much of a loss potentially was in the story. There's so much they could have done. Also that, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. If I was to go with one, I'd probably go with Resident Evil. I think if you jumped from Resident Evil 1 to Resident Evil 4, that's you're going to be like, what the hell? Because the it's a, at least when you go to 2018 from God of War 3, uh, all of it's assuming you've just come from God of War 3. And so there's ways it tries to ease that through, you know, storytelling and stuff. But, like, Resident Evil 4 doesn't care about Resident Evil 1. And I don't mean that in the sense that it's disrespecting it, I just mean it in the sense that it's it's doing its own thing. It's just like, you know... You could be playing something from a different franchise at that point, I guess is what I'm saying. Um... Mola, Rags, and Fringy. Say the line from Bruce Wayne in BVS about if there's even a 1% chance in your best Wonder Woman impression. If there, is, uh, if there is even a 1% chance, that's probably how she would do it. <laughs> if there's even a 1% chance to fill the Nile, we must take the champagne as an absolute certainty. 
I, yeah, it's oh man, cool. she's a really bad actress. Yes, she's know, very bad. It's just the delivery is baffling. Does it be like if there is even a one percent chance that he will he is our enemy, we have to take it. <laughs> you remember the delivery in, in Wonder Woman nineteen seventy four when she jumps onto the car? She's like talking to talking to Pedro Pascal, and she's like, "I need you to give me this stone." Oh. Like, Where is the stone? <laughs> yes. Like, I don't know. It's just like oh. the worst way you could have delivered that line. Remember when the like, her mentor dies, and she's like, "No, <laughs> no." It's just, and then of course, who could forget? Who could forget the classic, the piece de resistance, Kalel No. I can't uh, yeah. believe that people are like, oh, they fixed it. They fixed it. it. <laughs> they took like, one of the other takes and it was still shit. <laughs> it's like, this is incredible. The, the, the cope. <laughs> like, Dude, remember, it. when we pointed this out, people were like, wow, you're making fun of her accent? It's like, no, you fool. Making fun of all of it. The, <laughs> the <laughs> fact that... The accent oh. is the Like, I don't know why anybody would say that. It's if there aren't people Not who... everyone... No, well, yeah, you're right. Surely not everyone from that part of the world sounds that awful. They're, they're, it can't be. Fundamentally, there are plenty of actors who English is their second language, clearly, and like the delivery is still great. Like you know, it's not it's not the accent. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like that's a that was cope back then, but I think everyone's come to conclude she's like what? That's that's not accent. That's like why would you say it like that? You know, like why would you deliver that line like yeah. that? So that I bet she can act better. I bet she can act better in Hebrew, like or, or whatever her primary language is. It's like I bet you she can't. Mm. I bet you that's that's what we're dealing with. It's not the fact that she's unfamiliar with English. I'm sure she's familiar enough with English to hold plenty of conversations. It's that she's not. It sounds harsh, but I'm pretty sure she wasn't taught properly how to do acting. Well, I mean, remember the why? Because of your guilt, and then like the sort of exasperated expression. It's just like, man, that was just like. That just was not. I don't believe you. <laughs> like that was. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> it looks like she is acting, and someone might be like, "Oh, wait, what?" And it's like, well, yeah, that's the point of acting, isn't it? To not look like you're acting. Uh, convince me that you are the character rather than you. Yeah, we both uh, know you're lying. But make me forget that yeah. you're lying to me. I, I guess the big thing would be she gets paid way too much money for like that to be acceptable. Like she's one of the highest paid actresses. Isn't that insane? It is. It is not. It. It. It's just not fair. She gets, she gets <laughs> you know, more, it's... she gets paid more than like actresses, like who are talented. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's just like, yeah, yeah it I, like it's um, it's like yeah, I get it. She's hot, but there's uh, there's plenty. Being be hot like, is nothing special. She's gonna be playing the evil queen in like snow in the Snow White remake. It's like what's that? No, like? Maleficent. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, no, 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 that's uh, that's just. I think she's just called the evil queen. Yeah, I think that's it. She's playing. Let me look it up. Queen. Evil Queen Snow White. I'm pretty sure she does have a name. It's just the Evil Queen is like her what she's called. I don't think that she's named by name in the original, though it says here that her name is uh, Queen Grimhilde. Oh, right, well. Yeah, well, I, that's, I guess probably... that's a name. I guess it's similar to Maleficent, isn't it? Sure. Oh, Maleficent Grimhilde. That's, that's, uh, that's Mark Webb, by the way, is directing the Snow White. Um, uh, remake. What do I know him from? He spider. He did Amazing Spider Man. That was what he did. The Amazing Spider. The first film. Amazing Spider Man. Both. Um, Both of them. Oh well, it's gonna be shit then. Well, I I don't think it even matters, right? Because I think that the I think that the remakes that they have are like have the same problem as Marvel, which is that like the directors rarely does like any sort of clear vision shine through. Like Guy Ritchie doing Aladdin, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or um. I mean, John Favreau, right? Like, is at this point seems to be like a sludge director, yeah. Which he didn't use. To be. Um, who else was there? Absolutely. Kenneth Branagh, John Favreau sucks the, now. Cinderella, uh, one. Um, there's someone else too. I think because Rob Marshall is like doing. I think he did Mary Poppins. He's doing Little Mermaid. It's like I don't know, man. Like, it seems to me like no, no, like clear vision can shine through in these projects. They're like so corporate. And yeah, like, corporate and yeah, they get get run through the assembly line process. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, like they get put in the grinder like little chickens turned into nuggets. 
kind of well yep. not kind of essentially yeah, like yeah that's actually a pretty good analogy for it i don't know why there would be like any expectation that you're going to get something like particularly valuable from these remakes you're just taking stuff that was really cool and great that was made before and then like stripping away losing a lot in translation and of course i don't like it when because i remember there was a quote from like the actress playing snow white we was like kind of like very dismissive of the original film which in the case of Snow White, feels like particularly frustrating because it was like the first theatrical animated film ever. Disney doesn't exist without that film. Like it has a legacy that I think is worth Respecting. not shitting on, especially since your project doesn't exist without it either. I don't know. I, I'm finding that like particularly annoying. It's like in She Hulk when they were shitting on Daredevil's costume. Like, yeah, sorry, yeah. my dude. But like, we want to use it, but we want to make fun of it at the same time. Yeah, you're going to use it to make money and the creation of people who let's be real like they worked really hard under very difficult circumstances to create that like churning out way more like a ton of comics it's like yeah i'm sorry they didn't nail the design the first time around but what they made is still like a lot better than what you've (laughs) sorry it's just i don't know i don't i don't like it yeah they couldn't just pass all their shit to everyone in the cgi dungeon and then you know Mm. Yeah, well just, yeah just, and then just... and then make fun of the fact that their cgi is like they didn't have enough time to do it because they're too busy the slaves are already getting shuffled onto the next project <laughs> like the, the back into the next dungeon and i mean Black so Panther i i don't even know what you're referencing because out. i think multiple things fit that oh well do you remember the joke in she hulk where they're like oh the visual effects that's... people move on to the next project and they play the like drums you know like that's what like i'm saying i was Panther. Yeah. I was curious if you were referring to that or Taika Waititi. Oh, oh, well, that was that was just overt, right? That was like him in an interview, just like openly shitting on the work of people who were working on his projects, and it wasn't like his, it wasn't even his task. And it's like, and you're even partly on the hook for this, right? Because the conditions that resulted in this shot, you're ultimately responsible for because you're the director. You get your big name like on there as like this is your film. Ha! Ah, I don't like it. I don't know. It's just, yeah. Yeah, I don't like it. Uh, you're going to stream the new Dark Pictures with Metal? Yes, but we decided it's probably better off he does it when he comes over because we don't have to deal with the bullshit we're... I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, it caps yeah, out as like two-player pe- two co-op is, is like the... You know, we, we can do the remote play thing, but fucking that was a nightmare with little hope. I'm never doing that again. Um, yeah, luckily there's zero gameplay, so it didn't really matter. That's true. <laughs> so uh, that was that was fortunate. So the other option, of course, is that you can actually have real co-op. There is a fo- an option for it. And it's like, oh, great. But for some reason, there'll be times where they're playing cutscenes where I see a different one on my end and he sees a different one on his end. Um, which is incredibly confusing when you're trying to have a play together and commentate because he doesn't know what I've seen and I don't know what he's seen. And it sounds like the kind of thing like, oh, this could play into some kind of interesting idea for a co-op game, right? And it's like, yes, but no. <laughs> this is just garbage where your character's are doing different things at the same time. All it does is cause chaos for you trying to uh, explain. Like, he spent so long in a different storyline to me, he had this whole ass character with him that he was enjoying, like, and every other one is insufferable, and I was just like, I've, I've not even seen who this person is yet, so, like, that's great, I'm just gonna have to go off your word for it. It's like, I chose to play a game with you, but I guess we're just gonna play games separately, because that's what the new form of yeah. co-op is, I don't know. Bizarre. So, I don't want to do that again, I would choose that if he wasn't coming over, but the fact that he is, it's like, well, why don't I just wait for you to come over and we can just play from my PC and actually have the same, like, just play solo mode. Christ. Uh, but apparently it released recently. I've already seen that some people are playing it. I hope it's great. I doubt that it is. It's, uh, I don't know. It's super massive. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a good, um, <laughs> it, it reminds me of, like, the, uh, Bl- Blumhouse, like, approach to shit. It's like the gaming version. Probably doesn't cost too uh, much to keep reusing all this shit. Um, and it's well, played enough by I, people because it's seen as like a party thing where, you know, I, I imagine this they're still going, so it must be making money. Well, I think, uh, isn't there, like, the, the Dark Pictures, like, anthology, like, very clearly, like, reuses assets, right? Like Yeah, that's what of... I'm kind of saying, is like, it's contextualized in such a way that people will see it as like, ooh, then eh. and then it's like, yeah, you, you, this is, this is shit. They're barely games. Um, 
well it's it it's it hardly feels like the best utilization of like what branching storytelling can mean in games to do it like that yeah minimal interactivity outside of the capacity to make choices and i mean ultimately like branching storylines like a good story where you're invested in the outcomes is like pretty essential i would say or you could just not have that mm, yeah that's true Lord and Long Long have no gameplay too. of Mubschlington Abbey. Is there any good chance of an EFAP of Mauler's every frame of pause when there's less going on? It would be an EFAP for the Ooh. ages. I think we can do an EFAP, yeah. EFAPing EFAP would be... It would be but courageous. That, would that cause a rift in the, in the universe or something? I, I mean, know. it'll cause a time rift because we'll be here for 30,000 days. But... Yeah. I don't know if we want to do that. Cause a time rift? That sounds like it could be really bad. It could be really bad. Mostly for us, because we have to do it. We can't just leave whenever we want. Damn it. Um, hey, Mola, just a small thank you for your gaming streams. Oh, well, no problem. I've enjoyed them, and uh, like when I hit the credits on Ragnarok, I was like talking a bit about how much it was a, a joy to stream it, and lots of fun things were shared. It was an interesting journey, as one may say. The Golden Talisman of Protection is actually quite OP. You can use it throughout a playthrough. It increases your parry window to spam the fuck out of it. Trust me, even a filthy casual like me gets perfect parries back to back. Well, I think that's referring to 2018, actually, so... We're catching up! This is the Streamlabs okay. ones, remember? We're getting to, uh... Ooh. Modern day with these soon. Would you rather lose the pinky finger from both hands, or all the toes from both feet? Uh, surely I would rather lose the pinky finger, right? Hmm. I'm not That's sure. An important finger. I'd uh, be curious sure to try walking no without toes. toes. I'm pretty sure that if you have no toes, it's like walking is like good luck, you know? Um, getting a prosthetic to that... replace your toes is probably much easier than getting one to replace a finger. Um, I, think I'd, oh, I, figured, I think I'd go I with losing my baked, toes. I think it was baked into the question that you just have to accept this condition. Um, like, I, th uh, I thought that if you lose your big toe, like, that alone destroys, like, your ab ability to walk. You so would, if you, you could, lose all your toes, right? Like, you could probably that's... adjust to it. You could probably get used to it. I feel like it. they exist for a reason. Um, I'm, I'm sure you, i sure that you say they that. help immensely. <laughs> there are plenty yeah, of things sure we that... can get rid of that don't cost us that much. But I, I, I feel like you I, could get, I, I, I think you could get either used to it or you could get somewhat decent like things to put on your foot or fake toes or something to at least be able to function normally. But I, th I, like I, I, I think said, I thought it was baked into the question that you have to accept like that there is no prosthetic. And if that's the case, it's like I'd rather have worse would, grip than not be able to walk. I, I think I'd be able to walk without it. I think I'd be able to get used to it. I don't think it's baked in that you can't replace them. Well, so like, like you, can, we lived... you can walk while lifting your toes up if you take them and understand what I mean. It's like it's awkward to walk like that, I think, but you can walk. I'm and if you have to do that all the time. So like, yeah. I thought... Well, if you do it all the time, like, you'll get yeah. used to it. Well, the question I would have said, what would you prefer? Have no pinky fingers or not be able to walk, right? Instead, it said no toes. So I assume well, it's trying to. The, the question didn't say like, "What do you want? Worse grip or not able to walk?" Like they're just asking about what. That's happens what I said to you. What are you doing? I thought that you just said like, "Lose pinky." Or yeah, not you be said able to walk. like the spirit of the question is you can't account for the fact that it's going to make it you not be able to walk. And it's like no, it would have said no, you would have no. said that if it was that. You, you said that it's you said that it's lose your pinky or not be able to walk. If exactly. We're actually gonna be no, 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 no. It's you. not not be able to walk. It's just lose your toes. No, I know that that's what it is, but like when you were saying the comparison, you said it was like lose the ability to walk or like lose a pinky. When like the point that's being made is that if you lose your pinky, it makes it hard to grip. Like if we're going to talk about what you're essentially losing in the question, that's all I'm trying to get across. Yeah, I'm confused. I thought you were trying to say the spirit of the question involves no way to account for the fact you've lost your toes and therefore you're not going to be able to... No, what, what I meant in terms of your ability to account for it is that w I presume that prosthetics aren't baked into it. I thought it was like you have to accept that you are missing that and you need to find a That's way to That's what getting prosthetics are, I feel, is accepting that you can't. Um, I, I don't I, think there's anything in the spirit of the question that would preclude so being I able can just to get, get what? prosthetics. Prosthetics get a prosthetic finger or something then like a super yeah but yeah absolutely finger. however but i well i don't know if, if those like exist right 
All right, well, I, feel I think like they those do, are, but they're pretty like high tech are... at this point. Yeah, they're pretty. Yeah, but... They're pretty. Yeah, we're in the infancy of that sort of thing. Uh, but I feel like replacing, realistically, replacing your toes to fulfill their function for walking, to get back up to how things used to be, you'd be a lot more successful replacing your toes than you would replacing your pinky, which is a much more precision, you know, digit, you know, precision yeah, appendage. Yeah, to me, the the inherent like reduction in my capacity to do things by losing the pinky seems way lower than like if i lose all my toes that i think that's like the fundamental uh someone said rags if you just get prosthetics then what's the point of the question because prosthetics are not repla accurate replacements for the real thing that's well, sure, the... that, that that's kind of like my point is that i don't know that there's any prosthetic to me that seems like it would account for like the loss of all of your toes in i the same way i would like, agree that there are no prosthetics you'd likely have now, and I could be wrong, but chances are even even going into this question, believing that I'll never get you know, essentially the functionality of real toes back, I still I'm I still would prefer to keep my pinkies. I especially I guess with I how much find that unfathomable because to me it seems well, like losing the Rags, toes. Rags has famously only had before explained to people that the pinky is more useful than they think. I, I know that the I would rather lose my ring than... fingers than my pinkies. I know that the pinky is like Maybe. very useful, but like to me, the toes seem very obvious. It's like grip versus like ability to walk. I don't know. Like walking to me seems way I think more important. I think that you could get to a decent amount of walking with practice, a bit of therapy, some like. Uh, have you have you seen the box? I, I the box. I don't. Is that a movie? <laughs> I don't know that, what that that's, is. that's yeah, the movie, the box. Uh, but th there's a character in that who has like a like a fucked up pinky or something like that and so she she gets like these inserts as she puts in that sort of takes the place of it and it's not it's better than nothing i'm gonna but go i think i'm gonna go to the toilet but i'm gonna walk without trying to use my toes while i go there and then i'll report back once i'm done yeah yeah and then <laughs> i don't know yeah, if that's, I, I don't know if that's analogous right because like you're still using your toes to some extent for balance <laughs> sorry i drank the water went down the wrong way i mean there there will be a <coughs> tiny a, amount of weight that will probably be very minuscule considering how top heavy a human is but I, I, I just think that you could eventually, especially with, you know, shoes and stuff, you can get up to a lot closer to your original capability, whereas I just don't think you'll really be able to replace that pink. I anyway. see. The thing is, you say that and I just don't believe that. I think that, like, I don't believe that that's the case. I think that, that that's something that is, like, virtually impossible to recover. Well, you have people who have, like, an entire leg gone and they're able to get prosthetics that allow them to run and jog pretty darn good with practice. Yeah, so if you're just true. losing your toes, I assume well, that you could have some sort of a... Losing them on all of my feet. Yes, all too, yes. I, th I think that, as important as that is, I think you could get back to being essentially normal with enough practice, getting used to it, and some, like, inserts or something you attach to your foot, as opposed to the pinky. And because I use my hands so much for Assuming that typing that's and... the question, though. I would assume so. I don't, I, don't, I, I don't know why they wouldn't say that you couldn't replace them with anything or that you just can't put something there. It's like if you if the question was if you lost a leg, so I can't use a crutch anymore, you know, that 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 seems well, sure, that I just wouldn't. you lose your leg. And it's like, yeah, but you can get like a cyborg leg. It's like, uh, I don't know. Man. Well, I mean, so, if, if we lived in a it, I think if we lived in a world where cybernetics were advanced enough to essentially replace the leg or that it's even better than a normal leg, that would be more reasonable but i feel now fake legs are just not as good as real legs so yeah of I mean, course I they're not as good as real legs but like nevertheless hello well like, i would choose to keep my pinkies and i would put look for some inserts or something for my toes to see if i can uh replace them with something at least if for um, anything to fill my shoes i feel like this is a more than enough balance to walk without your toes because you have like the three main pressure points of each foot like six Pressure points and total to balance. I I feel like I've distinctly heard like that if you lost even like your big toe and you kept all of your other toes, you would have to relearn how to walk. Yeah, but like, that you can do that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, so I bet your this says here the uh, on under acornhealth.com uh, .corn .org, uh, toes and balance. Uh, you can walk without toes. It's still possible to walk without any of them, but your gait will need to compensate. Yeah. There are prosthetics and shoe inserts available that may be of benefit too, depending on which one or how many you have missing. 
Uh, it says, from, from a functional standpoint, this is on scientificamerican.com. From a functional standpoint, amputating a big toe results in little or no disability. I, I like I'm not I'm not sure what to make of that. It just seems like I I'm confident about the like about the whole thing that if you lose like a pink the big toe, it like fundamentally fucks up your ability to walk like permanently. When you say fundamentally yeah, well, fucks like, up your ability to walk, what are you picturing? Like someone who's really having trouble and almost can't walk at all or yeah, actually, like that you that you would almost undervalue how important like your toes are in terms yeah, of Yeah, I would go with your over exaggerating it that it's not that bad. I, I'm gonna go uh, with I'm gonna go with the stuff here, and uh, I I will uh, I will absolutely. I mean, if you lose your feet, uh, you can just get. There are people who just learn to live with it and their balance. And like it said earlier, like your gait will change and your balance will change and it will, you'll adapt to it. Like I'm sure someone lost their pinky finger and it's like, oh yeah, that's gone. And then they get used to it too. Well, here's well, you the can, thing. That's, that's true though. You can get used to it. However, you will lack an option that was pretty damn useful, especially for our line of work. Yes. That's kind of what I was going to go into. If I lose a pinky, then there's, I don't think there's going to be really anything I could do to attach to my hand with our current technology level that will bring that back, that functionality back. Whereas the toes, for pretty much everyone, they're only there to assist with walking. And if I can learn how to walk again, essentially get back to normal-ish and just have a different gait, then I have, I essentially, I haven't lost anything, but now I look funny when I walk. And with how important being able to like type and you know, game and stuff like that, that is for me, I'd rather keep my hands as intact as possible. Yeah, and if I, okay, was, like, fair enough. If I was like a professional runner, I'd probably have the reverse answer. <laughs> yeah, that'd probably be pretty detrimental to their line of work. Unless, of course, there's something to do with wind resistance as to losing a pinky that's important. <laughs> something that I'm unaware of, it completely fucks your ability to run to not have your pinky finger. Yeah, this, the Scientific American here says the doctors consider having nine toes a uh, minor impairment that is little. And I know that's nine toes instead of all of them, but still. Um, well, I well, imagine that there's a different level of impairment based on right big toes. Absolutely, yeah, it'll... Zero. <laughs> I mean, but even here, but even that first one under acornhealth.org, it's, it's, yeah, you can walk without them, but your gait will need to change to compensate. I'm sure that there's you also can walk without them. It just seems like it, like, can you run? Um, probably. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, that that's a very yeah. dramatic change from what you you were saying just five minutes ago. Oh, sorry. I thought I said the part like, yeah, fair enough to like the points that you made. Well, because um, not in that part. Well, definitely not. I th I just I didn't realize you could <laughs> okay, see it. Okay, I definitely did. Um, um, as for running, I imagine that's the same deal. You're gonna have to relearn it. Yeah, you have to. You learn how to walk, and then you learn how to run. Once you're once you're your body adjusts to the different balance and how you can spread that out in your feet and you're walking around more normal. No, you didn't. You no, I was, into... I definitely, I definitely did. <laughs> Sorry. Huh? Did what? Oh, whatever. Oh, no, it's just something. Nah, don't worry about it. All right. Uh, I assume, yeah, when you, you learn how to walk and then you learn how to run again after that, once you're more comfortable with it. Yeah, but, it's, yeah okay. it'll be, it'll be tough. It'll be awkward, but I imagine after several attempts, you'll, there's going to be a form of compensation for whatever is needed, be it balance and gait and whatever. That I'm sure you could. I doubt it would ever be at the point where you simply cannot run. I guess that's yeah, the thing. I, I doubt are, we, that. are we downplaying the form of compensation for grip, or is that like an impossible thing to? It's not. Like, um, cut. I'm. I mean, we we can go over all of the detrimental aspects lifting. of losing the pinky. I guess. Because um, I think it can have more of an effect than it may be expected. A lot of people will typically gun for like taking the pinky out as though it is the least important of an important set of abilities. I'm pretty sure it's the ring finger is the least important one, right? Yeah, when it comes to grip, I would rather lose my ring finger. Uh... Well, let's put it this way. Uh, let's uh, if if it was, if the choice was to lose my thumbs or my toes, I would definitely choose the toes. Yeah, I got to keep He's, my yeah, thumbs. absolutely. Yeah, thumbs are super like that's important. thumbs are legends. Necessary. We need them. We need yeah. yeah. Often said, opposable but thumbs I, is the reason that we're, we're here where we are. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's why in Assassin's Creed, right, they lose the ring finger, because that's like the most... Don't they chop the ring finger in, in John Wick They only Wick did that well. with the first game. They did only do that with the first game, because uh, your boy Leonardo da Vinci figured out a way Smart, to make yeah. the blade work without having to deal with that. But Ezio was ready to lose it. He was. Committed. He was, yeah. 
Remember, it, like it, Leonardo like trolls him a little bit. He hits the he table does. with like the axe or whatever. He's like, nah, just kidding. I found a way around. Leonardo's it. a cheeky little <laughs> bastard. Cheeky, you cheeky Renaissance man, you. Yeah, the remember, actual remember Renaissance. Don Wick they chop out. off the ring finger as well. I think. Ah, uh, yes. I wouldn't be able to right. tell you why. It's some this blood sacrifice Wasn't or some shit. Like a, yeah, I'm sure it's something <laughs> dumb. So. Well, no, what are you talking about, Ryan? Wow. It was something great. It's John something Wick. dumb. Do you not like John Wick? John Wick's really cool. I like, I love John Wick 1. Oh. The way you specified that means you don't like John Wick 2 and 3? What? All I said, what? You can't, you can't extrapolate anything from the fact that I said that I love John Wick 1. <laughs> yeah, I can extrapolate that you well, love John Wick well. 1. <laughs> I loved, yeah, I love we John Wick 1. About... We I love the first about, John Wick movie. So, Rags, you know what? I was on your side, but I immediately... Because we were talking about John Wick, the series. The fact that you would specify just the first one is interesting. Yeah, I love John Wick 1, don't you? It's interesting that when we're talking about the series as a whole, that you specifically identified the first film as being the one that you like. Look, there's nothing wrong with John Wick it 1. Doesn't right? cons it, doesn't, it doesn't mean necessarily that you're saying that 2 and 3 are terrible. It's just interesting, the implication. Well, I'm just... I'm I'm feeling like the point here, which is that I love John Wick 1, is I, look here, don't you love John Wick 1? I do really like John Wick 1. All right, yeah. then we're in agreement, and there's nothing to discuss further. We are further. in agreement, yeah. but I wasn't the one who specifically highlighted John Wick 1 as being the great one. The great one? I'm just saying that I really like John Wick 1. Nice catch yeah. there, Rags. You could have, you could have that was a good catch. Put into yeah. a net there, but you made sure your safety. Because <laughs> all you See, need to I'm do now is just be like, "Hey, you man, I'm just net. saying I really love one of them." That's not that's not little not. little little known fact. But Shibi dogs can they could you know how like a any like a cat or a rat anything that they could get their head through they could get the rest of their body through. I can just do that with nets. I can just squeeze right through those net holes. Oh man, so, it'll be perfect when the predator yeah. does the net thing because you can just jump right through. It really would, yeah. He'd, he'd be, be like, very what? Confused. He'd probably, like, adopt you at that point, because he'd be like, this is just too cool. Oh, yeah. He's net-proof. Rags, <laughs> when will the hot dog Lear return to EFAP as last seen in EFAP 70 on Han? <laughs> the hot dog Lear? <laughs> I don't <laughs> even remember that reference. A hot dog Lear makes more sense than hot dog Lear, uh, but that's how they've spelt it. The, hot, the hot dog Lear? Is that like a, a a a burglar? I think it was the burglar. He steals hot dogs. Hot dogs? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's it because of the Hamburglar. I thought um, the last thing I remember about Hamburglar right? was to do with the Boba Fett coverage we had. We yeah, in the whole, shadow. That was the, the weirdest the, fucking, fucking start. Shadow creature. Where we would <laughs> we talked for so long about McDonald's law. <laughs> it was the shadow creature. <laughs> I can't believe that was a thing. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> it feels maybe we're getting trolled hardcore by that, but that was hilarious. It's the kind of thing where you, you, you wish if it was a reality show there was just that guy. He's just this shadowy creature. That's the it's a, it, it writes itself. It's such a great joke. Uh oh, rags. Man. You didn't shut the bathroom door in your latest video when going to pee, or you just have the world's loudest toilet, or you just played toilet.wav and washing hands.wav and lied to the viewers. How could you? PS hi Mueller and Fringy. So that was actually a something that I was concerned about. Like, will the fact that the toilet sound plays in the distance imply that I was not well I I think I'm okay with peeing with the door open. It's pooping I thought, with the I door thought open your rules vehemently. Was it when there's no one else living in the place you're okay with it? Or I can't remember now. Um, I I also if you're peeing with the door open, that's okay if you're alone or if you have a very special special relationship with who you're living with. A pee relationship. Yeah. But yeah, but if you um, but if you you never poop with the door open. You just don't. It doesn't matter if you live in a mansion. It doesn't matter if you live alone. If you're a hermit living in the woods, like that guy that Jeremiah Johnson became friends with. You don't do that. You don't poop with the door open. You can pee with the door open. That's all right. That's fine. You know, as long as, you know, you're either alone or it's whoever you're with is fine with that. But you don't, you don't poop with the door open. So that was fine. Yes. I think I even specified in the video I had to go pee. Um... But yes, also hi. Uh, Rags, say Hello. ya boy, like I just said something very sexually provocative. Oh, ya yeah boy, I guess. Oh, okay. Hmm. So someone would be like, okay, and then I'd say, ya yeah boy. Mola, say, Shishna? 
Like I just said something very wholesome. Hope that makes sense. Tishna? It's T C H N A A A D A H. Nah. Why would that be something said to something wholesome? Does maybe they're trying to. Maybe you're trying to play like hard to get. Like, uh, like if uh, someone was to say something, or is know, it like no, nah, very complimentary like, or sweet nah. to you, and you're like no, like you're you're yeah yeah, yeah. Well, because yeah, you like throw that. A, like you throw a W in there if complimented. you want to do no, right? Not because nah does sound like the first one you were saying where I'd be nah. like nah, nah. I guess I'll go. I'll just do both. Nah and no, I don't really know. Bringy, say hey, like I just said something about your goo. Hey. No, I, I think they mean like hey. No, like, well, but like, well, like you're an did, actor and you say, care. Yeah, but did they say good or like, did they say something positive or negative? You haven't given me enough direction. Wait, so if it was positive, your reaction would have been hey. <laughs> 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 well, no, I went. I went with a neutral one because it is unclear to me. You know, like what exactly? Why? Yeah, why? Don't you know. know, it's only two, and it's only two words. So just do them both. Yeah, may as well. Uh, so someone would say, "Free, hey. your goo is terrible." Hey! Oh no, that no. Let me try again. Hey! Yeah, there you go. Okay, More yeah, playful. that works. And then somebody right. might come up to you and say, "Fringy, this goo, it's amazing." Hey! Well, mm, see. I actually think with that one, he'd respond negatively because be like, hey, you don't actually have how my goo. You... You're lying. That's yeah, how'd you get it? Well, I assumed that. it was yeah, like, again, like maybe he had given turned, it to someone as a you know, gift for private Well, this is the, the fringy movie where it's not the real goo. It's more of like a, you know, the metaphor. The fruvy. Mm hmm Fring And then we have fringy it's a metaphor too, the, for the, the meaning of life. I don't know if I'd call it that. It's the fringquel? Like, you wouldn't call it the fringquel? No, that just, oh, you have that Alvin and the like... Chipmunks too, the Squeakquel. That's, that's so. I that's assume true. that you would. I assume the naming convention essentially dictates that you would call yours the Frinkquel. I, I mean, if we're going by the naming convention of specifically Alvin and the Chipmunks, sure. But like, if we're not, or at least I'm choosing not to. Wasn't the third one called Alvin and the Chipmunks Chipwrecked? Didn't it be called uh, the, I the think three? You're totally or right about that. I'm pretty sure it is called Chipwrecked. Oh, neat. And then, yeah. and then we have Alvin and the Chipmunks, the road chip. Wow. It doesn't work as well. Uh, in a subvision of the idea that the extended edition is always better, I hear the extended version of Stripes in 1981 is worse as it ruins the pacing. I would say that the extended... Oh, do we... we have we given our hot take about Kingdom of Heaven? Yeah, we often have, and people are very shocked to hear it, and they're going to continue. Oh, to be yeah, the extended edition's worse. That is that is a hot take I think for the it, universe. Um, yeah, I I think it does significant character damage to one of the characters. Do we get Maybe to use too, Shad as a shield? Really. Shad was there, and he agreed. So you know, leave us alone. Yeah, go after yeah, him. So He's... yeah, it it really was not a pleasant watch. He uh, was there, right? Am I dreaming? He, yeah, I'm yeah, almost he certain was. he was there. Yeah. Efat Wall uh, movie I'm, arc you know, coming at you live in ten years. Eventually. <laughs> It will happen. Um, where are we? I briefly confused Rags' video title, Players Don't Like Gay Characters, with Mashiro Sakurai's channel and laughed. For a split second, I thought Sakurai was going to talk about the really spicy subjects. P.S. Whatever happened to Ra? I think there's someone in chat who claims to be Ra sometimes, but I, I don't know anymore. It's hard to say. It is hard to say. I hope he's doing well. I hope he's doing well, too. I hope he's found or... the woman of his dreams. Yeah. Hey, Mola. I love your long Star Wars videos. What recording and editing software are you using for them? Specifically, your editing is superb. Keep on going. Well, thank you. That's very kind. Uh, I'm using Sony Vegas 16 for mostly everything. I think I'm on 19 now with this machine, so that'll be I fun. I also, not too long ago, got 19, and it's uh, it works well. How did you yeah. get it? Uh, if you have a previous version you get like a huge discount on upgrading it to other versions. I couldn't and find I think I went from... anywhere to buy 19. Um, it was insane. I even asked Dash Bullshit to help me out and he couldn't find anywhere either. Um, I've got Vegas Pro. Yeah, Vegas Pro 19 and I jumped from... Oh, I jumped from 15. I went from 15 to 19. When? Oh, sorry. And... Actually, a better question is when did you do that? Was it a while ago? Or was it like a... Uh, somewhat... Yeah, I like think semi recently, but yeah. But have that with an iron grip because 
uh, to buy 19 from their store is actually like, I don't even know if you can do it anymore. They all the, What they, happens? They point you to uh, Vegas 365 now, everywhere does. And Vegas 365 is apparently like the most expensive version. The idea is that you buy it and then you never have to buy it again because it'll update all the time, forever. But you okay. pay monthly. Oh. Subscription. So, and it's pricey. so fuck that. Yes, I hate that. Uh, it's so obviously, annoying because uh, I would prefer to go back to fucking 16 than to be forced into a subscription service where I have to fucking pay every month. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And if and if I have if it's the choice between because 19's fine, I don't have any issues with it really. The occasional crack. Actually, I haven't had the problem in a long time. But yeah, I don't know how good it would have to get to where I'd pay a subscription. Because I really don't want to pay a subscription think... for something. I'd rather just pay. I'd rather pay. Like, a large sum up front to just have it forever. Someone in chat summarized it for me. There's too many things I'm subscribed to. I just can't handle it anymore. I, I, I know. I, that's why people pirate shit. Because they, they can't subscribe to everything anymore. They just can't do it. Everything wants to nickel and dime you. It's like, what happened to being able to just buy a thing? Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's the one thing about... Now, um, I will say... I don't think... But do keep, if you're going to keep something, keep Game Pass, though. <laughs> keep that right, shit. Right, right. But, um... As far as Vegas, because I think what I did was when Vegas Pro, when I launch it, it has the little promotional thing pop up that you X out of. Um, like it's, you know, like upgrade to the next version. I think I used that. I think I went directly through that window that pops up and uh, it took me to wherever I needed to go. But I don't specifically remember where. I don't think I told you, Rags, but um, I picked up an Xbox 360 kind of casually because I was in my local, you know, things store. Cool one there. Okay. Like, hmm. It was only like twenty quid, I think. So nice. Oh, I'll take that. And it's um, good for decoration. Two Nothing games else. I picked up on it: uh, Tirok and Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, which I plan to stream, and I'll explain at the beginning of both of them why I would stream those games because those are very specific okay. and strange. But um, all right. The other thing I saw there was Gears of War one, two, and three were all a pound each. I was like, um, Ooh, why not? You should have got them. Did you get them? Yes. <laughs> that's my. Oh, yeah. That's why I said, why not? Um, but the thing is, like, what was the, because, like, I still am more than happy to play those with you, but what is, are we able to do that online? Uh, on the Xbox 360? I think, 360? Xbox, I think not, Xbox Live on 360 is gone. Well, I, I was going to say, gone, not necessarily yeah. on 360, but just, yeah. I, I... Oh, that's well, a shame, let me actually. check if it's on Steam. I assume not. I don't think it is. I think it was on Steam at some, uh, it was it on PC, not. right? Gears War 1? Well, it well, Gears Five is on yeah, Game Pass, so Windows the old Live. ones might be. So let me check. <laughs> let me go to my Xbox app. I think the old ones. I don't know if they would be Games Windows I'll check. Live. You never know. Is a thing. Yeah. Uh, let me go to find games. Gears of War. Gears of War Four Ultimate Edition. Wait, is this? What is this? Is this for the Gears of War Ultimate Edition for Windows Ten? <laughs> Gears of War Returns, stunningly remastered and modernized for Windows 10 with up to 4K resolution and unlocked refresh rates. Oh. Wait, that's, well, on, that's on PC, but not on, on Steam. It's on Game I Pass. Think. Right. Uh, I assume it has oh, co-op. interesting. Let me check. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Details. Uh, capabilities. Online co-op. It says two, two to two players, I think. Online multiplayer is two to eight players. Uh, as right. far as I know, but I'll have to double check. But yeah, the release date looks like in 2016 they came out with this. So then so... I assume you and I would be able to play one, not two, not three, four, and five. Um, I unless they've remastered the other ones, that seems to be the case. But let me check for other Gears of War, because that's just what came up with the little search bar. So let me search. Let me see. Gears of War triple bundle, Gears Tactics, oh, that's different. Uh, it seems like, yeah, Gears of War uh, Ultimate Edition, which is a remaster of the first, and Gears of War 4 and Gears 5. Mm. All right. Which I would, I would certainly play through Gears Five with you. That is, well, a, would, that's I, a fun game. I, I enjoyed. Quite I think a bit. Gears will be able to suffice, even if it's not particularly great, right? Because we, it's like the game's talk. not particularly great, or even, the. What I'm saying is, even if Gears Four, for example, is like shit or whatever, it's probably good enough we'll for have us a good to stream time. it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I Resident Evil Five, it's a great co-op game. Well, it'd be cool if, um, if it was very if it was four-player co-op because we could get free and metal then. Yeah, uh, it would be neat. 
Let me see if let me see if Gears Five is. It looks like it is local co-op two to three players. That's strange. Two to three. Ugh. It's like fucking fire team elite all over. <laughs> Don't remind yeah, me. Yeah, sorry, middle. Middle. When did I'm everyone forget? Four is the number. Four. I think. I guess I think four is still probably the default, but I guess with Apex Legends is the big one. That's three people on a team. Uh. And what was the is other Is there a new thing where everyone lost a friend? Is that like a, <laughs> a I don't pandemic know. I guess of friend loss? To, it's probably just easier to balance for three people. Like I th I with Apex I think it works well in terms of the weapons and the range and like time to kill and stuff. Having three is probably about the limit for one team. And because once you get to four, I feel like it really starts to become a bit different. Um but yeah, I don't see why gear. Maybe it's tied to the amount of. Maybe they want to try to keep it narratively similar to where it's generally you and two people with you who are computers. So they try to keep it to three players. I can't remember. I don't remember that aspect of the game, though I remember enjoying Gears 5 quite a bit. I don't know. Well, hmm, yeah. that, that gives us two. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Same for Halo, same for a lot of things. I'm hoping to have a, a lot more of a consistent playing of games thing that happen at some point. Uh, I like games. Games are cool, you know? I give them a little thumbs up. I love games. That's why I didn't, never give up on Pinky. <laughs> I got a sprint. Yes, yes. I mean, I'm assuming, oh, out of us right, three, right, I'm assuming right. you guys use uh, left control to crouch. Am I the only one here who uses C for crouch? I often um, use C. You guys are different than me. I think generally I will use uh, control to crouch. Yes, I generally will, will uh, use control to crouch. I'm really shit. As far with as it. I know, I could never get used to it. But C, I'm 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 much easier with. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, but I, I typically use left control. Um, well, the thing that's crazy is I had a friend who, for the longest time, and he, by the way, was by far the best player out of all of us for like first person shooters and stuff. Uh, on PC, he would use the arrow keys as WASD. He would always rebind it. To really? That. Yeah. And if you see him play, he would look like a bit of a goblin person because the arms are right next to each other. And you're just like me. But he well, was you'd have amazing. to. Well, because if you if your if your left hand is on the arrow keys, you lose out on so many other buttons. It's I don't know. I, this is the thing. I don't know how to say it, but he uh, he was the best by far. Uh, he could easily have gone pro. I don't know how he did it because I I because <laughs> like like because because the most. Because E and F are almost universally the use buttons. R is almost always reload. And you could rebind these, of course. But yeah, yeah that's so awkward because if your fingers are on the WASD or the, the arrow keys, then the rest of your hand is way lower. And you don't have... Yeah, that's bizarre to me. That sounds really it's, strange. It's just... It's funny how control Weird. sets work because like, I had a friend who was obsessed with Metroid Prime Hunters. Uh, really obsessed when it came out. Just constantly On the playing DS? It. Yeah. And obviously, that's there was like a battle yeah. mode in it that was just it's like first person shooting, killing each other, and just like we would always yep. joke about how like fuck that control scheme is so annoying compared to just FPS stuff. But he he was probably good enough on the DS that he could take you on on PC sort of shit. It's just like how did you get to that point? <laughs> yeah, the way it worked on uh, that game was you your aim was your stylus. So you use the stylus to aim. Uh, left the left bumper on the DS would be your fire button. And you had your arrow keys, which was your movement. And that's really everything that you had because of the layout of the DS. So if you wanted to do anything else, you either had to tap stuff on the screen to activate different things or whatnot. Yeah. But yeah, it was uh, you you were pretty limited with what you could actually do with your 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 left hand. It was essentially you could only move and you could only shoot. And that was it. You Finish up the question though. My recording, I use Audacity, clean it up a little bit with noise reduction. It's a, it's, it's not something I like to do, but if you just do a basic one on a very, very isolated piece, it'll just make it so that the audio is as clean as possible. Then throw that into Vegas, apply, uh, I forget exactly what it is. I think it's an equalizer. It's something that fucks with some of the audio to some degree, the filters, I'd have to check them, but yeah. And then that goes into Vegas, make the visuals. It's a whole thing, it takes forever. I don't recommend making six hour videos this way, but I will continue to do so probably. I record, I don't use Audacity myself. I record straight into Vegas and RTX does a pretty darn good job at cleaning up background noise. Um, I, I There was once when I, I cleaned out my, um, recently I cleaned my fan 
because I just I didn't really notice. You don't think to look at it, but it got super dusty from just turning all the time and gathering dust. So I took it outside and I cleaned it and it was it was like a, a night and day difference. And then I could like hear the fan again. It was loud because so much more air was getting through again. Yep. But uh, apart from that, yeah, that's that's how it works for me. So I guess whatever you whatever you do is whatever works for you. Do it. Um, and this is uh, keep on going. We'll do good stuff. Absolutely. First time, first time watching your stream. Don't know if they're referring to oh. the game, the EFAB, whatever. But I hope you're enjoying. Well, whatever it, it was, yeah. glad to have you. Remember, in early 2020, there was news on a female-centric Star Wars. Looks like that went absolutely nowhere. I don't even well, remember. Well, so that. did this female-centric uh, pirates, pirates movie pirates, that they were yeah. going to make. What a shame! It's been great. It would have been a triumph. I would have watched it, maybe, maybe. I would. I mean, we would have for our jobs, probably. Many of the messages I completely forgot sending. It's weird to hear them after so long. Uh, would have reworded most. Rags, it's officially been a year since 2042. With it, we've only had three maps, a handful of guns, and countless $10 plus bundles of shitty skins. I've heard very little legit good stuff about the state of 2042. Um, I have not played that game since the EFAP for it. I think it was 13 hours I put into that game is all I could really handle. Luckily, it got me into Battlefield 5, which is, has become my favorite Battlefield. And I am so ready to play it again when I get this computer on new computer on Tuesday because my current GPU is having some tisms. So all, I could, all I'm playing is RimWorld. Not that I don't adore RimWorld, but you, know, you like to you know, play other stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm in no way interested or excited for Battlefield 2042. Hopefully that was a huge wake-up call for DICE to make a good fucking Battlefield game. I hope they don't get the well, wrong message, which is people don't like Battlefield. But you never know these days. Fingers crossed. They'd make more... If they released a DLC for Battlefield 5, or even Battlefield 1 at this point, they'd legit just make more money. You're probably right. There, there's more people... Pl I think when, when Battlefield 1 had that Steam sale, they got over 50,000 concurrent players on just Steam. Yep. That's nuts. That's crazy. And that catches us up with Streamlabs, of which oh boy. <laughs> it's actually easier right. to keep on top of now because I have something called a mini feed attached to my OBS that actually shows me the Streamlabs up to date. It's like a thing, oh, which is a dramatic change from how it used to be, so that should help us that out. That is neat. Um, so on to uh, Rings of Power. Uh, at least these will be Rings of Power related. to be. All right. This one says scorn, an unbridled scorn. I uh, doesn't deserve it. Yeah, it doesn't really deserve to be talked about, honestly. I think we kind of said everything that there was to say. Um, I, I just don't have. There are games that I I do feel kind of passionately for that I would make videos on. It's certainly a consideration. I would like to make more game related content, but man, scorn. Uh, there's not actually that much to say. Like we said during our EFAP on it, it's not like Amnesia Rebirth where there's a lot to discuss because that's trying to do far more with itself. Scorn just doesn't give you that much to talk about. Yeah, it, I don't even know what a video for it would look like. Um, it would just be what we, I think it would be what we said in the, in the coverage, but probably shorter because it would just be a little bit faster and the visuals would be there to fill in any gaps and that's it. I, I really can't see, I couldn't have no passion for that. I would just be like Scorn. None. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, like Plus, Ragnarok. I don't want to play it again. We're not talking about Ragnarok for another two weeks, and I'm probably going to be pumped by the time we get to that point. Talk about it as I am right now. Yeah. You seem really excited. Uh, lots of things happen in it. Great. And I'm even interested to kind of watch all the, you know, cutscenes and stuff. So. What's with the spam? Hey. Spam. The one thing that gets you gets you booped on this channel real quick is spamming. Yeah. That's all you got to do is not spam. You had, you had one job. One Good job to you. Rags, you're a cool doggo. Thank you. I agree. Good hi as well. Oh, hello to you. What is this? Biggles always win? What is even the spam? I don't know. I'm weirdo. Uh the rings are the number of zeros they wrote to Tolkien's estate to piss on it. From Angry Joe's review, lol. 
The number of zeros they wrote to Tolkien's estate to piss on it. I'm not sure I understand. The number of zeros? Yeah, the rings are the number of zeros they wrote to Tolkien's estate to piss on it. Does he mean the amount... They oh, added? that much they paid? Why does it say wrote? They paid a lot of money to piss on the estate? Essentially, to, they, they paid a lot of money to disrespect the IP? I guess so. I assume that's what they mean. But hey, I mean, it's... I get there's a joke there, but like three zeros? It's like, we're looking at a lot more zeros than that. <laughs> it's gonna, they're gonna have to fill in... Uh, maybe they mean all of the rings once they're made. That would be closer. Um, now that this and She-Hulk is over, you can cover good stuff like Andor and Hot D. Hi Rags, hi Fringy, and of course hi Mola. Oh, and hi Guest. Hello. Hello. Yeah, how about that? Well, yeah, they might just be around the corner, hopefully. Maybe, maybe. In better news, we get Hot D tomorrow, smiley face. That must have been about the last episode coming out, I think, or at least close to it. Weird that uh, that started before and ended like right after Rings of Power, but I guess it made sense with the episode count. Um, I wonder what would happen if you switched all the creatives, writers, execs, and producers for Rings of Power and Hot D Season 2. Um, why would you do that? <laughs> wait, can you, wait, can you say that one more time? If they switch the create, basically all the people behind Rings of Power and Hot D season two, if we were to switch them, it's like why? Why? I I care about the Hot D characters. I don't give a shit about the Rings of Power characters. It it would it would it would be weird for them to try and save the Rings of Power characters. I'm sure they could do some great stuff with them, but at that point, I don't care. I don't care about these people, and I don't care about this world. You've made a mess of everything. Whereas what we essentially do is we lose all of the hot D characters and that plot turns to shit. And I value those things and I don't want them to be destroyed. So that would stink. Yeah. It would be interesting in theory though. It's like it's like a like a wife swap show. Uh, you have it's not a weird oh, it's not a weird like swingers thing. But you you have people write shows and then you swap all the writers to do the other shows. It's an interesting idea, but not with hot D. I don't want to lose it. I've got so little. I've got so little. What is this notification from YouTube? Like, I guess I'll check chat to make sure, but it says the audio stream's current bit rate is zero, and that is lower than the recommended bit rate. We recommend you oh. use an audio bit rate of one to eight kilobytes per second. It's like, well, I mean, we'd be muted at that point, so. I was about to say, you know, zero seems like not. <laughs> I, I don't believe like, you. Uh... OBS, I think you're lying to me. Like one's better than zero, yeah. Um, when you watch the Super Mario Brothers movies, make sure to check out the Morton Jamkel cut. It is the truest of the director's vision. It's a significant improvement to the theatrical cut. What? I didn't know there was a, we... dir <laughs> a director's cut for the Super Mario Brothers movie. Generally, when we watch things, we watch the director's cut or the extended edition yeah like we the, aim for whatever the, the best version yeah yeah calling it like whatever the creators refer to as the ultimate definitive edition sort of thing yeah they're the thing that's closest to their vision that isn't constrained by like theatrical limitations and things like that usually it works out sometimes it doesn't but usually it does um i can put slow mode on right and that kills the spammers i'm just have to figure out how to do slow mode because i don't actually know He'll just get bored with his alts. Well, it just makes it easier for the mods, that's all, because they're having to... Yeah. Especially with people who are like, go faster! It's like, trust me, the mods are probably going as fast as they can. No, don't slow me down. It's alright, you get like one per ten seconds, which isn't so bad. Yeah. Do I do it like slash command into the chat? I think that's a way to do it. Not too worried. When you, uh... I don't actually know. Is it true Eru Iluvatar pushed Gollum into the lava? Is that... I thought it was Frodo. Is that a th Well, I didn't... I, I mean... Pushed is... Going from the movies, pushed is a little bit complicated, right? I don't know how it goes in the book exactly. I think even in the books he does. I, ca I can't remember, though. I haven't read the books in so long. Um, or Gladriel, she showed up and just chopped his head off. This is very cool. Very cool. 
Yes. Very. Lord Longbong of Muglington Abbey. Is there any good chance of a Kong fap? Of Peter Jackson's Long Kong when there's less going on? It'd be a movie fap for the ages. P.S. Hello, Wagsies. Scritches for the good boy. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I mean, it feels weird, but it's about like the fourth version of that just for today. And yeah. I believe Long Kong will indeed be on the way. It's possible. It is possible. Based on in-game character models in Witcher 3, who is the prettiest? Triss, Yen, or Shani? I vote Shani. Okay. Let me remind myself. This is a common thing, right? People fight over Triss and Yennefer or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Shani looks really attractive. Uh, I gotta reacquaint myself with the... Yennefer... Triss, Yennefer... And Shani? That's the three. Ooh. Um, and they're all very attractive. Uh, I think this is just, I think this is, I mean, of course it's up to taste, but. Oh, I think I might, for me personally. Mm, I think I might go with. Probably it's a probably it's really close between Shani and yet I don't know even Trit yeah I don't know they're both they're all great I guess I'll just go with I'll go with Yennefer I think but I'm really I'm uh, yeah they're all very lovely so I'll say it's, it's pretty, definitely not a strong opinion that I have it's a common one I think for a lot of people so. yeah makes some sense I hope someone gives Sauron a hug aw I hope so too. Um. When you're hit by a pyroclastic flow, your bodily fluids flash to steam due to the extreme heat and you die instantly. Jeez. I can believe it. Something like going into space or something like that. You die. There we it's go. It's amazing how they showed that and they're like, nah, she's fine. Whatever. Um. Disparoo, Little Platoon, and Shad, if he hops in, which is better? Wheel of Time Season 1 or Rings of Power Season 1? Which Amazon travesty is better? I think, from memory, that um, Shad feels the Wheel of Time is, like, uh, really, like, hideously bad, and so does Disparoo, but the Rings of Power, I think Shad was, like, highlighting Rings of Power as, like, the worst thing he's ever seen. Um... Mm. I'm not sure how it ranks for us. We thought it was really bad. Like, really it's bad. It's definitely really bad. As worst thing we've ever seen. I mean, it's not Multiverse of Madness or, you know, like, Army of the Dead. Um, it, It's really bad, though. Yeah, I, I, it's funny. We should have like an old old time ranking or something, but it's it's difficult to do it sometimes because it would make a it would make for a fun efap to take a huge list of all the stuff that we've covered and just start kind of putting it on a a chart that we could have. Maybe it could be on the it would be good on the efap.me the efap site. That would be a neat thing to have. Though well. that would it would take a little bit of discussion, but I think it would be fun to go through, especially if we got a good guest of regulars and stuff. That would, that could be fun. I said, uh, someone in the chat said Rings of Power is not an adaption, though. It's like, well, it it, it is. It's just that they it's an adaption, they yeah. they made they made up a lot of it. As in, like they took sections of time that Tolkien didn't write specifics about, right? So that that's how yeah, they get away they with it. Them, yeah, yeah. I'd still say that's an adaptation. Yeah, it's an adaptation. It is. Um, EFAP TV suggestion: Banshee. It's a non-stop action show about an ex-con fresh out of prison who assumes the identity of a small town sheriff. Hmm. That sounds interesting. Interesting premise. Yeah. The last time we were given an interesting premise. <laughs> By the way, having uh, slow slow motors in like um you can only say something once per ten seconds, that's something I think they have constantly on Friday Night Tights, and it's probably a good move. I don't see a why lot you, of Yeah, why I see you, a decent amount of time. You wouldn't time. need more than that for someone who's just looking to add to the conversation, right? One per ten seconds, that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, it is pretty darn reasonable, I think. Cool. We might have that forever, because it actually kills spam, like, permanently. Kind of neat. Uh, yeah, he's weird, though. The second age, more like the garb age. Damn. Oh, 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 that's actually pretty funny. 
<laughs> the garbage. The garbage. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Lucky Guadob. <laughs> the garbage. Uh, they packed Sauron's lengthy, intricate manipulation of the elves through cunning and social engineering into half an episode. I hate Bezos. I mean, could it even be called? It's the writers are just shit. Manipulation? I don't even know. I don't even know if it is, because it seems like he didn't want to do it, but it just sort of happened, I guess. Yeah. He almost like stumbled upon the fact that he was evil or whatever. I, I don't know. The whole Sauron stuff, Sauron stuff that they did was bad. Well, all of it was bad. You can barely understand what they were trying to do, let alone what they actually did. Like, what part of what they did was good, though? <laughs> this is the thing, they kind of... It was like one or two scenes that we were like, oh, that was okay. Yeah, we're talking literally five-ish minutes out of an entire season that we could call good? And they're super isolated? Um, did anyone else watch Andor? And whenever someone said his name... Sorry, his name Clem... I just heard this is Clem Fandango. Can you hear me, Steven? Fist bump if you get the reference. Assuming you guys don't get the reference. I do not I do not know who Clem Fandango is. I'm afraid I do not know either. Um Did you see the showrunners compared Rings of Power to the Nolan Batman trilogy? Why do these things keep happening? Why? <laughs> Stop with the Godfather or Joker or whatever. Just go away. Lucky them uh, that those movies suck too, so they have something in common. Wow. That is a hey spicy meatball. I can't believe... So, like, Nolan... He said Christopher Nolan's Batman? Yeah. Can you believe so, it? So, wow. So, like, he's talking about uh, The Dark Knight would be included in those, just as an example? Just so Presumably, sure he right. did say trilogy, and I'm not aware of any more than the three. Trilogy. Okay. I wonder if they'll get oh, Nolan right. and Bale to make a fourth one out of like some weird desperation. I think they both said they'd only do it if the other wanted it or something like that. Or do you think Nolan's moved past Batman to the point where he's like, I'm only going to do very highbrow stuff. Batman is too lowbrow. He runs around saving people. We can't have that. Mm -hmm. I imagine that Nolan is very aware that the directors like right now are hating on the superhero genre. Right. Like it's... um. <laughs> it's funny, I, I you know, like uh, Tarantino and uh, Scorsese, Coppola, and people like that. It's just like if they all like teamed up as a huge thing to make like a, a a superhero movie or something as revenge, but it's like super serious. Maybe like a TV show. They direct individual episodes. They're just like, we'll we'll follow your damn trends, but we're gonna make it different. Gangster superhero movie. Have we had that Let yet? I don't know. Oh, what was that thing that was compared to Godfather? Oh, Black Panther. Yeah, yeah there, there it is. There's your, there it is. We've already done it. It's done. <laughs> We've already uh, done it, guys. We've already done it. It's finished. <laughs> what a stupid thing to say. If only you knew how to do slow mo during the Toy Story EFAP all those years ago. I on the fly had to fucking Google how to do it. I did, I've never done it before, but we got there. It's all sorted. Did you see? Yeah, you oh. troll and you drag a little. Yeah. Uh, thanks for ripping this stuff apart so I don't have to waste my time watching it. No problem. Couldn't. Yeah, you bet. It is, uh, we would never want to subject you to that. When I was your age, there was no such thing as orcs. Is the Rings of Power's equivalent of I grew up surrounded by water? I don't even remember what episode that was in. Um, do you guys think the old man is Saruman? Oh, well, we know now. Oh, well, I was about to say we know now. Technically speaking, they could still make it Saruman if they really wanted to, but uh, uh, they there's several references to it being Gandalf at this point. Well, they're very proud of themselves. Yeah, people love it. Hello, patient, patiently massive, patently massive folks. There you go. Ah. Uh, awful writing, and they think they need to be spoon-fed everything. Galadriel's the worst among awful characters. Hi, Rags. Hello. Pretty bad. Um, she is definitely bad. Yeah. As far as worst, it's tough to say what the worst character is. The thing is, she was 
at times pretty consistent. Like, you'd expect her to say something really stupid, arrogant, and, like, not useful, and then she would, and you'd be like, yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's that's, that's her, yeah. Not consistent yeah, Every at all. time she walked onto the screen, you're like, ugh, this bitch again. If they want us to think that this is taking place within continuity of the Peter Jackson movies, though, you've completely lost me. The Galadriel is a that different, ain't different gal. That ain't happening. Hi, it's very easy to divorce this from the, uh, yeah, the Rings of Power and the Lord of the Rings. Also, hello. Only place thumbnail today is Pokemon Silver. All right. Hi. Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, <fun. laughs> I like that one. <laughs> I'm guess people are gonna to want to see it. Use Would my like precious light shot. The class? I know I'm getting there. Here you go. Oh my goodness! <laughs> they so look at their legs. They're like little. Look at their little legs <laughs> and their fat white, bo chunky bodies. Oh man! <laughs> see that could you know what that could be funny. Like I don't know if it would work. Can you imagine the three of us? Streaming, uh, like a playthrough of Pokemon Gold or something. And, I can, yeah. And I guess the idea would be that maybe it would be one controls and the other two just talk about decision making and what we do probably next and stuff. because yeah, because those games are not. And then with every decision needs to be made, you know, you just do a vote system with three people as long as there's no, uh, you no, know, I defer to the other person. Then you'd always get a decision. So. No, Deep Rock Galactic. Okay, okay, okay. We'll probably do that too. Just saying. Just saying. Saying. On a scale of 1 to 10, how happy would you be if the Harfoots got wrecked? Oh, 8? When you say probably. wrecked, I'm assuming you mean they get removed from the storyline. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it would be nice not to see them again, but the Killed. thing is, there's not exactly a storyline that I'm happy to see. Yeah, if The closest anything... we get is Dur Durin and... Uh, that's the closest, yeah. That one sucks, but at least it's it's the closest to the one that you'd like because it, I think it has the highest chance of having something of value. Because mm. two, I think, I think essentially two of the three, or is it two? Yeah, two of the three actual good things in the show, which equate to probably less than five minutes, had to do with Durin. So, yeah, and uh, they still ruined those as well. Yeah. What are you gonna do? They were nice when they were nice in those isolated moments that we got them, at least. Good evening, gentlemen, and hi, rags. Hello. Oh, yeah. Wings quote of the day: Reading questions from chat. Who's got the best honey mustard? Out back. A few minutes later. Lol, dog. I'm fat. You really think I don't know where the best honey mustard's at? <laughs> the thing. Fat people know where <laughs> honey mustard. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Uh, have you guys watched Midnight Club yet? Thoughts? I have. I thought it was fine. It was, uh, it was a tad long. Yes, I said it. Uh, I think it was a little bit awkward. A lot of it tonally didn't quite match for what I thought it was going for. There's a supernatural element to the plot line, and by the end of it, they pretty much drop it entirely and don't care about it, which I thought was a big shame, because it was a nice mystery they were building up. The character stuff's pretty solid. I just wasn't that compelled by it. And it's a... Mike Flanagan written and directed thing, and yet I'm not really recommending it to anybody. In fact, Fringy, Rags, have you even heard me say you guys check it out? Nope, you, no, you've never said that. Um, so that's my quick thoughts on it. I still, I guess, enjoyed it, and it's still better than a lot of TV shows out there. I just, yeah, I just didn't get many feels from it, I'm afraid. Uh, I've been watching EFAP for eight months now, and I'm now on EFAP 83, the Cinema Sins slash Wins Joker videos. Enjoy the day, uh, my Ewoks, and have a truly epic, sincere, genuine, actual good day, my toxic brood. Oh, we'll do it. Uh, that was a neat little arc, the Joker arc. Little yeah, little really, uh, it, was a, it was a swell movie. I enjoyed it, and the takes on it were terrible. Yes, they were. A lot of bad ones. Yes. Got us a super sticker, thank you very much. The people in Rings oh, of Power yeah, are vessels that are empty, that don't even qualify as characters. Um, 
the most part, yes. There's a couple of them, though, like... Mostly they're just dumb and stupid. Yeah, because, like, like I said, Galadriel's pretty characterized. She's a horrible person. Yeah, um, she's just shit. She has a character. Her character's just bad. There's a lot Durin's of those. dumb. Yeah. Elrond dumb. is dumb. Uh, that's the thing. It's it's mostly characterized that these are just a bunch of dumb assholes. Yeah. Um, Chekhov's Balrog. It'll be back. Hope you enjoyed. It's trailer's worth of footage. Which literally was used in the trailer. Um, Mola, do you have at least three happy stories from the toy store? No, not really. Um, wow. The the best things that would have happened there were just the brief conversations I had with one or two of the workers and one of the managers. Every time I spoke to the one out of four managers who was nice, it was, was a nice little reprieve, but working there was a nightmare. It was constant, and it was everything was always... Uh, you were always out of time, basically. Every job you were given, you didn't have enough time for, and then you'd be punished because you didn't complete it on the time. So it was just an absolute nightmare constantly. Um, but hey, I guess the good memories would be like when you get to the end of your shift. That was always fun. Oh yeah, when you get to go home. Yeah, like, it was so annoying and shit there that even like, the whatever method of travel you're going home in would just be like a really great part of the day. Um, annoying, but hey. Which I assume for you is like the bus or something? Um, it would be between walking or sometimes catching a train. It depended on how much money I had at the time. Okay. Devil Fruit of the Week is the Kilo Kilo Fruit. So again, the way this works is that whatever he's about to tell us we have to sacrifice swimming for. Allows the user to change their weight from 1 to 10,000 kilograms without in any way affecting their overall size of their bodies. Would you eat this fruit? I mean, it can't hurt to be able to do um, that. I mean, if you don't swim, then, I mean, you might as well be able to have that ability. I don't even know if that... If someone's trying to kidnap you, it could be very helpful. That's true. I'm trying to think of other uses for it. Yeah, let's think here. When would you want to be... Heavy. <laughs> so, you could make your... Could you make yourself lighter? It says weight from 1 to 10,000 kilograms. So you can... So, so your weight can go as lighter. low as 1 kilogram. So, I think that would probably be... It would probably be far more useful. Because if you're very light, then you might be able to... Um, you get better gas mileage in your car. Oh, and you can crush stuff, as someone said. You needed to do that. <laughs> I don't... If if that is a part of it... I mean, if you get super strength as a part of it, yeah, I'll take that, sure. Some um, people are saying you you'd be, able, be to... able to float uh, on water, I guess. At a bit of risk of drowning. Yeah, I mean, you could, yeah, like, legitimately. Cause if you went, you wouldn't be heavy enough to... You would displace more water than, yeah, than, than what you weigh. So you'd literally float on water. Um, you could, if you had to get on something that was unsteady, you could get on top of it and you wouldn't worry about bringing it down. Like an unsteady piece of, you know, like, a, like a, a porch or a balcony or maybe a bed frame or a ladder, something like that. It'd be, if, it'd be easy for someone to lift you up. If you needed to reach something, you could have someone lift you up and you can get up there. Or they could just throw you because you're super light. Yeah. Um, and, and it means you could, oh, you would, you would never die from falling because if you made yourself like as light <laughs> as a feather, then you would just land softly on the ground without any issues. I think I would take this one, yeah. I feel like there's a couple of cool little interactions yeah. you can do on your day-to-day. -day and then and it's just fun to fuck around with it. It would just be fun to be able to jump super high and do things like that. Oh, imagine you just or fuck to it up jump one off day things and, and just fall slowly. You know, you, you lower it. You just, when, you, when you're falling really fast, then you don't lower it enough. And then just go splat. And you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, well, that's me. Uh, hopefully, yeah, you'd, you'd be able to... Um, Control it really well. So, so that's not how it works, Rags. Well, it is to my understanding. I was going to say, that's how we were presented it. So Yeah, if you could change, if you change your weight... We haven't seen this anime, affect, okay? Would, yeah, it, it seems like that would mostly affect, well, your weight. So, I mean, if you change yourself to be super light and you jump off of something, then you will be carried away by the wind or you, you won't land very <laughs> oh dude that'd be so cool hard. you go to like one of the windiest like hurricane type situations ever just make yourself entirely heavy and you can be like yeah i'm a chad i can't be defeated by wind <laughs> people are like whoa it would also make your inertia less too so you could probably presumably turn faster and things like that or maybe not i don't know hmm. but so someone's like oh yeah uh someone said um 
Uh, I love how rags would use superpowers to get better gas mileage. I'm like, you might as well. I mean, yeah, if you're in your I mean, car and you're yeah. driving and you could take off, you know, you know, your body's worth of weight, essentially. Then, if you're suggesting yeah, like literally better gas. Mileage. Wow. Rags isn't like morally thingy enough to become like a vigilante or whatever. It's like, you understand becoming a vigilante is a very strange thing to do in our world. It's, uh... Yeah. I'd have to go around looking for crimes <laughs> as they are happening so that I could use my, I, and then hope Plus, you don't, don't actually what... like obstruct actual Die. justice in some way. Like, when yeah, the or cops get are shot. actually called. Yeah, or get shot. You know, there's lots of superhero movies often don't like you know. <laughs> <laughs> so as when Rags gets laser eyes, he uses it to boil his bath water to save on the gas bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't hey, you? Hey man, why not? Yeah, go for it. Do it. Um but that's the thing with a lot of these powers, it would just be how would it make your mundane life better? Yeah. How you know, would could you have fun with it? Would you be able to use it in some useful capacity? That's probably going to be 99.9% .9 of its uses. Imagine how cinematic Venom would have reviewed Rings of Power. He probably would have shot on it, I think. Because um, he does seem to like, he was, he would, he would sort of point out and search for flaws and stuff, and there's plenty in Rings of Power. Many. Many. You guys should see the film Banshees of Inshirin. Or any Shrin. Um, I want to see it, but I can't. It's not in my local theater, which is fucking lame. But what are you going to do? I don't even know what that is. It is the, the next movie? movie from the guy who made In Bruges and Seven Psychopaths. Oh, nice. Yes. Those were both good movies. From the trailer, the premises, Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson live in this like distant town, wherever it is. Uh, and they're friends. And then one day, Brendan Gleeson says, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Don't talk to me anymore. And then he gets really upset with him, and then he says, if you keep talking to me, I'm going to start chopping my own fingers off. That's like the premise, if you want to go see it. <laughs> it's like, oh. I'm sorry, what? And it's like, well, I don't know. I usually like his stuff for his dialogue, so uh, I'm willing to give it a shot. Sounds weird as hell. This one's a based. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you anymore, and if you talk to me, I'm going to chop my own fingers off. That's uh, what, I, it's what I'm going to do. Uh, also, hi, Rex. Hello. This one says, why are you not talking about the finale? We were probably going through all of the episodes that we covered in one. Were we covering, I think we did 7, 8, 9, or 8 and 9? 8 and 9 is what we did. You had yeah. to wait. So that tells you how far we are into that episode. Oh, and I'm a huge fan of Little Platoon. Huge! Wow. That uh, makes sense. Uh, he's a fun Does creator. Yeah. There is one dance I can picture this Galadriel doing. It's called the Haka. I know the Haka. It's uh, what a certain rugby team do from New Zealand. The um, when you in in Guild Wars Two, if you choose to play as the Master Race, the Char, of course, they're they're a very war centered culture. They're very they're they're very violent. Uh, they have a lot of they're they're very they have a very, I guess they're very martial focused culture, uh, and if you you know do the dance emote, each race has their own dance, and the char do the haka. That's their cultural dance. Neat. Presumably, they would have. It's like a direct reference to the uh, the old blacks one. Maybe, maybe not. The haka is how Jason Momoa got the role for Aquaman. I remember reading that somewhere. I don't understand how that makes any sense, but cool, I guess. Um, yeah, because I don't think he is dances that, is in that. Because uh, he's from Hawaii, right? I don't know. Because I thought it was a Maori thing specifically, but maybe it's maybe it's like a broad sort of. Oh, it Polynesian. could be. Yeah, um, I just know it from rugby, but. Um... Yeah, that's what I know it from too. It's like the uh, yeah. The hawker is a war don't dance. Don't people do it in Boba Dan and Boba Fett? I don't. I don't think so. Oh, you talk about. The weird. I don't think that was a haka. I, I, I don't think it's a haka. I don't know what that was. It was weird. God, yeah, Boba Fett weird. happened. That show did happen. That was such it a. It did happen. It's Not hard to believe one. that as bad as it was, it was only the second worst Disney Star Wars show. <laughs> We were not prepared for Kenobi, guys. We were not. They're just That's doing their not. job, Leia. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's just doing the. You say you do his voice pretty well. It's so funny. Everybody's turned on that show already. It's it so, it was so bad. Have they? That's good. Yeah. I know it was really contentious when it came out, relatively. But it's kind of Boba Fett sort of was too. 
Um, Boba Fett was uh, a bit like 50 50. I think, like, yeah, um, yeah. that yeah. was probably the first time that there wasn't a great response when it was coming out. But, like, Obi Wan, people were defending it. But, like, at this point, people have come pretty soundly to the conclusion that it was a huge disappointment. And there's still, um, at, I think it's even bled into I'm as well, like, people being like, that. people will say Mandalorian's still cool, but, like, the even the love for Mandalorian is dampened because it's like. There's nothing to well, cling yeah. on to. That's the big problem with all the Disney exactly. stuff they put out. There's just nothing to and fucking it's, Well, it's because you. what they're creating is not enduring. I don't, I don't know why anybody would be, like, wanting to watch, rewatch Obi-Wan Kenobi in the same way that, you know, people rewatch the prequels. I don't know. It's Absolutely. Like rewatching the sequels, you know? Like, Which, uh, my God, imagine... What you're saying is absolutely true. That show had a grief-stricken, like, almost crying Kenobi dealing with the fact that he created... Darth Vader that has annihilated his closest friend and apprentice and almost like son in a sense or I guess his brother but like that scene is in there yep it was I just, you know what I mean like, I, like what are you guys doing squandering everything no I know what you mean like it's there and, and yet it still wasn't able to make a lasting impact and I think it's the reality is that um the thing that makes it worthwhile for people is not the big moments alone, but the component pieces that prop up those big moments. Um, it like it's it's uh, I don't know. I feel, uh, yeah, I think the fundamental problem is that it's treated as like content that needs to come out, and like whether it gets talked about afterward is like irrelevant as long yeah, as it it's made its money, it did its job. Yeah, basically. It retained subscribers for a few months and, you know, probably grew the platform. That's all that matters. Like, whether or not anybody talks about it in a year. Yeah, it doesn't I matter. Mean, We've it's... already moved on to the next thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, pretty much. By the time it's done, you move on to the next thing and you forget the cycle. Um, I imagine that, like, that will happen. I don't know. I guess with Marvel, you look towards the future. It's like, I'm not sure how many of those projects are, like, inherently kind of things that people would get hyped for. Like Ant-Man, you know? Like, who's going to get hyped for Ant-Man 3? Or Echo? I don't really see that happening. But I guess, no. you know. Who knows? The cycle may... Or, or, like, the Marvels. I don't I don't see that. Maybe that will be, like, a very trying time where they can't rely on the name recognition of their characters yeah. to hype up the series. Um, Tolkien never said that Galadriel didn't go Super Saiyan God and fight... Oh, jeez. The formatting on here is all fucked. Ah! Hang on. Fix this. Uh, didn't fight Sauron in a battle to the death inside an exploding supernova. That's true. They didn't it's say true, which means that. it could have... It totally could have happened. Uh, they had the scene because they wanted to mimic the Frodo and the Ringwraith scene. Bad robot people seem to like the... Uh, to ape the source material. What I find so interesting about that, there is a fine as fuck line between doing something like they did in that last episode with the creepy weird uh, magic people and then everyone being like, are you trying to like fucking copy and paste the ring wraiths right now? Is that what you're doing, you cringy show? While in something we love that's doing like a really meaningful scene and they call back to something like Weathertop or something like that, and then we'll all be like gushing over it and explaining the connection is so meaningful. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just thinking to myself. We see like, it as, yeah, we see it as respectful and yeah, instead like, of a copying. Fun, like an actual just fun reference to it in a way. Something like that. And I, I imagine so many writers that are shit will just be like, well, why, why doesn't mine look like that? It's like, yeah, because. <laughs> yeah. Why doesn't mine look like that? <laughs> I can't oh, remember. why is it so hard? Why? <laughs> I love that. It's so funny. It's such a great, like, um... Because, you know, in the actual episode, it's just a normal thing for Homer, right? Because, of course, he can't build something well and he's left his own devices, but it's such a great little commentary on just artists that are trying. Why doesn't mine look like that? <laughs> like... <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> in Rings of Power, they contradicted the law and made Muriel blind. In Netflix Witcher, they, want... they went against the law and didn't make Yennefer blind after Sodden. Um, well, all right. What's interesting to me is that if the shows were really good and they still did those things, people would forgive them. Um, what I'm finding about a lot of what people consider the inaccuracies of God of War Ragnarok, the more people who are completing and going through the storyline, the less they're caring about how much it's like a departure. 
They're like, man, I like this vision though. It's kind of um, but of course we've talked about this before. When you depart from certain things, it'll have ripple effects where you may not realize. You got to be careful. You got to know why it was built the way that it was built before you can build it a different way. Um, yep. Positives from Rings of Power. One, it sucks too much to be considered canonical and Tolkien's legacy is intact. Two, future writers see everything they shouldn't do. Three, laughter. That's actually true. It's good though it gets to a point of so bad that nobody talks yep. about it as though it's canon. It's like, no. Nah, yeah, it's very thing. easy for your mind to divorce it from the rest of the things. I also think like Tolkien's legacy always remains intact. Like, I don't know that it can be because it's always, it's, 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 there's always his work that like persists. And people can see this kind of for what it is. Yeah. And it's a shame, though, I guess, that it's like, you know, it's, it's, they, it, didn't, uh, the guy, the Zaslav, the new guy in charge of Warner Brothers, isn't he said that, he, like, they still own the film rights to Lord of the Rings, so he may well want to have Warner Brothers start up their own Lord of the Rings film series. It's like, man. It's funny. I actually think that's uh, probably a bad move. Just re release. Or something, something more reliable to make money because something, yeah, remaster them. If you or... even tried to make films out of Lord of the Rings again, oh god, uh, looming yeah. over everything you do is the Peter Jackson ones. Yeah. Yep. Um, the Rags 2.0 plushie is mine. Whoa, ha 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 ha. Oh. Think, oh, was it good. out at that Thanks point? Thanks for getting one. I don't know, but maybe it was. We were but talking about know. the last Rings of like Power it. episode. I feel like it wasn't even out then, but all right. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it was. Interesting. Um, oh well. The last episode was legit comedy. Um, the volcano one was probably the funniest to me. It's so bafflingly stupid. The most I laughed was relatively early on with with the when all the elves were captured at the tree. That's when I laughed the most. That whole scene was hilarious. Yeah. With them flailing around and... <laughs> it was just funny. Uh, problem is, Gandalf in the Fellowship clearly states he hasn't had the chance to go against a Balrog yet. Is that a, in the book or the movie? Because I don't quite remember that in the movie. Had a chance to go against a Balrog. So obviously, if that's, I do not know. If that's true, then yeah, they're going to have to really dance around that when they get to... Uh, you know, the next seasons of this show. Avoid him getting anywhere near it. Um, in Rings of Power... Oh, wait, I read that one. Just gonna say... Um, oh, wait, that's... Sorry, I'm backwards a bit here. Where am I going? Last oh, episode okay. was a jit comedy. I got you. All right, now... Uh, my boyfriend asked me after ending if the Silmarils are in the Three Rings now. That says it all. Oh, do you mean that says it all in terms of nobody understands what the fuck is going on? Hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I still can't believe that those three rings were apparently originally the plan was to put them into one crown. Like, did you see the size <laughs> of those rings? Yeah. It's gonna be a thin crown. Watching Rings of Power feels like something I was forced to watch at my Christian elementary school. Damn. I think Bible Man is better than this. Sorry. I'm sure the message is clearer and more solid in terms of, like, a moral thing <laughs> than... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're supposed to gate out of Rings of Power. It's kind of worrisome in that way. Rags, who do you well, like more, like... Triss, Yen, or Shani? Luckily, he was able to answer oh, that one, actually. Yeah. That one. Um, spoiler, but when did Sauron get lanced? So, the defense I've heard for this is that he, it's a self-inflicted wound. Uh, that he... He, he hoped she would get him to elves because he was going to stab himself in such a way that he needed elven medicine, which means it would be like a, a death blow for, a, you know, his kind, so to speak. It's very strange because it's like, yep. so he was going to die from it? And it's like, well, I don't know, because he's kind of like not a human. And so he just said, you know, I don't fucking know what's going on. Apparently he got stabbed right in the middle of the volcano attacking everybody with its smog cloud. I don't understand how, but that's what happened. Ran off into the corner, stabbed himself, threw himself onto the road and went, Help! I have been stabbed by an orc. Oh dear. 
I think admitting that they made the entire series to give the middle finger to the fans is worse than even calling us patently evil. Uh, was that? Oh, I guess they're comparing, what, like, with she mm. where they said that that was, like, one of their stated goals was to... Middle finger the fans? I, um, I, I don't know if there's anything worse than calling someone patently evil, is there? Well, yeah, I mean, you're basically condemning them fundamentally, right? You're, like, it's... inherently a person who will commit to bad decisions. That's, I know it sounds... On the, on the basis Ill. of what? Because you don't like their show. Yeah, like... Like, it sounds like a chill insult, but that's probably the worst thing you can say to a person in terms of what it means. Well, yeah, that that seems to be like a stark example of if someone's like, fuck you, they'd be like, whoa! But then, you know, in that case, what's <laughs> been said there is way harsher. Yeah, they're like, like your entire life's happened. work is kind of embarrassing and really shallow. I think you need to reassess the way you do it. And you just go, fuck yeah. off. And then they go, holy shit, I, you're mad. I know, yeah. As opposed to the guy who's like, eh, I thought that was eh, kind of shitty, but, you know, you tried your best. It's like, whoa! <laughs> wow, dude. It's like, I'm back. Yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess the, to me, I find, um, I, I just find like the whole, we wrote the show to insult, like the people who didn't like our show. It's kind of like this weird sort of self own where like you've ultimately tailored your show around the people that you dislike. Like they've had a substantial impact it, on what you've created, you know? I assume you're talking about She-Hulk. Yeah. The, uh, mm -hmm. it comes across as extremely insecure. Yes. Um, Yeah. And I guess, because someone would be like, well, wait, you're saying, like, you can't make fun of a group of people? It's like, yeah, you can. I think it's just, um... There's it's a the way tone. you go about it in your goals. Yeah, because, I mean, South Park makes fun of tons of people, right? But I would never look at South Park as a show that's insecure. That's, like, a show that's very secure in what it wants to be and what it's trying to be. Um, I think that... I, I guess I would say that the tone that you get with She-Hulk is very defensive. Um, yeah, As defensive. opposed to irreverent, which I think is, like irreverent is the way that you can sort of make fun of people who you know you dislike or in, in a way that doesn't feel like it, it, it's um them tainting something that you've created in a way that's detrimental to you and your own yeah like, it's health. not personal Mental it's health, just I it's mean. this attitude of everyone gets their turn to be made fun of and we will make fun of everybody no one's safe instead of we're specifically like you know the people who write she wrote she hulk there are absolutely groups and such that will not be made fun of Oh, well, someone in chat put it well. A visual rent free, if you will. It's like, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like, yeah, your, your imagined of, yeah. sort of, your imagined enemy is immortalized in your show in a way that I'm sure, like, <laughs> in a way that was pretty embarrassing. Um, that show is embarrassing. Like, I don't know it if I would, uh, I wouldn't describe a lot of, like, the, like, I don't know if I'd say Multiverse of Madness is, like, an embarrassment. It's horrendous. It's terrible. Maybe for, like, Michael Waldron is a little bit. Yeah, because like, I, I totally get what you're getting at, because, like, Michael Waldron, he's writing a story of, like, an action-packed adventure through time and space with all these wizards doing all kinds of awesome things, and there's a, there's a heart to this that, that's about real, like, identity and understanding mm -hmm. the, the, the value of life, whatever. It's like, what he's done isn't quite as embarrassing as what they've done, which is allow all of their insecurities to bleed onto the page. Like, he is just really bad at his work. Just... Right, whereas they are really bad at what they did, but like their idea fundamentally was pretty misguided. Um, yeah. Like, I, man, like that show is like, oof. <laughs> like, oh boy. Um... Your daily, it's, it's, it's your, it's your reminder that when it comes to Disney, things can always get worse. Yeah. <laughs> I was not expecting it to be that bad, I gotta tell you. Like, I was not expecting that. No, um, I wasn't expecting that to be that bad. I wasn't expecting Rings of Power to be as bad as it was. No, Rings of Power, I... yeah. Because that... <laughs> that's I just agree. like... I, I yeah. the, the worst it was gonna get, I thought was gonna be as bad as Episode 1 and 2 were. Where I was like, yep, right. this yeah, is no. just... This is the rock bottom of this show where it's just nothing's happening and no one cares about anything. <laughs> but then it... It did. Oh boy, it changed. Oh boy, it, it just like plummeted. Um, just gonna say, Rags, did you say it? Last episode has to be the best delivered line on EFAP ever. It has me laughing for so long. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. What, what's that a reference to? <laughs> which, which line is this? Uh, did you say it? Well, so this is episode 209, so they're referring to 208, and I assume that was possibly Rings of Power or She Hulk. Uh, let me double check. But I don't know. EFAP two oh eight. That is 
Dissecting Rings of Power's abysmal sixth episode with this Sparu and the Little Platoon. Hmm. Did you say it? Someone in oh, chat might can't. know. I don't know. Uh, if you can remind me what that is, uh, please do, because I just can't quite recall. Uh, please control the Wongers in chat, Mauler. You can't control them. They they do as they I'll will Wong. Named. They Wong all the Wongs they want to Wong. Uh, to be fair to Durin, third, let them rot is what dwarves do to other races. EFAP 93, never forget. Oh, do you mean like we understand that the, the law of the dwarves is to let everyone die to kill everybody who's friendly with them? That is something we learned from Gimli. So, so Gimli was friendly with all the Fellowship except two specific hobbits. I'm not sure what we were supposed to gather from that, you know? He just wanted them dead. Mm, mm, Are yeah, you boys we'll ready for Amazon's Fallout film slash series? Yes, it's real, and it makes me wish for nuclear winter. Iraq. Yeah, the Fallout television I am story. ready to... S I'm curious. I'm, I'm just curious. Because uh, Fallout I mean, has a very... I, do I think it'll be shit? Of course. But I'm curious what it will be because Fallout has a very distinct sort of vibe to it in terms of the, you know, the culture of that world and its aesthetic. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested to see what they'll do with it, though. I, I would be shocked if it was good. One I'm of curious. many adaptations of because now there's going to be a Gears of War film and like animated oh, television yeah, right. series. I mean, um, honestly, shock, hot take, uh, I feel like Gears of War was always going to be better as a film or a TV show than it is as a game. Is that a hot take, really? I don't know, probably. Gears was going to, you're saying Gears is, was always going to be better as a film than a game? It feels that way, because I just, I'm not impressed with Gears mechanics, basically. Ever. I, the only reason I want to play it with you is because of nostalgia memories and I enjoy playing games with people. <laughs> it but, will uh, be interesting to see you play the first one and then play five. Okay, yeah, because obviously... From this is yeah. where we started to this is where it is now. Because the first one is, especially the original Vision, it's downright clunk. Uh, so, I just looked it up. So, Fallout, the TV show, is being developed by Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan. Does okay. that make who, you feel better? Who, who, about who would that? I know they, those names well, Jonathan, made, from? They made Westworld. That pair made Westworld. <sighs> the pilot episode was really good. <laughs> Well, sure, but they were also, like, executive producers right until the end, right? So, like, they're on the hook for that, <laughs> surely. I love the, the announcement of the uh, the show ending. Everybody's just like, it's still going? <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, fine, we'll leave. Yeah, almost certainly quite expensive, considering the cost and, like, how, I guess, like, grand it is. That's one of those, show. like, someone awkwardly tries to mention how they're leaving the party, and then someone just goes, you still here? And they're like, I don't mm. uh, Okay, I'm, yeah, I'll go. And Todd Howard is an executive producer, which I guess that doesn't... But what does that, that mean? That doesn't mean anything to me, <laughs> no. honestly. Well, funnily that enough, means executive producer... Nothing. Like, sometimes executive producer seems to be, like, more vague than a producer. Like, as a title. You know what I mean? Like, um, like Kevin Feige is a producer. He's often credited as the producer of a lot of the films. And then there'll be a longer list of executive producers... But it's like how, you know, the ver I'm pretty sure that um, The Rock was an executive producer on Shazam just by virtue of the way that contracts work while he was getting ready to be in Black Adam over the last 15 years. So he just got that credit. Isn't that, isn't that fascinating that you get the credit of executive producer and it could just be like through just contract shenanigans rather than like yeah. any direct participation in the development of the show? Yeah. Well, you get those shows that have like a dozen producers and stuff in them, like Isn't this, Star Trek. Yeah, the Star Trek ones are hilarious. They'll have like 16 I, people who are that. I remember the one that I found, you know how like, because of course, when I watch The Simpsons all the time, you'd see the three names, right? Matt Groening, uh, James L. Brooks, and Sam Simon. Yeah. Um, and of course, I knew that like Matt Groening was like the creator, essentially. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, James L. Brooks was like never very significantly involved in like the production of that show, but more that he was instrumental in it getting off the ground. And I okay. distinctly remember a thing where it was like Sam Simon, who hasn't been involved in that show since like season four. I can't remember where I saw it, but he talked about how for a while he felt like his contributions were undervalued, but now he feels like his contributions to that show are overvalued because he still gets paid for it, even though he hasn't been involved in it for a long time. I could be wrong, but I, I hmm. distinctly remember that. Like, it's an interesting thing that, um, that, Dude, what uh, a weird like life nature... to lead where your involvement in a show, however significant, in, in fact, let's just go with a hypothetical vision instead that you 
you maybe contributed to its first episode in terms of writing and organizing people to get it done. And then you like leave and that show evolves into this enormous thing and your stake is big enough that like 50 years on or something, you're just still getting regular payments. And so you just never had to do anything in your life to make it work for money. You just got it. It's because it, uh, Sam Simon actually passed away in 2015 and apparently he bequeathed his $100 million estate to a bunch of charities. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I, I, ah, oh, damn, I, yeah, like, I can't remember where I saw it ex exactly, but it was that he was just not involved with it for, like, a very long time afterward, but because of the nature of him being, like, the developer of the show, um, yeah, he, he was on the show up until, like, 1993, uh, but executive producer credit and then everything that goes along with it. Um, guys, this is why the linens were so important. They were needed for bandages. Oh, linens, sorry. Well, the, all right. Uh, the linens? Yep, they, they, they could use them for bandages. Yeah, you could. Also, thank yeah. all for the incredible content in general from all of you. Little Platoon, thanks for the JWD video. Jurassic World Dominion. That's what that is, isn't it? Still have to see it. What a great movie! I'm sure it is. <laughs> I'm <laughs> certain. I so found it great. on. I found it on the old Wikipedia where before he left the show, he negotiated a deal that saw him receive a share of the show's profits every year, particularly from home media and executive producer credit, despite not having worked on the show since 1993. Um, the deal means he made over 10 million dollars a year from The Simpsons. Oh my god! And he later god. told Stanford Magazine that tens of millions was a closer figure. He commented. When I was there, I thought I was underpaid. I thought I wasn't getting enough credit. Now I think it's completely the opposite. I get too much credit, and the money is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Holy hey, shit. You don't add in a crazy. ton of it to charity, though. Yeah. Like, hey, what a yeah. Chad. What a Chad. Yeah. Uh, doesn't making a sealed or a bumbling idiot lessen the corrupting power and narrative weight of the One Ring? The one way they can escape that is we've got four more seasons of development that they could, yeah. you know, turn them into something else, right? But who knows what they're up to. But I mean, is there any reason to be optimistic? No. Because, <laughs> like, See, the thing again is... when I was watching it, where I'm like, is that the Isildur? Like, is that him? <laughs> like, the Isildur, you know? Yeah, and, well... This loser. People are now wondering, the fact that he died in that fire is like, oh, is it someone he's fucked already and they're gonna have a kid that's called Isildur and that's gonna be the actual one or something? Like, what are they doing right now? Is it... You can't bait that the real guy is dead unless you're gonna do some crazy shenanigans. It's like... It, why do the- I just don't get it. You- you can- You're gonna have much more success baiting death of characters who we really don't know the fates of. Um, like I said, you can do it, but why would you choose to do that instead of someone who's new and specific to the show? I don't know. His fucking dad didn't even go and look for him. Ooh. Ugh, what a mess. Take my money, massives. Very well. Thank you very much. The only thing you can trust a hard foot with is a stab in the back, and then one in the throat. Jeez. Them hard foots, man. Careful. I believe it. They'll steal your wheels and leave you to die. If you visit them, just keep a hand on your wallet in your pocket. Just make sure... Make sure you got it. Alright? Just be careful. Rings of Power is an abomination made for a brain-dead modern audience that can't tell chocolate cake from a dog turd. If you say the show is good, you're either special, insane, a shill, or a bot. Eight. Well, um, I struggle to find the idea that like anybody could be passionate about it. I just don't. I just don't see that happening. Yeah, I want to know what it is specific. Specifically, what is it that you find so compelling about this show? So little character. It's unreal. Um. Ooh, how the fuck can the Harfoots even survive a community as a community? For a population this small, even a single loss would be a catastrophe in real life. God, the show is so stupid. Um, yeah, a lot of media does that. That's true. Well, look at the Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Wasn't it like seven people that apparently generated an entire civilization? It's just like, ow. You guys do the thing with the... Yep, they sure did. But don't think about it. Yeah, because I was going to say, you can't even say, like, well, they recruited more, I guess. And it's like, well, they, you can't, right? Because they only yeah. had the one flower. 
And besides, I'm not even sure. You know if someone came up to you and said, like, you want to become a fish person and live in, below the sea? He was like, uh... I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm not, I don't know. I just, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, da, da, you. Amazon's The Rings of Power, The Desolation of Brain Cells. Yeah, a little bit. It's an adventure. You keep saying journey, Mola, but there's more than one person. It's an adventure. What I learned a lot. Yeah, that, that was That was yeah. from that show, right? Yeah, that was from The Wizard Man. God, that line was dumb. Gary has the deleted by Discord curse. Hi, Rags. Hello. Someone's got to get it at some point, right? Always comes for you. This just says Prezi time. Mordor is the elvish name meaning Dark Land, given when Morgoth created the volcano. Why wouldn't Adar use Orcish? They don't even think about context. I don't know. I, 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 because, you, it, because remember Mordor? That's why. I remember Mordor. Good. I'm, I'm really glad you do. <laughs> because we called the dark place Mordor. With Welcome. The volcano. To Mordor. Population, lots. Random orc on the side. Hello, welcome to Mordor. I'm lots. You're not one of those Harfoots, are you? They're, they're evil. We don't let them in here. <laughs> no, they're way too evil for us. Yeah, the orcs are, yeah. Uh, you nerds need to ad address Super Chats in real time, or may a clockwork orange viewing of She-Hulk eternally be your fate. Dude, if we did them in real time, the conversation would be so fucked up. Like, because... It would have to be like someone's on like a roll ripping into Rings of Power and then I'm just I like read something that's about something else and then we start talking about that and then that person's like, oh, I'll just wait forever and then their their power level is is gone. But now we can focus heavily on them. Hardcore even. I found an animal I need Fringy to see. The black rain frog. Uh, the black rain frog. Yeah, I okay. wanted to see that apparently. Oh yeah, he's the funny looking frog. Oh yeah, that guy. The 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 grumpy looking frog. No, oh, he's always in memes. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's great. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> I would have it's where I the inflection. I would have said black rain frog, but you said black rain frog. Yeah. That is interesting. Rain frog versus black rain frog. Yeah, I, like I a guess frog, a frog of black rain or a black Rain frog. What is a rain frog? Frog that likes rain? What does it mean to be a rain frog rather than a hail frog or a sunshine frog? You want a sunshine frog? Look at her dry out, right? He's so grumpy. Look at him. Or maybe he's not. Maybe he's thrilled. And it's just us projecting our emotional slate onto him, you know? Yeah, like he'd be like, I'm fine, actually. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm very content. You know, compared to you fucking humans, like, I got all my shit sorted. I know. What I got I my am. hole in the mud. Yeah. I got my cricket every once in a while, <laughs> and I'm just—that's all I I'm need, content. man. I got everything I could ever want, and and I'm I'm happy with my lot in life. Not like, like you guys. Before you could even talk to him about it, he's like, "You got to try and convince me you're happy. Are you? You're like, jeez. <laughs> Chill out, Mister Frog. I don't know. Um, the Black Rain Frog and Bilbo's Rain Frog. I was able to stay Lord of the Rings related. Wait, Bilbo has a rain frog? The one rain frog to rule them all. Whoa. What's worse? The darkness this, broke them. This lame ring forging or the infinity stone paperweights? Oh. The infinity stone paperweights. It's gotta be the paperweights, man. Ugh. Uh, do you think that this terrible content is being made out of laziness or because it creates controversy? I'm pretty sure it's incompetence and laziness and stuff because you can try and get your at attention through controversy, but like, wouldn't it be better to get attention through being good? Isn't that like the goal? You want to get that? Nobody like sees Lord of the Rings and Godfather and whatever else and goes like, you know, they were popular because of how much controversy they stirred up. Not the fact they were great and everyone loved them. Yeah, that wasn't it. That's lame. We don't do that. Do you 
Oh, wait. Uh, I'm a goldsmith. Gold can't be an alloy. It's extremely soft. Melted her whole dagger together, steel and gold. Ring stones were sat horrifically. These stones will never stay in place. It looks awful. I wouldn't even... They should... Someone should... There's, there's a job for someone. You know, they do, like, doctor reacts and lawyer reacts. Like, you could have a smith yeah. reacts to, you know, stuff like that. That's an idea. It'd be painful, but you could do it. Uh... Tolkien's premise for his stories was that fantasy matters. His essays written before Lord of the Rings was debunking all the belittling arguments against fantasy. This Tolkien guy sounds cool. Yeah, he should write a, I don't know, like a fantasy series or something. He could probably make a good one. I agree. If I have an adversary who straps proximity explosives to themselves and is found in a mine shaft, is it apt to call him an enemy of mine? <laughs> Get it? Proximity mm -hmm. explosives strapped to himself. In a mine enemy, shaft, enemy of mine. And he's in a mine. So he, like, he hates the mine. He's an enemy of the mine itself. Well, enemy of me, slash, you know, me, and then the enemy of the mine in terms of he's going to blow it up and hit it, but also enemy of mine, as in he is an enemy and he's of mines. Like, he's got uh, explosives that detonate through proximity. But why proximity? Well, because they could make that joke. There you go. Hmm. <laughs> um, Wong comments a 10 out of 10. Oh, there you go. We had a lot of Wong. There was a lot of Wong talk in a the chat. A lot of Wong. -in. I thought half the finale was going to be a slow motion shot of Nori handing Gal Gandalf an orange. Well, half of it was her saying goodbye to her friend, right? Well, saying goodbye to everybody. Yeah. That scene just kept going. Oh boy, it went and went and went and went. The only thing that didn't went was them leaving. Yep. Painful. Uh, you playing Dark Pictures with Metal this Halloween? That was the original plan. Then we found out how shit the, the quarry one is. And then we found out how shit the new one's going to be. And we were like, you know what? It'll be better to just do it in person because of how shit it all is. It's unfortunate, but it also is a reality. So you'll see it, but not right now. Hi everyone, but rags. Oh. <gasps> what? But hello. Which do you choose? When you die, you get a reincarnated into a random deep sea creature or an apex predator insect. Also, hi rugs. Hi. I don't. Wanna... Oh gosh, that's tough. I don't want either of them. <laughs> in the, the insect world is shit. It's a horrifying, terrible hellscape. Yes. With no mercy, with no morals, with no. It's just. It's just the worst like the deep sea but might just be as bad i don't know sea, enough about it yeah in the dark of the deep sea uh also got that haunting element to it yeah uh, probably at that I, point probably the insect <sighs> then again because so I, I could like see and stuff and i could yeah. like hang out in the world at least up top like jesus and christ might... what if you got attacked by an army of ants at some point or one of those creepy brain mm. things the Ugh. insect world is terrifying. It is. Yeah, it's that's the hell. thing. It's a hell world. Um, oh, that's tough. What was the choice between, sorry? Deep sea creature or an insect. I think I would go for deep sea creature. Seems like it would be a solitary life, but a relatively uneventful life. Yeah, probably. That's precisely my I'd issue, it seems. I was like, maybe it I don't know enough about the horrors of that, too. Insane. Uh, well, the reality is that not many things live down there. Um, but then how would it like, feel to live down there? Would it would it, would it be our brains as they are right now? Uh, I well, the problem is that if, if if it became like an insect brain, I don't think I'd be able to understand the horror of this situation really, right? Neither like probably be, for the deep sea creature. They're probably chill too. Uh, well, sure, but like the deep sea creature's life is probably less painful. Um, probably we presume. <laughs> Because if you were an apex apex predator insect, you could still get fucked up by like birds and things. And ants, like even if you're an apex predator, a bunch of ants can overwhelm like any any. Predator. But as long as you don't yep. wander into the ants, they, uh, like um, that's you can get unlucky, I guess. Okay. Though but you, I exactly. guess you could get unlucky, yeah. but still, like if you were like a spider on a web hanging out there, or but then those fucking know. humans will come along and mess you up sometimes. Maybe, maybe. Um, or if you were just like a tarantula and you just sit in your hole for 99% of your life and every once in a while you grab yourself a bug. But 
I mean, I bet some of them have really short lifespans too. So maybe like if you, for instance, if you were a 17 year, well, that's not an apex predator, but just as an example, if you're a cicada, a 17 year locust, you'd spend like 16 plus years just sitting in a hole in the ground. And then you get a little bit of time to fly around on the outside. Wait, really? Um, that's yeah. the lifespan. Damn. Yeah. It's, it's a weird, I, as far as I know, uh, you're locust. Or as we call them here, we call them uh, uh, pharaoh cicadas. Um, the periodical cicadas require either 13 or 17 years in the nymph stage developing underground. Wow. Uh, so, uh, they, and they mature very slowly. So, da -da 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 -da. their 17-year lifespan makes them the longest-lived insect known. How long they lost in their moving around form? Uh, let me see. Uh, after the shed and shells, my and fro. Within a few days, and remain alive for approximately three to four weeks. That seems like a strange so, exchange rate, <laughs> but all right. Yeah, seventeen years in the ground, and then three to four weeks flying around in the air. Yeah. D bizarre. What a strange. Bizarre. What a bizarre creature to have that life cycle. Um, Wong to Wonga Dongadu. Nice. Hi, everyone. Uh, Hi. Oh, wait. Sorry, this is the one I read. It's the insect one, and it ended with high rugs. Oh. Hello. Whooshing intensifies. Ugh, I hate subtitles for a multitude of reasons. Only dumbos or defs watch subtitles outside of foreign media. Also, play DDLC. I love subtitles. I like subtitles, too. I disagree. I, 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 they always keep me up to date with things I might be missing or misinterpreting. They're beautiful. I love yep. them. Kisses. And sometimes you get a quiet movie or you might be in a room where things are happening and it's good to be able to have that just in case. Or maybe you just have a, yeah, that's a terrible actor or actress who just can't pronunciate well. Or a muffled tone. Yeah. This magic will be perfect when it fits a woman. Oh, hey -o. classic line from a classic show. Get wrecked in cells. Can we make this the new I stepped on Lego meme? The fact that I'm not sure what you're referring to means it probably won't be. Yeah, it probably won't be. Sorry. Middle Witch is literally bony from Trapdoor. I don't know who that is. Uh, they, they recognize that Trapdoor? Is that like a movie or a TV show? Bony. Uh, let me get you a picture. I see. You say Middle Witch, they're talking about the Lita one, right? Don't open that... Don't open that trap door by Burke, Boney, and the boys. So let me... This is what I'm getting. That's <laughs> Boney. Well, I guess I can see the likeness. Uh... Trap door. Oh, yeah, it's a little claymation thing. Y'all remember Gumby? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah, I remember Gumby. I don't, actually. Thanks, gents, for doing all the dirty work and watching this tripe for us. Mushy, mushy rags. Oh, mushy, mushy what? I don't Some know. Some things are good with their mushy, like mashed potatoes. Mm. Some things are not good if they're mushy. Like peas? Uh... To a degree, you expect them to get mushy very quickly. Yeah, there's a mush rating that you're going to want. Yeah, but you, you don't want them, uh, you don't want pea mush. You want all the individual peas distinct from one another in a pile. One that you could like reach your hand into and you could, you know, it's not mush, but they very, very quickly become mush as you chew them. They're almost instantaneously, they become mush. Mushy. Um... I'm annoyed that Durin said Disa found the mithril. Well, she did with her singing or whatever. She could pick it up through the harmonization of the walls. Or something. It was, it was kind of difficult to understand. Um, the guy who's obviously Sauron is Sauron? Mind blown. That's such a weird choice, but yeah, he's Sauron. Big, big scary. Oh no. Yeah, that's him. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. They were ripping off T.S. Eliot, The Wasteland. 
I will show you fear in a handful of dust. I don't even remember that line. Or is that the good line and there's one they were referencing? Um, they made everyone incompetent so that Galadriel can figure it out. It's primo garbage writing, as if they only had one season to work with. Well, she didn't figure anything... The information she got should not have led her to the conclusion she got. Turns out he lied. He He's not as part of that lineage. And it's like, oh, the one that he said he wasn't a part of already? I guess he must be Sauron. What? But yeah, she figured it out, I guess. Okay. Are all of the rings evil, or is it just the one ring? I don't know much about the lore. I assume it's that they are... They're built it's with a the one ring that allows right? the one ring to control them or influence them. Because, well, like, Galadriel, wall, she right? knew that, like, about the One Ring, and she also had her own ring, but she didn't get rid of her, her ring. Yeah. So I assume that the individual rings themselves are not evil. In fact, that, that they are probably beneficial to have, but the big baddie one, that's bad. That's a, that's a bad ring. That's some no, it's bad juju jewelry. Um, Jackson's trilogy took quite a bit of liberties when it came to the law, and it was still good. Yeah, that's what I've heard. They didn't use New Forge, was Celebrimbor's place. I thought that, oh, I thought that was the New Forge. No, I think you're right, yeah, that would have been an older one, because... The new one was, uh... Or was it in a regular? I can't remember anymore, I'd have to rewatch it. I don't plan to do, to be honest. When season two comes around, you guys gonna rewatch season one? <laughs> That's funny. I'm sorry. Someone uh, in chat, I caught it. Someone said, "Guys, you should look up the biggest cockroach in the world. Rags would get a kick out of it." So I did. I looked up biggest cockroach in the world, and boy, it made me laugh. Megaloblata longipedis. <laughs> <laughs> they knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. Uh, d d the band journey is a solo act. Rang's writers. All right. Someone tell Mr. Bezos to stop taking Tolkien's toys out of the toy box if he's just going to break them. Yeah, that would be that would be the way forward, isn't it? Let's take care of the toys, put them back in the box then, so that people can play with them, instead of just ruining everything and peeing in the box. That's not what you're supposed to do. Um, you have way more confidence in the writing than I do if you think Galadriel will learn anything. Well, she, she learned... She will not learn anything. She, she learned, learned who Sauron was. was that was learning. Yeah. She, was, she became aware of new information or something. Like that, I guess. That's pretty cool. It's very cool. It's amazing. Super awesome. Now the elven rings are made, even before the practice rings for the dwarves and men, what will the next season cover in the Rings of Power series? No, some horse shit. Um, Probably gonna have something to do with the Balrog. I don't even... Yeah, this is the thing. It feels like it's gonna be a delay until they get to do whatever... The hell they want to do. I think they want to end it by like leading into the Jackson trilogy or something. Probably. They will jangle as many keys as they're allowed to. Yeah. I'm sure Aragorn will pop up at some point as a little boy. <laughs> oh, no. Hey guys, it's me. Who is what will you name your son? I will name him Aragorn. 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 Yeah, don't forget. Stop rolling your R's. And fucking Legolas, he'll probably turn up and they'll de-age Orlando Bloom and pay him to be you. Mm-hmm. Pretty deary me. Um, Glad... Oh, Gladriel and Sauron reminds me of Master Cheeks and McKee. Ah, uh, don't remind me. God. Good old Halo show. Oh, that show. Everyone's favorite. Hell. Yep, Halo. That, that was God. a thing. That happened. Yeah, that was, and they're filming season two. It's happening. Uh, Coming out, and I'm sure... You know, one of the things that really pissed me off in that show is, like, you have like Halo, which is a, a franchise that is like well regarded for its music, and like for it to have like this incredibly generic soundtrack is one thing. 
but to like then for, like for one instance in the show actually use like the halo music and totally butcher it like in the way that you use it it's only 10 seconds long and it's absolutely butchered it like several other elements of the song are so loud that it actually drowns out the melody like I, that really bugged me and i remember like people are like oh they're playing the music it's like yeah i guess they are jangle and... i guess they are it's like yeah i guess they are but I, I i then again considering the tone of the show like i don't even know if like you could even use a lot of the music from the games and have it work there's like a very sort of uh i mean it's very again, not the, halo well yeah because the key words that uh that marty said that he used to basically come up with the theme for the series and i think carries through the rest of it is ancient alien and epic like those three keywords and i think that that comes through pretty clearly in a lot of the songs definitely like, uh, like covenant dance for example i'm not sure if you know what that one sounds like either of you, do you, do you know i, I would if i heard like? it i can like yeah that's, that's kind of like the melody um it's like this really interesting song in that it's like not it's very atypical for what is like music that would be playing during an action sequence. There's like a lot of songs that will play in action sequences that are like oddly soothing and calm. Um, like, uh, like, uh, oh damn, what was it? Um, oh my God, I can't believe I'm, it's, uh, no, it wasn't called Through the Trees. I think that was the, the new, the, the new rendition that they had in Halo Infinite. What was it called? Halo, uh, oh, A Walk in the Woods. Like, that's like this really chill, calming sort of song, and it's great. And it, like, matches the tone that they have of you basically being on this, like, mysterious world that's kind of, like, beyond your comprehension, but you hear anyway maneuvering through it. Yeah, um, yeah. And I don't know that you could ever have that for that show, because that show is so devoid of many of, like, the core aspects of that series. Like, if, if, if anybody actually came up to me and said, I think it retains, like, the core of the series, I would be baffled and kind of annoyed. Like if someone said that, it's just, it's just totally is complete, and that's it's fine. You could have made something different, that, but then what you made sucks. So just makes it really annoying. Yeah, a little bit. Sorry, I'll just I'll I'll keep complaining about that show until until the end of Forever. time. Oh yeah, because yeah. it's it's terrible and it sucks. And Halo deserves like, better. The ending of the show is. John Halo letting himself be killed so that Cortana can take over his corpse to save the day. Like, what is that? <laughs> and it's so funny what a because decision. it's like, ah, he's broken. It's like, dude, she saved the day. Like, that show consistently proves Halsey right, despite the fact that the show believes that she's wrong. It's remarkable. I don't think they even realize that that's what they've done. The people who ultimately, like, her grand goal with the Cortana, like, as a project was to essentially fuse her intelligence with his physical capabilities to save the day and that's exactly what happens at the end of the season and they're like ah see he's broken it's like hmm maybe it's interesting to explore the fact that this apparently broken person like ultimately saved the universe like whatever your perception is about like him being broken or whatever or like the intrinsic value of humanity like one of the uncomfortable questions that you've got to try and get around is that like her utilitarian approach yielded a result that saved like potentially all life in the in the galaxy in fact almost certainly did um, and that's, of course, putting to one side all of the insane, like, bullshit that happened in that episode anyway. The Cortana let them all get killed before she brought in the Pelican to wipe out the Covenant forces when that was always something she could have done. Or, like, man, how lucky was it that Mackie, when she, like, emits the shockwave that blows all of the fucking elites off the mountain? Like, why is that something that the Keystone can do? It's a map. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I could keep going for ages. <laughs> Uh, it's very bad. Yes, it is. Uh, so I think we've just completed EFAP 209's ones, Ooh. which moves us over to 204, which is more Rings of Power. Related. Exciting. Yes. Rungle, Rags, is there any way we could get a Horseman of PC Gaming revitalization or possibly an EFAP reunion in the future? It would be a nice thing to see the old peeps together again. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, that'd be Bullet, Bulletberry and Top Hat, you know, they're still going at it. So yeah, there's no reason we couldn't do that. That's an Could idea. be something to yeah. do. Maybe when I Maybe when I get back to being a bit more regular on YouTube in terms of my uploads and stuff, could do some streams here and there. I'd hate to 
you know, get into streaming stuff when, uh, you know, before I guess I've established, you know, the videos are coming back. So the recent two ones are a big part of that. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be working on any until the new PCs here, but that's Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. So we're almost there. But yeah, that's not something I'm opposed to. I know that streaming is definitely something I've thought about doing for a while. So we'll see what becomes of that. Sweet. I've watched so much EFAP that the logo is burned into my phone screen. What do I win? Um. Oh, I mean, I mean, the satisfaction of having all of this incredible content I mean, delivered to you for free on you've, your phone. You've already won. Where you can watch it at work, in the car, on the bus, on your walks, at family gatherings and other special occasions, weddings, funerals, bar mitzvahs, you name it. Like I said, you've already won. Don't you worry. That is also, don't worry way. about it being burned into the screen. It, it will go away. Just don't have it be there consistently. But it will eventually go away. Um, I've watched so... Oh, yeah. Um, okay, Doblindorf Enough. That is a good reference. <laughs> Doblindorf. Goes all the way back to Wonder Woman. You win a free EFAP phone? Yeah, I guess so. Bend in. Classic Yu-Gi-Oh card of the day is Tongyo. Oh, this one sounds familiar. Uh, T O N G Y O. Duh. Yeah, this one. Yep. This is one. It's another one. This is from Metal Raiders. This is another one of those early Yu-Gi-Oh cards. That's just weird creature on abstract background. This monster captures other fish with its long tongue and sucks the energy out of them. All right. Also known as eating. Yeah. It sucks the energy out of them. <laughs> it's, it's, that's what eating is. Yeah, kind of. I just want to watch... Wait, I just watched The Prestige for the first time yesterday. Thank you so much for recommending it since I probably wouldn't have watched it. Um, otherwise, do you think you'll ever do a video or EFAP on it? Yes. One the day. The Prestige is one of those move. It's 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 like up there with the Lord of the Rings trilogy as like what you need to. It's so good. It is ex it's extremely good. I actually rewatched it not long ago, like two weeks ago, I think. I still oh, wow. adore it. Uh, gives me big old feels and thoughts. Uh, Longman, your thoughts on Nope. Well, it's been a bit of time now since I've seen it, but uh, I remember being interested by some of the stuff it was doing. I think it's pretty dumb in terms of like stretches and holes. Um, it's the best of his three so far, I think. Uh, a lot of people hated the alien design. I kind of thought it was neat, the what the ship turns into at the end. I don't know, I thought it was different and interesting, kind of. Um, I think a lot of characters like fucking figure things out way faster than they should normally be able to. And that um, the ideas behind some of the stuff in it is just, yeah, just kind of neat, but um, I don't know. I don't think it was good. I wouldn't recommend it in that sense, but I wouldn't mind going through his three movies with uh, EFAP movies, you know? I could be interested in it. Um, wow, that Grace Randolph clip was painfully bad. Um, I think Would they're talking about... you be more about, specific? I think, I think I'm going to guess it's the Andor one, where she said, like, there's no, there's no after credits oh, things. Yeah. There's no there's no, no reason to talk about the show. References. Like, oh, damn. I hate okay. it. I hate it. I hate you. Well, it just sucks that that's the culture we're in, and that's why we're going to get what we get. Um, Thoughts on Mr. Frundles? Mr. Frundles. Uh, that was in Rick and Morty. They're like, I'm Mr. Frundles. And oh. then it took over the world. You remember? Yeah. yeah. Um, remember I don't know. how Rick and Morty season like six is happening right now? And the nobody's whole world doesn't it. care. No, nobody cares. And they've got like another, what, 40, 50 episodes guaranteed. <laughs> Keep coming out. Mm. Uh, oversaturation slash, well, iteration. Ignorance. Okay, woohoo. Another one bites the dust, that sort of thing. Uh, with the exciting news that Star Wars Rogue Squadron has been shelved for the foreseeable future, I decided to look into who was supposed to write the movie, and oh boy, Matthew Robinson's writing credits are worth a look. Uh oh. 
So this is who is oh going to be running. Give it to us straight. Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Let me have a little look. What happened to Rogue Squadron? It just got axed, I guess. I think it's like indefinitely like delayed because there's no director attached because Patty Jenkins dropped out. Remember? So it's just like sitting there. Nothing's happening. So you got the invention of lying, which I don't know. I can't remember if I saw that. There was some really... funny jokes in that film. Then we've got. I'm looking for things I recognize. Dora and the Lost City of Gold. Oh, nice. Okay. That's the live action Dora the Explorer, I guess. Was anybody of like fame in that? Uh, Let me check Dora I think and Michael, the Lost Was Michael Pena in that? He just kind of so, a uh, Yeah, Michael Pena's in it. Jeff Wahlberg. Eva Longoria. Eugenio Derbez. Sorry, Eva, Eva Longoria. Yeah. Nicholas Kuhn. Wait, Benicio Del Toro is <laughs> Danny really? Trejo. Really? Okay, wow. Danny oh, Trejo is go. Boots the Monkey. It's officially star-studded, okay? <laughs> um, so he wrote that. And then you got Love and Monsters. I don't know what that is, really. Um, he's going to be writing the screenplay for Live, Die, Repeat, and Repeat. Is that a sequel to Edge of Tomorrow, or is that uh, something else? Edge of Tomorrow? That sounds like the sequel to that, because that was like the, the name the of the subtitle. film. subtitle. Plot it's Unknown. Really it's a follow-up right. to the film, Edge of Tomorrow. Okay. Right. Well, I mean... His writing credits are worth a look, they said. I don't know. It's, it's, it's like, I wasn't sure where I was to gain from all of that. It's a bit of a hodgepodge, but... Uh... With the exciting news... Oh, wait, I read that one. Platoon, tell Molly how his country birth hentai... Okay, I'm just going to move on to the next one on that one. Today is Wednesday, September 21st, 2022. Hey, we're only two months out. Bad. Nice! Try out Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Very emotional. Ring, did you finish it after all? No, I'm up to episode six still, so I haven't watched it. I haven't progressed in a while, but I'll I'll finish it at some stage. Little platoon, this feels right. Thank you. No problem. He was uh, he was an awesome guest. Bring, you stop talking Transformers without me. I would have been able to tell you about an animated movie set for 2024 and the true ending of TF3. Oh, right, okay. I, I think I either talked about it on here or on my own stream, I think, at some stage, to talk about Transformers, which I'm not super familiar with as a series overall. What was the bonus ending or whatever? Or different I, ending? No idea. It might have been me complaining about how, like, Optimus just killed Megatron for some reason. Like, <laughs> just... Well, yeah. See, Surprised they let that go through. It just doesn't seem very optimus at all in that scene. Uh, the Migration Party was one of the most kind, I guess they mean mind-boggling things I've ever seen. They have a book of those they have left while they cheer, saying they won't be left behind. Hi, by the way. Yeah, it's Hello. weird. Uh, yeah, the way that they treat the people who've fallen behind is, is legitimately weird. Hello, chat, people, and DFAP. Devil Fruit of the Week, the Mira Mira Fruit. This fruit allows the user to create, control, and transform into fire at will. Would you eat this fruit? You can't swim if you do. To turn into fire? I don't know when that would ever be useful. Well, to be fair, it says the user can create, control, and transform. So oh! You, we've got... Really? I mean, yes. Create, You're a firebender, control? basically. Y yeah, do it. Fuck yeah. yeah. I'll take that one. Do it. Absolutely. Um... Gotta say, one of the few good things about the abysmal decline of Rick and Morty is that we'll probably get a banger J video breaking it down. Um, maybe at some point. Is Jay still watching it? I haven't heard anything. Because, uh, we got invited to watch the first episode. Me and Frigga were just like, meh. <laughs> and then, it was, the, the invites did, did keep coming, so I assume, uh, either, either Jay's fallen behind or that it's just not worth talking about. Um, which, you know... Kind of unfortunate, because, uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but we, we kind of liked Rick and Morty at one point. Kind of neat. That's what I hear. Well, I gave you a little uh, run-through of some of the highlights. I did. You showed me some high-tier content. That was legitimately some 
rather good stuff. I mean, some of it was excellent, I would even say. Then it fell it was apart. Uh, look up Donnie Dunnigan's career. Also, hi, Frongolio. Yo. So she played the creepy grandma in The Visit from the, the Shyamalan film. I don't know if you're familiar. I know of it. Yeah. Then we got in the Exorcist Chapter 2 TV show? I don't even know. Uh, what else we got? Um, House of Cards. She was in an episode of that. Doop doop. She was in a TV show called Unforgettable. I don't remember if I've seen that. Nope, nope, don't recognize these. Yeah, uh, uh, if there was something I was supposed to spot here, I don't know what it is. Uh, gotta say, one of the few good things about the abysmal... Oh wait, I read that one. Look up, uh, hello, EFAP panel. Hello. I just bought Fringies and Mauler's plushies. Looking forward to grabbing Rags' plushie as well, personally. I think nice. animation... Uh, and live action have their strengths and weaknesses. Well, of course, yeah, every yeah. format has strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except, Except slam VR poetry. gaming. All right, there's nothing wrong <gasps> with that. It's perfect. I'm gonna jump into a, you know, like it's like it's like what is it called in Star Trek? The little room where they do things. Holodeck. That's it. And like the danger room in X Men or whatever, where you can just make shit up and be like, yeah, run around with fun. EFAP Movies Wish List, Transformers 18, uh, 1986, Krampus 2015, and the best Superman movie, The Iron Giant. Fun fact, The Iron Giant is voiced by family man himself, Vin Diesel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, family man himself. I mean, I don't, I don't think we'd end up EFAP moving Transformers 1986. Krampus 2015 is possible. Iron Maybe. Giant, we're probably going to cover at some point. I could see that happening. Also, there's a Hocus Pocus 2? How? Why? Money, I guess. <laughs> that came out, right? I didn't, I didn't see it. Did anyone see that? What is Hocus Pocus? It's a really it's like... fun, classic halloween -y movie about three witches doing crazy shenanigans for kids. And stuff. Well, because they did a okay. sequel to that, and they just released a sequel to Enchanted as well. You know, Amy Adams, the hybrid oh. animation. They've, they've done yeah. a sequel to that on Disney+. Plus. Great. She comes from yeah. like the cartoon world or something. Yeah, but again, they've done a sequel to that, so yeah. Uh are people actually watching this show? No viewership information is available after the premiere versus Hot D that is always releasing numbers. I think well, we got to compare numbers on retention and stuff eventually, right? I don't think it was good news for Rings of Power. Um, the little platoon. Tell Mola why Japanese invented hentai. I'm just not that curious about that, you know. Uh, new Diabito arc soon. You've seen his recent vid. Oh, we could. Yeah, there's a good. There's a good reason to check it out. Um, there's some. We got a backlog. Of, re references you. A bunch yeah, we've got a backlog of basically this? everything you could imagine at this point, like memes, yeah. super chats, video coverage, and media coverage. Just it's all. Waiting. All of it's waiting. Ring of the Day is the Iron Ring of Prometheus. We have a Ring of the Day now. Iron Ring of Prometheus. Uh, Iron Ring of Prometheus. Uh, let's see. It's from the Hero Siege wiki. Uh, let me see. Rest here. One to two sockets, 100 level requirement. Hmm. What I got I as a result know. is, as time passed, Zeus's anger subsided and he chose to pardon Prometheus. He released him under the condition that he wear upon his finger an iron ring in which was attached a small portion of the rock he had been chained to. With this action, Zeus had kept his word, in effect keeping Prometheus bound to the rock. Oh, that's nice. I didn't know that part of the story. That's kind of neat. I don't know if that's yeah. I, I didn't know if that's part of the mythology or if, yeah. It's, but yeah, it works for me. Yeah. See, Zeus isn't all bad. He's <laughs> just mostly, almost always. Yeah, bad. mostly. 
Uh, I can't wait for you guys to review 30 hours of content in under 8 hours. I'm not sure what they're referring you to. Bet. Me neither. Could be Ragnarok. Oh yeah, that's right. Lord Longbong of Mubschlington Abbey. Is there any good chance of a Kong fap? Of Peter Jackson's Ooh. Long Kong? When is less going on? Should be a movie fap for the ages. P.S. Hello yeah. Wagsies. Scritches for the good boy. Hello! That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Should have... Someone should have brought that up sooner. I was going to say, it seems like an obvious one to possibly float as an idea, but now that we've got it there, I imagine that'll, Hi. you know, it'll find its way at some point. Uh, Hello, Massives. I'm working on a series of video critiques regarding the MCU. What do you fellas do to determine plot issues from character issues? Um, If, it ha if it's a direct... If it's a thing that a character does... Then or or says, then it will probably be a character issue. But if it's a like an effect of the world, or if a cause and effect from some event doesn't create another event that it should, that would likely be a plot issue. For example, I raise a gun to shoot Rags and I pull the trigger. We now know it doesn't matter what happens next that I had intent to kill, and that's going to yes. affect whatever we know about the character. However, it jams the bullet stops and Rags' life is saved. That is not an issue with my character, it's an issue with plot, if uh, if one was to conclude that with information of like, oh, lucky it jammed, like there's nothing beyond it being lucky. Uh, yep. Hopefully that's a way to sort of highlight it. <coughs> um, salutations, Flimbos. A bit late, but medium rare chicken is a real thing in Japan. Look up chicken sashimi. It's mostly safe due to food standards. Oh my gosh. How does that work? Hmm. I guess if you have very high control over the kind of chicken and it and how it's cooked, then you could skirt that line safely. Going to be honest with you, I guess you I'm not going to eat anything that's considered mostly safe when it's food. <laughs> like... I I'm not going to eat any uh, medium rare chicken myself. Uh, if I'm in Japan, I I I'll probably be having some something else than medium rare chicken. I just I'll leave it, if I'll leave ever it. <laughs> something on a menu said. <laughs> Hey man, this one's mostly safe. I feel like, nah. <laughs> I feel like mostly safe means not safe. Yeah. Usually, like, we usually have a binary for that. Uh, intro shows phenomenon of resonance where sand forms patterns where different frequencies are passed through time. Apparently this references how the world was sung into existence by God in Tolkien lore. Still a lame intro. Yes, it's a very lame intro. Mm-hmm. Uh, Moobama's stylistically designed to be that way. Yeah, but there are some Moobama's that look better than others, right? Imagine if Boromir turned up at Mount Doom and said, Haha, I didn't die, and actually I was Sauron all along. That's how I felt at the end of Squid Game. What? Incredibly based. Wait, that's how you felt at the end of Squid Game? Like the, I didn't die, and I was Sauron all along. I guess that's what they mean by the old man, yeah. I guess, yeah. But it makes way more sense than Boromir turning out to be Sauron. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the fuck that's about. Hi, EFAP and Rags. Hello. Hi. I have watched you since before law school, and I just passed the bar and landed a great job. Wanted to pass on something for all the great content. Thank you. Oh, oh thanks, thanks very much. Thank you. And congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Get out there and do law. Woohoo. Yeah. Uh, versus matchup. Ellen Ripley versus Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor. Sorry. Yeah, I, I think Sarah Connor is more combat focused. She's, She's really been training to be combat focused with gun knowledge and marksmanship and things like that. Ripley's skills are just, she just, div her different skill set. Yeah, and if someone said like, well, I mean, you know, Ripley could kill her, she gets the jump on her or whatever. It's like, yeah, of course, of course, of course. But if we're yeah, going yeah, yeah. from just raw skills, uh, Sarah's going to win. Uh, bonus matchup, Legolas versus MCU Hawkeye. Well, Hawkeye gets tech arrows where Legolas tech, doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Like, and I don't know if his elvishness gives him an advantage in other aspects. Well, yeah, because, uh, like, dude, Hawkeye is superhuman, basically. I was actually about precision. to say, judging from He's all the arrows we see, it, there is a chance that Hawkeye's uh, accuracy is more impressive than Legolas's. Maybe. Yeah. I'd have to possible. compare all the shots they take, but Hawkeye's ones are fucking insane sometimes. But, you know, Legolas is a pretty insane too. People saying Legolas easy? I don't know, man. I don't think it's easy at all. 
I think the edge might go to Hawkeye because of the crazy technology. And remember, one shot to Legolas' head and he's dead. Range. Legolas also insanely agile. Yeah, but you know. It's tough to say. It I think they'd be quite say. a matchup. Remember the USB arrow? Yeah. <laughs> hey man, that's tech for you, okay? It would suck if you hit it perfectly, but it was turned the wrong way. Ugh, oh, terrible. Um, hi, Rags. And hi. Jesus fucking Christ, this show is slow and boring. Noped after episode three. Another one for the breakdown vids. The show itself. Oh, the breakdown vids are better than the show itself. Yeah, yeah. It's. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. That's that's the era we're in. Uh, shilling for the meter. Alrighty. Thank what would you, you for shilling. What would you say are overused, misunderstood, or misinterpreted writing advice ideas? I'm getting sick and tired of people using show, don't tell as an excuse for writers to leave their show empty. Fringy, um, say it. Active versus passive characters. It's like one of the big ones that people... Oh, I thought you were going to say the other one. Uh, well, yeah. there's a lot, but what... The oh, the one. characters have to change. Yeah, the characters yeah. must change. No, they don't. Should they? Probably, but do they have to? Depends on, no. Yeah, it depends on the plot, if they should change or not. Um, yep, exactly. But, yeah, like, I don't... I, if you're talking about, uh, you know, what, what, what would a good example be? Like, well, Underwater is a pretty good example. Story. Like, like there's nothing about the plot of Underwater that would probably make characters go on some... Like, they would change as a character. It's just how do these characters deal with this situation? Yeah. Like, stuff kind of like that. Um... I think, God. Well, so the answer was tropes that you don't like or a bad writing, a bad writing advice. Um, you need to well, cover the problem all those is tweets that, like, that what's your face put out. The advice isn't like bad. It's it's the problem is that it's uh, it's not a fundamental. Um, there's there's components that are missing that need to be, like if you have a base that's really rock solid in terms of your perspective on writing, I think that you can take on this advice and like use it in a way that's going to be appropriate for your story but if you get like too wrapped up in these rules you're gonna like i feel like you're gonna not fully understand like what strong writing is fundamentally you have a lot of the pieces that are like attached to it like that will help that are kind of close to um to oh there's a good one in chat if it doesn't advance the plot cut it out what does that mean advance the plot like if you have two characters speaking to each other and it doesn't advance the plot, but it tells us a lot about who they are, like that's meaningful. Well, that's something. Yeah. Bring you the like, scene you saw in your near the end of your playthrough today. That doesn't advance the plot. No, yeah. it doesn't. But, but if it's, you cut it's, that it's one out, of the you best ones. Really, yeah, you cut that out, you lose something very valuable. Like I think that I think that it can be very easy to confuse expeditious writing with uh, minimalist writing and that you remove elements that could make your story better uh, because you think that they are like unnecessary to getting to the end. Um, I think that expeditious writing means achieving a lot of things at the same time rather than achieving what you want to tell with your story like as fast as possible. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't hate the advice. Like there's, there's uh, it's just that I think that it can be interpreted in a way that's detrimental. Well, like a lot of potentially broadly. great stories can be... What's that, sorry? Or applied too broadly. Yeah. Like um, you have to have where, this or you have to have that. Exactly. You, you, as long as it makes sense, you can basically do whatever you want. Um, which is, I, I think, is a more liberating way of viewing storytelling. The like, as long as your idea is coherent and conveyed in a way that's comprehensible. Like, as long as you do that, you can more or less, like, try and tackle any idea that you find interesting whether that mean that your characters are passive or they don't change, whether because that's the tragedy that they don't change or because they actually realize that they were right all along, which can work. That can, can work. work. <laughs> but, I mean, oftentimes it doesn't. Like, it, it's the reason why you would say that characters ought to change is because that's generally going to be appealing to people, is seeing a character go on an arc and learn something because you want to go into a story to pull something meaningful to you that you can, you know, that you can walk away from feeling like you learned something. And having characters go on arcs is a really good way to make that happen. But understanding that it is not necessary, that your story is not necessarily bad because the characters didn't change. Important to understand that. Yeah. 
Have any of you seen Black Sails? It would be my vote for Hidden Gem. I think it's debuting on Stars is half the reason it's so unknown. Check it out. Black Sails? It's like a I've heard of it. Show, right? uh, yeah, I haven't seen it. Uh, let's see here. Black Sails television series 2014. Um, it looks like da, 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 da. it's a American historical adventure television television series set on New Providence Island and written to be a prequel to Robert Louis Stevenson's uh, 1883 novel Treasure Island. Interesting. Uh, Karen to Karen combat. Um, uh, Karen to Karen combat. Karen always wins. Glad you're fighting somebody, I assume. <laughs> I just can't remember. Uh, $5 super chats brokey, so have to use this. Edge Runners episode 1 was really bad. Insanely overt dialogue. Contrivance driven. Thin characters. Cheap animation. Bad VA. Unclear communication. Very amateur. Oh boy. Well, I can't say anything, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, I haven't seen it, so I couldn't uh, couldn't tell you. I assume that'll have to be for chat or Fringy to say a response to that one. It's been a while since I watched the first episode, but I remember not being super thrilled with the first episode. Um, that was a show that I felt like I needed to give it more time before it was starting to get to a place where it was getting more interesting. Um, but I mean, I haven't finished it yet, so... Though I will say, where I got up to in episode six, it feels like, man, that probably should have been the finale. And like, there's still four more episodes left. Like, if you would have expanded that out to where that was episode 10, it feels like that probably would have been stronger. But I haven't finished it yet, so yeah, can't say as a, as a whole. Thoughts on TPN, Buffy, and Angel videos? Hi, Rags. Hello. Uh, pretty good insights. A lot of really great bonus information and connections that you may not have grabbed, but also lots of weird things said because of biases, sort of standard stuff you get with a lot of hyper-specific takedowns of different... Well, I say takedowns, assessments of media, you know? Uh, have you guys watched The Groot Show? Its dialogue is inspired. Is, is the idea that there's no dialogue in it. Well, the dialogue is just I am Groot, right? Right. Uh, Rags, if you're done with Organized Chaos, you should check out Doom Blazer, the MCU shill. Doom Blazer? Pfft, the MCU shill? Uh, it's a shame that we have so many of them hanging around. Um, if Galadriel wanted an entire show to suck this much, we should have renamed the show Glory Rings of Power. You can even include the Seamen. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho! Uh, thoughts on Soviet Womble's video essays and any chance he might become a guest at some point? I mean, I'm on board with that, but I, I don't know if uh, I don't know what he's up to these days. I haven't seen any Soviet Womble video essays, so that's interesting. I didn't know he was doing that. Um, knife ears keep moving. This is a this is a dear Ken kingdom. Does anyone get that? Is a reference to something? Uh, it doesn't sound familiar. Yeah. Doesn't ring a bell. Hmm. All right. Deer kin? Like another kin who think they're a deer or something? I assume it's a reference to something. I don't know what it is, though. Sorry, I meant to write dwarven. Oh, this is a dwarven kingdom. Ian, knife ears keep moving. Uh, well, I mean, they condemned them to death, so <laughs> they probably feel something like that. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday stream. Why? Also, hi, Ragu. Because we had so uh, much hello. to do. We had so many mm -hmm, things to cover. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. And it was funny because my computer died, which forced us forward on one of them as well. Uh, such strange events. Hello, lads. Hello. Hi. What's a dead video game franchise that you think deserves a reboot? Personally, Twisted Metal has always been a childhood favorite of mine. Um... <clears throat> well, I was That's gonna say question. Dead Space, but uh, Turok. Let's see. Um, yeah, Turok. Uh, it would be nice to get a. Hmm. Is. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Is I guess they're gonna so make more Halo. Witcher games, right? <laughs> oh yeah, Halo. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, F Zero would be. Yeah. 
cool, but I don't know that F Zero needs like a reboot in the sense it needs like some overhaul. Just like let's make an F Zero game, you know? Uh, hmm. Uh, I'm just trying to think of like a game that had a one off and then it didn't really catch on, and I would want more. Dirty uh, bar. Hmm. Yeah, I think unfortunately it seems that yeah, it was mentioned in the chat in chat, but I mean Titanfall. Yeah. I don't know if they're gonna make another yeah. Titanfall game and Well I mean if we're talking about just like sequels I would want. I obviously want another Deus Ex game. That'd be nice. Oh yeah, yeah. Um yeah. Titanfall, I'd like I would really like for there to be a Titanfall three, but that seems unlikely. Um yeah. hmm. Well, I mean, the legacy of Cain is being said in chat. Uh, I think that well. uh, that might be happening now. I remember seeing an article that said that um, the studio that like the the company that now owns Legacy of Cain has like sort of thought about that as like a real possibility of rebooting Legacy of Cain. Never it's played really Legacy cool. of Cain. I hear it's really cool. Let me Wait. double check. Oh, okay, I know of this game, but I never played it. Okay. It looks like Legit two days ago. Looks like Crystal Nam Crystal Dynamics said that uh, Crystal Dynamics says it hears fans loud and clear after one hundred thousand plus survey responses. Uh, the company recently launched a questionnaire asking players about a series comeback. Interesting. Um, the problem is that anyone not on screen ceases to exist within the story. Rings of power, I guess, and, uh, yeah, kinda. Especially when it comes to combat. Combat needs, we need a renaissance of just good, competent yeah. combat in shows. Yeah, we have some hideous action in our shows, yeah. It's, it's very consistently bad. Pretty much all the Marvel stuff, all the Star Wars stuff, it's just terrible combat. Um... It's it's just shit. You never yeah. There's there needs to be a, you know, a renewal, where people rediscover that shooting good combat scenes is not necessarily easy, and it needs to be good. Gimli tried to kill Frodo to spare his reputation. Oh, maybe he was just like you know what? I really do believe that I can get the ring to the. Volcano, but nobody here believes in me, so I'm just gonna kill Frodo and take it. Did uh, did was there anything with Gimli in the ring, really? Uh, he I tried mean, to hit it with an axe, say, and then that didn't work. That didn't and work course, out. Like, he didn't like the ring being in the hands of an elf. <laughs> that's true, and that's the same scene, but you know. <laughs> Um, imagine if they redirected their tunnel and it zooms out and they ran into a second tree that was previously not on screen. I'm trying to think of what we're talking about. Redirected the tunnel. Oh, you're talking about when they were digging the big trench. Imagine they redirected it and then they ran into a different second tree that was previously just not there. That would be pretty funny. That was hilarious on the wide shot where it's just like they... They hit the tree, seemingly, for no fucking reason at all. It does look hilarious. It looks like something out of, like, a Top Gear <laughs> episode. Monty Python sort of thing, like, oh, yeah, fuck, yeah. we hit the tree. The oh, tree. Oh, <laughs> no. How do we not see it? Uh, it came out of nowhere, it I came swear. Out of nowhere. Uh, the orcs thought his smelliness was cultural appropriation. Damn. We here in EFAP are staunchly opposed to cultural appropriation. Yeah. Only smelliness can belong to orcs, and that's it. That's their yes. thing. Only orcs can be smelly. And she hulks feet. Orc, I don't like trees. They're rough, sappy, and they get in the way of my digging. Yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, gotta love it when fans are called racist, but the character everyone wants gone is the white woman. Lol. Keep on keeping on, EFAP. No, that means they're sexist. Hey, I want all the characters gone. Okay. I want them all gone. Equal opportunity hater. Um, can you explain the production design option? Um, I'm trying to think of what that might be. 
explain the production design option. I don't know what that refers to. Production design. I'm thinking maybe if option was a different word. I don't Element? know. Sorry, I'm lost on that. I one. just yeah, I don't I don't know what that means, sorry. Uh waiting to see if Treebeard is swapped for a bush or if white oaks are banned from Fangorn Forest and Rings of Prime. Oh, they want, I imagine the trailer for season two is going to be filled with bait from stuff you like yes. in Lord of the Rings as an IP. It'll be like, look, we I got think this. they're going to go super hardcore for it because they've got nothing. They can't be like your favorite character, Durin, and others are back. It's like nobody cares about them. You have to spend season two making people care about them. Which is what you should have spent season one doing. But I yep. guess if you're not talented, that's that's difficult, isn't it? Uh, you should watch the first season of True Detective. I think I have seen that. It's just been forever, so. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it's highly regarded. On top-tier television. Friend watched Andor's three episodes. Don't remember the story. Friend two. You watched three episodes and don't remember what it's about? Swear to God, this happened. Yeah, a lot of people fell asleep with Andor, uh, the first three. We thought it was alright. Damn yeah, shame. Yeah. yeah, I liked it. Oh, it was good. What's to draw from it, I thought? There were scenes that I, there are people and scenes that I cared about. God forbid that happens in Star Wars. Like salt from a table. It tells you the writer worked as a restaurant waiter <laughs> before their big break on this show. I don't even believe that. I, I don't even think that's what's happening there. I think they just, they were, they've had meals and they saw salt and they were like, you know when you brush salt off the table when you've built it a bit? That's great. That, that's a line I should have in my show. Some of these people, I'm not even sure they've had nine till five jobs, you know. I'm not sure. That builds character. They seem to be yeah. lacking it when they put it into these characters. A warrior doesn't know anything but war. Reminds me of Zod in Man of Steel. Where did you train? In the Shire? Yeah. Another fantastic line. I grew up surrounded by fire. Uh, our Balrog would likely say that, yes. Uh, Galadriel is a literal fish out of water. Oh, well, she was a... Not a intimate. literal fish. I mean, yeah, I don't know why you said that exactly. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, I, think, I think elves are mammals. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. Uh, and she never really... You never really got that impression with her either. That she was a, a stranger in a strange land and she didn't know their ways and she was trying to get used to this new surrounding. She, she always acted like this insufferable girl boss who always got her way and was just a general bitch. You never got that fish out of water concept. Numenor versus the Argonaut in Fellowship. In Lord of the Rings, we see those old statues from Lo, and hear Aragorn talk about what the mayor, these mean to him. Numenor came off as a member berries with no emotional anchor. Numenor was weird, dude. The whole thing was weird. Yeah, the Numenor plotline. They're was... taking our jobs. What the hell was that? That was, that was these dumb creatures as shit. that have literally not been on these shores for, as far as we know, hundreds and hundreds of years. One shows up randomly, and they're worried and about wants them to leave. Jobs. Does not want to be here. Clearly taking our jobs. And then half of us get killed in war. <laughs> it's like, you guys will have plenty of jobs, don't worry. Uh, Galadriel learned only one thing growing up. Punch. Well, that's how you solve your problems, alright? It works for some people, I guess. Looks like me after I take a massive dump. Nice. Alright. I look the same after I take a massive dump. I do too. I've been it's treating my, this. It, it's my ability. I can mimic the power of that one uh, fruit that I could change my weight very quickly. Mm -hmm. so I can make myself slightly lighter. Um, I've been treating this as an absurdist comedy like Monty Python. It's been way more enjoyable since I did that. Uh, it somehow That's makes more a sense. Good strategy. To... Yeah. Galadriel took at least two centuries to tilt her head or rotate a page to get a new info on the Mark of Sauron. This is a cosmic writing tism. Holy crap! <coughs> I, 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 that realization is so fucking dumb. I don't even know what to say. Someone Absolutely in chat nothing. said "stab twist gut," and I just can't believe it. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Stab <sighs> twist gut. So fucking dumb. So oh. much. It's so hard to deal with. Stab twist gut. That's all you need to know. The kill orc, stab twist gut. 
Have you guys seen the show Dark on Netflix? It's a sci-fi thriller that seems to handle time travel quite well. I'd like to hear your takes on it. Um, I watched the first two seasons and I've I just put my hands up and admitted I got too confused. I uh, wasn't able to follow it enough. They start to get real complicated. They run multiple timelines. They have characters moving through different timelines all the time and lots of big reveals happen by finding out certain people are certain people, but older or younger or what have you. Um, I'd have to rewatch it and go slower and more deliberate, but um, from what I was enjoying through the parts that I was enjoying, I was impressed. It's, uh, it does seem like a very, very good show. Take the recommendation seriously, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, <coughs> any thoughts on The Boys Season 3, and do you have plans on doing an EFAP for it? Also, high wags. Hi. I, I haven't seen it, I'm not going to see it, and I hope we don't do an EFAP on it, because I don't care at all about it. I watched... Season 3. It's better than 2, but it's still pretty bad. Mm, yeah, because 2 is really bad. Really bad. A lot of problems with 2. Well, 2 just, it just killed it. Season 1 was kind of neat. But, totally. yeah. yeah, season 1 is, yeah, there was something there. Absolutely. Um, Was Smeagol a Harfoot? If so, his behavior makes a lot more sense now, considering the behavior of these Harfoots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was a... Uh, and... <laughs> he used to be a hobbit. No, no. He used to be a hobbit. No, something far worse. <laughs> far worse. Something Think monstrous. Think of hobbits with evil. Ancient evil that would cannibalize hobbits. The hobbits. Uh, I felt repulsed when they laughed at the guy who died from bees. That has to be the most excruciating, horrific way to go. Yeah. Yeah, that would suck. That's a terrible way to die. Uh, this just says, She Hulk's feet, smiley face. Nice. That's, that's come through a few times, right? Yeah, it has. Yeah, they like uh, based and yeah. green pilled. <laughs> uh, RLM is crazy. Nope is better than us, dude. I it's probably Jay who likes us because that movie is absolutely batshit. Uh, which I will show you to <laughs> one day, and you will appreciate oh, how fucking batshit. It all is. right, all right, <laughs> all right. Metal was right. R R R is great. That's what I hear. I hear it's a fun, fun romp, that movie. R-R-R? It's an awkward name, yes. But yes. What does it stand for? I don't know. Oh. All right, then. Uh, why didn't Lenny smell Gandalf arriving? What? <laughs> why didn't Lenny? Oh, I guess it, Maybe... Lenny Henry, so Stardog. Why didn't he oh. smell him arriving? I don't know. Maybe is, he was... Something he does? He was up Uh, what the fuck? I was explicitly told their hearts are bigger than their feet. Oh, yeah, I mean... They did explicitly say that. You know, they say that if you tell yourself a lie enough times that you could fool yourself into believing that it's true, maybe that's the story. Of Balamori. If they, yeah, if they lie about them being kind, they believe that they are kind, and it's a load off their conscious, conscience. If they even have a conscience, which they might not have. Which remains to be seen, to be proven. God, they're going to be coming back in season two. Uh, uh, this is definitely a moment of, do they have to? It's like, sorry, sorry, so sorry, chat. Um, and I'm afraid it was mentioned earlier, but uh, Mr. Fringy is, is dying right now from tiredness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh. I hope I he gets better soon. Literal. I'm just, I'm, I'm tired. It's been going for a long time, so we'll probably wrap it there. But we've managed to get through All quite right. a decent chunk of Super Chats. Oh, that's and good, what, good. What I'm going to try and do, strange and crazy plan, I got a Super Chat catcher to do a drink of tomorrow at 9 my time. And then once that's wrapped up, I'm going to try and record what we have left for the Lord of the Rings ones. This, so this will be 204, 207, 208, 209 all put together. Ooh, um, all right. We're not too far away from being able to pull that off. Um, gotcha. So what I'll do is record, quote unquote, an offline EFAB, right, and attach it to this, so that it all comes out as one episode. So we expect this one to come out probably for Wednesday, and it'll be much longer, as in probably an additional two or three hours on the end of this one, and it'll start up in seconds from now, and it'll be seamless, probably not actually, because it'll come after me saying goodbye, but that's okay. <laughs> it'll be saying goodbye to the odd line chat. Um, but yeah, and then we're recording the 200 ones uh, offline. That's going to come out in a big thing as well. So um, we're just getting caught up on all that. But as I said, 
The plan is for Hot D on the coming Saturday. Did you say sorry about the spam earlier? That's not your fault, Thunder. Don't worry about it. That's just people. Yeah, doing... it's not your fault. It's just a you're doing great, spam. pal. You're doing great. Though. You're doing very good. Uh, so Hot Thank D for the next EFAP, Ragnarok for the EFAP following that, and then following that we've got some videos we're probably going to try and check out. Hopefully we'll, we'll have caught up with the Super Chats and uh, hopefully other things will be announced in terms of plans being made because I've just, I've been swallowed these past two weeks-ish with getting all of my new positioning tech, internet and storage files, everything sorted with this new thing. But hey, this was a good experiment. It worked just fine. Everything's great. No problems with the internet or the functionality. Well, I'm very like glad said, to hear that. Something is even, off your mind. There's even a feed for the Streamlabs that comes right in. One was sent 31 minutes ago. It's the only one we haven't mm -hmm. read. And it says, if you could watch a villain from any media go up against any hero from any media, what would you choose? I always thought Anton from No Country for Old Men would make a fantastic Punisher villain. Sherlock Holmes versus the Riddler would also be good. Oh. Those are cool ideas. That is a cool idea. Those are those are really neat ideas. Good on you. Um, well, a villain. Uh, let me see. Could I have? Uh, hmm. Darth Vader versus Kratos. <laughs> I think Kratos loses that, right? Because a lightsaber is gonna fuck him up. Telekinesis. And a lightsaber. Throw a lightsaber at Kratos. He's gonna have to. I don't know if the Blades That's of pretty... Chaos could deal with that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um. Predator vs. Uh, Batman. That is that would legit be potentially pretty interesting. Yeah, it could be because they're they're sort of similar. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That could work out pretty well. He's trying to investigate these weird killings that have been happening around Gotham City, and he he, he gets better and better at tracking down the 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 lair of the predator. Yeah, I can see that happening. You got Iron Man vs. Lex Luthor, being that they're like. Two men of similar backs, uh, you know, they've made a lot of money, they have the companies, but they've gone, they're living different lives, sort of things. Like, that could be interesting. I mean, I think the, the Legolas Hawkeye one was a pretty, well, I mean, they're both heroes, but, um... Yeah. Let's Obi -Wan, see. Obi-Wan, you conspire against me. Conspire against me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Anakin. He's against me. <laughs> you turned her against me. Uh, All right. Uh, so, Obi -Wan, oh, someone you in chat said, fire against me. Someone in chat said Luke versus Jake. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, so with that, we're going to wrap up there and say goodbye, folks. Uh, it's been big old fun times. Obviously, if you're curious as to why there's a little bit slower right now for EFF stuff, because. Um, I have been consumed as has metal and as has slash is fringy with Thor Rag fuck's sake. Kratos Ragnarok, okay? That's what it truly is. God Not of me. War. God of no, War. You've been consumed that. with uh uh well you've released videos and what's the thing you said? And you not being playing? able to play the game. Oh, and you're building a PC, right? So yeah, you got all the things going on too. Yeah, I've I've been because uh, my the fans of my GPU aren't really working correctly, so they can't cool it properly. So if it plays games that attempt to tax it much then it will just stop working because it overheats so i've been taking it easy and i haven't played many games at all but if i do play a game it's just rim world because it's not like a graphic intensive game so i can play that uh and catching up on other stuff that i need to do but i'm i'm excited to have a you know a working pc again essentially mm -hmm. so excited and uh yeah, so if you want to catch Fringy streams, they're found findable on Dubious Sanity from for Twitch. On Twitch, yeah. One word. If you want to find mine, go to the YouTube homepage, scroll down, you'll find my plays list. There's ten parts. Some of them are like nine hours for Ragnarok. I've been having a blast with it and look forward to talking about it. Um, if you want to find Metals, I think they're on his archive channel. So that'd be how you find them, uh, which is... Metal Commander, I think, um, on YouTube. Rungle Rags. Is there any way Hello. we could get a Horseman of PC? Wait a minute. I did read this one out. I just didn't delete it. I think you guys said it was a possibility in future, right? Yeah. It's absolutely a possibility. As far as I know, everyone is still available to do that. I mean, Barry's got a channel. Top Hats is still, you know, around doing his stuff. Um, and, you know, Fringy and I are here. So maybe. I think the only... I don't think it would be like a PC thing, though, because... I think we've all just sort of 
gravitated away from that for the most part into just general gaming and media discussion. I had someone and other kinds of stuff but... asking me about PC parts, and I just had to admit, it's like I could have given you good answers like ten years ago, but at this point, I'm so out of the loop on PC parts and uh, building PCs. I, I've gone back to being like a noob in that regard, and that there's going to be yeah. so much more prepared for it. Uh, I think, I, like I mentioned, when I was getting my new PC. But I was like, I know the advice. You don't get pre-built. And then it was like, have you tested that advice out recently? Is that like, what is that built on? And it's like, well, because pre-builts, they're not very good PCs. You don't get to know what components get go in there, and oftentimes it's not worth the money. And it's like, yeah, so you haven't checked out pre-builts for a while, have you? And it's like, no. And um, this is Sony for Metal as well. He was he was agreeing with me. He was like, yep, that's that's the problem with them. And then we checked a site where it's just like in-depth, you know, choices down to every last component and all of the makes and models and numbers and stuff. And it's just like, oh, this is better. Yeah, the uh, I, I catch uh, the occasional uh, pre-built review when I watch Gamers Nexus, a channel I very, very much recommend to everybody. And some of them are great. Some of them are terrible. You just make sure you get a good one. And there's a lot of a lot of the times there will be reviews on the specific models and if I mean, it is absolutely something to explore as an option. Uh, I don't begrudge you one tiny bit for getting it pre-built. If it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. Like a lot of mm. things. Y'all go too fast. Still back on ESAP yep. 100. Yet still, I'm coming for you, long man. I will find you. And then I will be cool. So now that's that, that's it's it's funny given what we were talking about before. But apparently we're going too fast. We're still... So. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're ahead, and we're still going to be going further than ahead. We're going to—it's impossible for me not to release multiple episodes within one of the weeks that are coming. When our goal was to actually skip a week, so we... yeah, we're doing great in that regard. The thing is, when does media slow down? Typically, it's like—is like, it the spring uh, month of the year? It's usually spring, right? Uh, it gets slow. Yeah, because no... fuck like, you, it's I'm January. <laughs> well, like January, February, because video games don't tend to come out in January, usually not even towards like, it usually starts up again in like March. Films tend to slow down a bit in January, February. That just tends to be the time when things sort of... That will likely know, be where we get to catch up, so to speak. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. Because um, I, th I do have a memory of the, like, I don't know, beginning or middle of this year, we had a chance, we got to the point where we caught up, it was the anniversary that killed it again. We just caught up, everything was up to date, and then it just went Poof. We're still catching up there on was those a... 200 messages, by the way. There was a time when we were, like, it turned out to, I, I think it was reason, reasonable for us to be worried about it, but there was a time when we were concerned, like, oh, are we going to have, like, enough media and stuff to cover? Because there was some drought, and it was the, the kind of COVID times and stuff like that. And we were just busy, busy, busy with things. Yeah. So I think we're just, there's all, there just always seems to be something we want to do or talk about. Um, so Yeah, and we, we're staring down, we like, no drought. I see the, the month of December, it's like four, maybe five opportunities for EFAP episodes. Cool. It's like, I've already got, like, six topics plotted in. So that is, and that doesn't even cover, like, new things that are coming out. But hey. We'll see what happens. We want to do our best. This is don't be clever, be the C. So I think they're saying B will always always be right. Always be right. That would be, that that's the that, that's what Kratos should have told Atreus. Is like we must be right. Don't be the no way. Do be the C. Don't be the sky. <laughs> do not be the sky. Be the C. Why, father? Because the C is always right. I was showing the. Uh, did you get the story um, for you when you played twenty eighteen where Kratos tells the story of the the tortoise and the hare? <laughs> I think yes, I did. I did get that. Uh, it's it's one of my favorite moments. Just um, it's so it's so in character. I think is why I love it so much. <laughs> that he yeah. he's very spotted with his stories. You could say at that point, like, what is the point of telling a story? He was probably told like it is to you know teach people a lesson. And you're like, right? There is a fast person who is reckless. And there is a slower, more deliberate person who is purposeful and determined. That one is better. <laughs> and, and they won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. like, oh okay <laughs> that was a great story I was very invested uh, I grew up surrounded by salt on a table ooh nice I remember that line where they're like they were tossed aside like swiping salt from a table the like, salty table oh. that is our lives is that a common thing where you just got salt all over the table and you're like, nah? Well, a lot of people would point it out, it's like, that just feels like they were writing in like some cafe or whatever. And then they were like, oh, you don't oh I think that's just a matter of like, you didn't have a good 
like you, you just didn't have a really good analogy. <laughs> yeah, like, you wanted to have you wanted to have an analogy or an idiom, like so, uh, like an idiom. I think you're right. It, yeah, I think I, I'd have idiom. to check. I actually don't know which is which. Uh, be, like so, it would be an analogy, wouldn't it? Because it's analogous to sweeping off salt off a table. An idiom uh, would be like I'm gonna come and like I'm gonna pick you up, like you know something like that. Or I don't know actually the the technical. Well, is it, is it actually a metaphor? Analogy. It's not a metaphor, right? All right, we're doing analogy versus idiom, or I guess also a metaphor. All right, uh, so uh, uh, idiom versus analogy. Um, can you just tell well, me sorry. the difference? A metaphor is a figure of speech that describes an object or action in a way that isn't literally true, but helps explain an idea or make a comparison. An analogy is a comparison between one thing and another, typically for the purpose of explanation or clarification. Okay. Um. Right. Here, uh, I found this. Idioms are, okay. Have you ever been told you're a ray of sunshine? Or that the sun rises and sets with you? Were you confused as to what they were talking about? In the first example, you're a ray of sunshine, the person used a metaphor. While the second example, that the sun rises and sets oh, with you, is an analogy. Idiom. So, idioms are expressions that have a figurative meaning independent of their parts. Metaphors are figurative language that takes a word and pairs a phrase with it to show likeness or, anal like likeness or analogy. So, there you go. Anyway, what were we talking about? So I, think, I think it's an analogy, <laughs> and it's not a very good one. It's just like you Ain't tried to come up with one that you thought was clever. Oh, well, I that's think the whole they were, show, isn't it? Well, mm. I think they were trying to come up with something that we didn't use, but the characters in that universe might use, but it didn't that quite fit. Yeah. That can be real yeah. tough to, like, sell that properly, you know, in a fantasy story. Yeah, it, it's just not... It doesn't quite mesh. Um, it just seems well, odd. It's, 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 to me, it comes across as... Um, you don't want to use one that is common parlance. You don't want to use one that actually exists. You want to create your own new cool one, but, it, like, that takes work. <laughs> you know? like it doesn't feel that like that would be one that would actually exist. Um, it's yeah. not talking because it's one of those like how. So you have a whole bunch of salt on a table and then it gets swept away. That just and doesn't... what does that mean, right? You know, what is that meant to illustrate? Especially because salt is pretty valuable, most likely, and and it's almost it's yeah. I it just don't think it fits. It doesn't seem like it'd be something that would really just work well. Um, I'm a bit behind. One of the issues with the Tempest line is that Gandalf chides Denethor. He's appealing to Aragorn's authority, not his own. Um, I guess they're comparing the scene where she says the Tempest shit to when Gandalf calls out Denethor and why one works and one doesn't. It's just been a while, so I'm trying to re remember. I mean, the... Gandalf specifically refers to the return of a king in that line. You cannot deny the return of the king. I love that fucking scene, but then I love those movies. Those movies are really good. Oh yeah, he says, authority is not given to you to deny the return of the... Dude, there's so fucking good lines. So great. Oh well. Because <laughs> oh, yeah. Rings of Power is like the current state of Lord of the Rings, which is unfair, but you know. Uh, might be a chat for another channel, but haven't orcs been around long enough that they wouldn't look anything like elves by now? Uh, the um, thing is... We need to know more rules about how they're going with right. that. Uh, but we need more because, as much as you, you'd have to go from the books, because we got nothing from the from the shows and even the the movies, right? They don't really go into the timeline on it. Um, I still think you got to give them a little bit of breathing room for what exactly they want to set in stone is exactly how it works. But um, possibly, I, I don't know. I'd have to look into it more. The elves are taking your duff beer. What's Duff Beer? Oh, Is that a Simpsons reference? Okay. All right. I'm just not aware of Duff Beer. I just, I just don't know. <laughs> Duff. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's funny. I don't think I'd like Duff, but I still want to drink one. Well, I mean... It's like a Krabby and, and Patty we, or Purple Flute. As flirt. we know, like, Duff, in terms of their varieties, Duff Light and all that, it's all the same. It all comes from the same tube and then just splits into three at the end. <laughs> Remember the uh the guy on the assembly line? There we go. Just, like, yeah. 
on the assembly line. He, he's checking like to get the bottles of Darth beer. And it's like, fine, fine, rat, fine, like, <laughs> thumb, fine. And it's like, hey, I just, I think it was Marty. Like, hey, I just want to say you're doing a good job. And it's like, oh, thanks, man. It means a lot. <laughs> it's just all of these. There's loads like, of horrible, horrible things, things get through. Things yeah. Just keep getting through. Uh, Galadriel throwing those gods in the cell looked like someone shooting their escapee house cats back inside so they don't get fleas. Oh, shooing them. Yeah, yeah. It really does look like they. <laughs> They got along. They were like, oh, you want us to go in here? Yep, yep, we'll go in here. No problem. It was really awful, and slowing it down made it, um, made it better. The elves took our food just like our gerbs. That was such a mistake. What were they thinking? <laughs> makes no <laughs> sense. The elves took our jobs. Like, what are we doing? Comparison. I've had two times of near completely collapsed lung. Oh dear. Both times drove oh. myself thirty to sixty minutes to an ER. Damn. On your own. Hours before admission and treatment. What? Well, like waiting in the waiting in the ER to before getting treatment. Oh well, then again, okay. So they said near collapsed lung. For, for a second there, I thought it meant like you had one lung that was functioning barely, because that would sound like a nightmare drive. But if it's near collapse, I don't know what that feels like. I I, I don't know what extent that. I have that. no idea. Yeah. But I mean, damn, dude. Yeah, that sounds pretty chattish. Just saying. You're driving yourself there, yeah. Well, it's just like you walk into a hospital and you're like, "Yeah, my arm is falling off. Do you mind? Uh... <laughs> and you like, might just sew that back up, please. And thank you." And they're like, "Yeah, you just, you just wait here." And you're like, "Yeah, no problem, no problem." <laughs> yeah. sit down. No, I understand you're busy. I understand. There's a lot of a lot of people you need to treat. us. Okay. holidays, you know. Yeah, yeah, holidays. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> holidays. Lots of. Uh, a little platoon could be a regular, really great fit. I mean, yeah, but if there's a subject that's suitable, we'll happily grab them back. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. You'll Absolutely. be on every episode for every episode of Rings of Power coverage. You can fucking guarantee that. <laughs> it's just, that's, uh, that's the positive that comes from these horrible shows. You're like, well, it's time to get the Avengers back together. That's, that's what it's going to be like for uh, House of the Dragon. Though, I imagine now, with how good House of the Dragon Season 1 was, that Eve Hap will probably do a uh, bi-weekly two-episode coverage or something like that. For yes. House of Dragon. Yeah. That now that good. we're all into it, Absolutely. Um, Especially if it's coming out alongside, you know, Rings of Power, and you alternate between the two. That, that, that's, that's kind of an interesting quality dynamic. Well, yeah, I saw some people being like, God, that was a rough part of EFAB having to go between She-Hulk and Rings of Power, and I hated them both. I was like, okay, but... Like, there are people out there who hate Star Wars and Marvel. And we... <laughs> like, you know? I was like, so imagine that. Like, it's just... I, I always wonder sometimes, I'm just like, well, isn't the fun part of it that we're just talking about stories in general? You can divorce it from Rings of Power or She-Hulk and just think of it as someone's told a story and we're telling you what we think of it, um, if you really want to. But Because I understand, someone will be like, oh god, we're going to have that, that would be five weeks of House of the Dragon. It's just like, yeah. Well, no, ten weeks. But, you know, interchanging with other things. But don't worry, I'm sure we'll record extra episodes and then we'll be ten episodes ahead. Five if we're covering two episodes, right? Well, we could. It, it would depend on what else is happening at the time, right? Like, if, if say, for example, She Hulk season two and Rings of Power season two are out at the exact same set of months, and we decided to cover all three, I would be like, holy shit, we might have we... to do three episode chunks. Or... Yeah, that would maybe make the most sense. It would be, it would be weird though. It Let's would be strange. She Hulk but... could get Rakita Law back. That'd be fun. Oh, like that, that would show. be really fun. Yeah, he did. He really he told us that he was uh, excited for more, and he couldn't wait until they released it. So I also would say like, oh, it's great to see Theo back on the recent EFAP. And I was like, yeah, because Theo, I don't think watched She Hulk. I don't think he. I think he avoided Rings of Power. I don't think uh, he saw House of the Dragon, but much Not later. It was just like, yeah, we, we you know you know how it works in EFAP. We don't want to just bring in someone. We have had instances in the past in which we bring on a guest who is not that interested in the topic and. It, just not it that sucks. Uh, it's yeah. not that great. You know, you're poking with a stick. Say something. <laughs> you're alive. I don't care if you send me to the back of the caravan. I'm staying in the front, bitch. Mola 2022. I will buy this t-shirt. Yeah, that was me about when Sardox sends him, or well, Sardox sends him to the back. He's like, you have, that's your punishment. Go to the back of the caravan. I was just like, no. That's, that's probably going to get me killed, so I'd rather just incur whatever wrath you'll give me by going to the front. But they do stay at the back, and then they nearly die. 
That part was so weird, because they, like, agreed they shouldn't abandon them, but they will force them to the back of the caravan. It's like, why? That just sounds cruel, then. Like, because you know we that We won't they're... force them to die, but we'll put them in a position where we're... <laughs> More than likely going to They're very likely die. going to die. Because if you're at the front and you break down or you're slow, everyone has to slowly move around you, and so it gives you more time before you fall behind fully, you know? It's just... It's, uh, you should have done it. Time is like a ship. It moves because it looks up. Oh, that's a good one. Very true. That's very true. Who can argue with that? I can't wait to get my fringy plush so I can show it the wonders of having a sink in the same room as the toilet. Haha, -ha, poop nice. and fringy, never forget. Coupan Fringy. That's well, he wears his name. gloves to make sure he avoids that sort of fate. I think that's that's that might be better. Yeah, well, because he'll use the glove perhaps as a um, you know, you'll basically what I'm saying you'll change out the gloves every time, every time. There's a lot of gloves. He says gloves in the loo. Yep. Yeah. And I'm not hearing any disagreements, so I'm guessing that's just canon now. Uh, he literally, he's literally the friend that shows up on Facebook asking to meet up after 20 years just to try and sell you into a pyramid scheme. Unfortunately, I don't know who we're talking about. Who? Someone in Rings of Power, I'm assuming. Oh, who would that be? I don't know. He's the friend. Oh, Elrond. To Durin, probably. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Of course. Yep. Of there course, it would be him. Absolutely. Secrets? I have one of those. Durin. Yeah, he's a moron who, like, can't save it. He's way too trusting, question mark. I think that's a f arguable flaw for him, but it's it's just, it feels inconsistent when you watch the show. Uh, annoying. I've he's never... Like Mr. Girl. I've never seen Buffy, but a co-worker has season one on VHS on a shelf in his office. He hasn't been in for a few months. Should the tapes go missing? Oh, they're suggesting they steal them? No, don't steal someone else. Buffy, that's... Don't steal someone else's things. Yeah, you can steal... <laughs> my implication there was like, you can steal belongs... someone else's stuff, but not Buffy. <laughs> not Buffy. Some things are beyond thievery. Um, and it's not... You're gonna be disappointed if you already steal season one, because you'll be like, what the fuck was that? They'll be like, yeah, I know. Gotta get further than season one, sorry. Um, don't steal things. Also, don't steal things, yeah. Don't steal things and don't hurt people, unless you absolutely have to. Which is probably less than you would imagine. Uh, be better. Muller and Boys, thoughts on Apple TV Severance? I think I watched what episode? I wasn't a fan of it. <laughs> Which people are not going to be a fan of. Right, because people really like that show, don't yeah. they? Yeah. When this episode goes out, there'll be people like, what? <laughs> We're like, oh no. Listen, mm -hmm. I, have, I have so many hot takes you guys don't even know about. All right. And <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, because I was thinking about this, and, um, you know, like, the whole your critiques are poor thing? Like, I don't know if everyone remembers, but that comes from me not liking The Last of Us 2, and I got shat on quite a bit for that, but I think its legacy at this point is that it was, it was just awful. Um, and, like, yeah, it, it, you don't really hear it referenced much anymore, yeah. You still hear people talk about the first Last of Us more, I feel. Makes sense, yeah. Um, but what I was gonna say was that it feels like the reverse this time with... God of War Ragnarok, it's like, I'm getting chastised for thinking it's good. It's like, well, I'm curious how that'll all shake out by the time we reach, you know, a year from now. I wonder what the legacy of God of War Ragnarok is going to be. Somehow, I doubt it'll be Last of Us 2 levels, even though I've seen many people say it is the Last of Us of the God of War franchise, the Last of Us 2 of the God of War. Specific reference to... Uh, Kratos does not kill anybody because he's been emasculated. Bring you're not ready. You're not. You're not. You're so not fucking ready. There's this. There's this quote that we're gonna see. And it's gonna be so fun. I imagine it'll. Yeah, it'll have happened by now because it, this episode won't be out before those two go out. So there's this moment where he says that Atreus is emasculated because Sif is taller than him. Bringy, you don't. Uh... You don't. You can't understand. This video is. We. We. This one's bad. <laughs> All right. Hello. This one's really. The this end. one makes me angry for a game that I will never play. <laughs> <laughs> I feel. I feel like I have to come to you know go to bat f for the honor of a game that I just uh, that I'm never gonna play in heaven. I just it makes me angry. Like I, I don't think I've ever heard <laughs> the adult woman is taller than the boy. <laughs> like what is this? Oh, there's so many great arguments that have yet to come. Well, have come by the time this goes out. So I hope you enjoyed that EFAB, everybody. Um, this says he put it in nature's wallet. 
Maybe he's talking about the uh, give me the meat and give it to me roll thing. Oh, they knew. Why did they write that line? Why did they write all the lines? <laughs> like, why did they make a TV? Of course, why did they make a TV show? But uh. the clever slash wise line was definitely written by a software engineer. Clever code breaks when something unexpected happens. Wise code is durable and handles exceptions. If it were, like, not a shit show, I would be happy to hear a character trying to devise a difference between being clever and being wise. But when you hear a show like Rings of Power trying to do it, you're like, oh god, here we go. But um, you also don't really want to be in a position where you're trying to denigrate being clever. Um, I understand what they're going for, but at the same time, you're just like, I don't know, man, clever is usually, usually a positive. Yeah. In fact, clever is so much so usually regarded as a positive that we have specific, like, negative versions of it. Um, I hear that Shad is looking for writers. Thought I would plant the seed. Thanks for doing what you do, guys. EFAP has helped me sharpen my skills more than you know. Keep up, uh, keep it up, you right-wing trolls. That's us. Fair, Don't forget sexist. He said right-wind trolls, but I, I think <laughs> I think he meant... Right-wind? Right yes, we're um, yeah, I, I think that both he and Ripper are going to be trying to expand their worlds, which fucking more power to them. Good luck. Uh, uh, to quote Leslie Nielsen, we're all counting on you. I joke when I say that. But at the same time, it'd be really cool if they actually managed to sort of break out. Especially with hard work. Storytelling. What a wonderful thing it is. Anyone can do. But not everyone can do. You say not that about everyone. a lot of things, you know? Rags is snow, Fringy's goo, and now Platoon's dust. Oh, because of the big old dust conversation. A good old... That was like two hours. Remember? Remember Rags? Ah. Oh, dust. Oh, dust. In Lord no, of the Rings, which one was that? Oh, it was, it was talking about whether or not Elrond was... He, when he saw dust moving, whether it was... Oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Vibrations, yeah, yeah. or whether it was like telekinesis or something. I can't remember. Yeah, um, absolutely vibrations, yeah. In the Lord of the Rings universe, the world was created by song. Hence, song, in many instances, produces magical effects. Besides, Finrod versus Sauron is a song battle. Alright. Um, Sound this... also produces vibrations if it's very loud, so... Yeah, that would still... Things, oh, as, I, as I say, I, and I'm holding to it, things are not magical unless otherwise elaborated upon to be so. Yeah, it, uh, and and there's a difference between. Oh, I was trying to remember, like, the, the it was really hard to actually get to the specifics of exactly where the contention was. It was like the the difference is actually important, even though it sounds ridiculous. Because I was saying that if the magical effect or the the magic this if the supernatural element was just making the voice louder, that's fine because that would just produce the vibrations, which makes the dust shake anyway. But anything past that, you're gonna have to work a bit harder on. And I'm certainly not ready to assume anything that's more complex than that. Uh, Finrod versus Sauron. Magical battle with song. I would be curious to see that adapted. I'm not sure how they would pull it off. I, I could... It would have to be a bit more abstract, I'd imagine, so that it doesn't come across as, like, a musical. Let me ask you this, in, that, in, that, in the spirit of that sort of concept, right? Have you guys seen uh, Nicolas Cage in Color Out of Space? A Color Out of Space? I watched it with you, I could say yes. Oh, yeah, you're right, and Jay was there, that's right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I just forgot who I'd watch that with sometimes. Um, but that element of using how they visually represent a color out of space is... Yo, we disagreed you know, it, on this, you like it, I don't. Um, yeah, I was alright with it, and I can understand your perspective. I think what they did was okay, though. Um, it was, too, it, it's, it kind of was like, too understandable, because it was just purple. I know what you mean, yeah. Um, but in terms of, like, sound, yeah, that could be... Well, it's, yeah. yeah, like, a song battle. You don't want to end up, like, Multiverse of Madness. You wanna, yeah, I was about to say. You want to find a way of making that work, and I'd, just, I'd be curious to see how they would do it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's when you want to sit down and think about. I was away for three hours. We're still here? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, never make fun of RLM discussing Vader's height ever again. That has nothing on this. I, uh, I, I think it's fine to discuss. What, what was funny about them discussing Vader's height is that they eventually realized they were, uh, they were wrong, right? That the, 
they thought he looked shorter than he was because they thought it was Hayden Christensen's height, which isn't tall enough to be Beta, but uh, I think they put out a correction saying like, oh shit, it wasn't actually him in a lot of the suit scenes. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's weird to say like, you know, damn, you can't make fun of RLM for being pedantic after this EFAB. It's like, I thought EFAB was known more so than RLM for being pedantic. And that's like, pedantry is our pedantry is our we speciality. Own that one. I don't believe anybody has out outclassed us on that. It's difficult to outclass us on that. All right, we're experts. We are. We're very, very expert. Um, Tolkien magic is a mind you speak to for favor. Saruman's avalanche chant is literally mountain, bring stones upon my enemies. Gandalf's fire is a homie who adapts to the situation, not one size tool. I'm gonna be honest with you, this doesn't help. Yeah, um... I don't. Th I don't feel like I really understand anything better with that. It just would re require further elaboration. I'm sure. If someone it, asked me to, I'm sure it has some kind of structure, but if someone asked me to describe the mechanics of uh, Saruman having an avalanche form at Kahadras on on the Fellowship, I'd be like, I imagine he's casting a spell that can fuck with the weather, and I think a lightning strike hits the top of the mountain that knocks loads of shit off it. Yeah, the avalanche. If someone said no, he's actually asking the mountain to drop its own boulders on the fellowship. I'd be like, oh. That doesn't uh, settle quite as well for me, but at the same Especially time... Especially if you have the lightning strike as part of it. Yeah, it feels... To, like Obviously, I'm going for the movie, right? The book might describe it yes. very differently. But um, if it was a scene where it was just the mountain and then rocks just start falling... I would probably then assume again he's he's cracking the mountain at certain points that are weak to make things fall, as opposed to asking the mountain to break and drop its rocks. You know what I mean? Um, but it, you know, uh, I'm not against the idea that uh, the mountain can be spoken to as an entity. It's just that I think that's harder to swallow uh, compared to that, just yeah. Parts that's off. the kind of thing you want to kind of elaborate on very ambiguously that you can speak to the rivers and speak to the mountains. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine with that in uh, an ethereal spell casting sort of... Blah, yeah, blah, 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 that this. the earth is a living thing, yeah. or that there's some sort of some sort of underlying nature that these things have, yeah. <clears throat> uh, on my way to a job interview, and it's quite motivating to know that even doofus writers like this get hired, them barbarian half-foots, man. I rags. Hello. And yeah, they do come across as like barbaric. And it's not just because they're dirty and smelly and things like that. It's just the way that they treat one another. It's I mean, you would legitimately expect barbarians to treat their own, you know, tribe better than that. You know, Harfits give barbarians a bad name, I might even say. Might be, yeah. Uh, yeah, barbarians would be looking at this and going like, we'd never do that. Like, I love my family and my friends. I'd never do this to them. I mean, fuck the other tribe next door. They can go die in a pit for all I care. But I, I love my people. Um, death, author made it, past tense, but having made it, the author is past tense. This is about, um, obviously the big, uh, breach in understanding between you and me and Little Platoon was that he doesn't believe you can separate the author from the work if they've made it. Like, it's an impossibility. Death, the author, is impossible, uh, in concept. Which, uh... Was just we we eventually got to the point of just understanding that he's just got a very different understanding of the definition. He has a very he has a very unique understanding of that. Uh, yeah, because you got the next super chat says, "Death of the author is a concept that holds that an author's intentions and biographical facts should hold no special weight in determining an interpretation of the writing." Yep, that's that's fine yep, for me in terms that, of That's us, yeah. And uh, it came up on the the hot D super chats I said like uh, the big reason we need uh, this is a really important tool is that a lot of authors can destroy their own work and we shouldn't give them that power um, obviously you could argue like well wait is, is this like a, the bad sequels destroying the OT and it's like no I meant destroying it in the sense of they talk about the OT and tell you what happened in it that didn't actually yeah. happen like, an well, attempt to recontextualize things that don't have any evidence, uh, or an attempt to use an out of work ex or an, an out of creation explanation for why things happen when it's an important plot point. Well, like if, if um, George Lucas said, you know, like the whole time Han Solo during the OT was actually 
was in charge of like a child trafficking thing that he was making loads of money from to pay off some of his bills, he'd be like, no, he wasn't. <laughs> like, and then George's like, no, he was. You're like, no, no, he wasn't. Yeah, I don't believe you. Uh, pick a new league champ for Arcane Season 2. Hi, Rags. Hello. Um, I guess Fringy can answer this as well as me. Uh, like, I presume that it's kind of baked into the question that are, like, logical inclusions. Or is it expected, or what, what you would want? Presumably, I think they just go with, what do you want? Uh, who do I want to see that I haven't seen? Um... I mean, <laughs> Warwick. Well, but you'll be getting him, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing, exactly. I'll be getting Warwick. Um, I guess I'm trying to think about, like, uh, I am not, like, that familiar with the lore in the League of, Le like, League of Legends world. So I'm trying to remember, like, which characters would be more more appropriate to slot in now compared to, like, if we went to the super fantasy kind of... Uh, characters um well if i can I'll do i mine. like graves a lot okay. <laughs> i like him well so if i can pack it in with like a reasoning as well right? i want to see victor getting real close to the victor i'm familiar with and fucking adore from the game mm -hmm. um, yep simultaneously i want him as is set in the law for league of legends to build blitzcrank and the blitzcrank to start trying to be used as a sort of a way to clean up the city or the streets or be a bodyguard, but simultaneously have a bit of a heart of gold for a robot. Kind of like an Iron Giant situation? Yes, and if we can have that interaction with Victor as he's losing his humanity, that sounds like absolute gold for writing. Yes, it does. Um, so <laughs> that's what I'm looking for, but of course I'm open to all potentials. I believe in them. I saw the behind the scenes. That team is passionate as all fuck, so... Uh, and they, they worked really hard. Didn't they, as part of the behind the scenes we were watching, didn't they like have a whole set story and they scrapped it? Um, and then did it again, I yeah. think, yeah. That takes a lot of fucking balls. Uh, yeah, I mean, that whole that whole uh, behind the scenes thing really exemplifies the amount of effort that went into it. And I want it known, uh, you could argue the same thing happened to Multiverse of Madness, but that wasn't uh, Waldron scrapping it, that was, they told him to scrap it and then make a new one. I'm talking well, about yeah, a writer that writes this story and says this isn't working and makes a new one. I'm not happy with this and let's try again. And then, of course, you can you you attach to all that the fact that they were developing a new style that they were going to be using for the whole show. You know, pioneering Dude, new that's, techniques. There's another thing to be excited about season two is just to go back to that fucking gorgeous world. The way that they uh, presented it. Yeah, because it's an incredible looking show. I wonder if it'd be cool if, like, if you imagine characters like a traveler, you know, a character that is distinctly not from uh, from uh, Piltover or Zorn, you know, just like coming in to see what's happening and get involved in the oh, affairs. Oh yeah, like, they'll, I imagine right? season two is going to be doing a bit of a phase two for Marvel where we'll get our stories continuing, yeah, but they're going to start the setting up expanding like crazy because they're popular. Well, because that's, that's really exciting is like, where else are we going to get to see this story take us? What other parts of the world? And all of these characters that are currently essentially locked off um, because they're much more baked into the fantasy aspects of that world and bringing them in. Like if Rise showed up, that'd be cool. <laughs> well, he showed up, didn't he? Briefly? In yeah. the flashback with... Uh, uh, yeah, he's he's going to be playing a role of some kind. I Rengar would be cool as fuck to, <laughs> to show up. Oh, he's the, he's the wolf guy. <laughs> Um, I know about him. Lion, more, more of a lion, yeah. Um, yeah, he's lion uh, fella. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's like the the closest to predator, and then you'd have um, Kazix as alien. Kind of wanted to bring them both in, you know. The reference. I wonder if they're gonna bring in any of the uh, like uh, the I don't know where they're from. You know, where Ash and all like the the snowy <laughs> like the where where are they from? You're more of a league expert than I am. Oh uh, yeah, the Rindemeyer um, or whatever his name is. And Mia, and yeah, I uh, uh, I used to know the name of the. They are from a frosty place. <laughs> like yeah. it's uh, <laughs> all the frosty Very characters. Cool. Volibear is probably the one I want to see out of all the frosty characters. Uh, like cool. yeah, <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, I want to see Zed if he showed up. That'd be yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. cool. There's He's a like lot of cool show up, but it would be interesting to figure out what context they would be brought in. Like, yeah, if Zed was coming in as, like, a mercenary, you know? 
Last thing. Very close eye is going to be on. Uh, is that, that's the era we're in where Ragnarok comes out and we spend the first few weeks just talking about how I'm worried it's going to be bad and that it was good. And Arcade is like, yeah. we're just going to spend the week coming toward it. And the trailer comes out. I was like, oh, I hope it's good. How's the dragon? We're like, oh, God. Season two, I hope you know, it's I'm, good. I, I'm, I'm always nervous as fuck about this sort of thing. Yeah. You know, and I'm just trying to, to be, be that extremely way. nervous. It was a time where I would just be you like, be excited. Yay, this thing is coming out. It's going to be good. Yeah. And now I'm just always, you know, even with Arcane, as I'm just, I'm so worried because I know how much we have to lose, you know, how good it is. And I, and I want it to stay that way. So I'm just, I'm nervous. I know they have wow. the capacity to do it. They've done it once, but you're always like, oh. There is that level of nervousness, but I mean, I am excited to see. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. excited. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, get the impression that they they have the story. They know what the story is going to be and that they're working towards it. And, and not that they're making it up as they go along, you know? Uh, the author is an unreliable source. The work itself is reliable and can be interpreted objectively. Unreliable source. I guess potentially, yeah. I think it, is that what they're fade, suggesting that the fact old. that it can be an unreliable source means it's an unreliable source, as in like I suppose so. Yeah, if I mean, because you can't, because uh, if you have like a narrator that exists out of universe or a title crawl or something like that, those are not generally regarded as um, unreliable. Right. Not that they necessarily can't be. Mm -hmm. I suppose if the intention is to use, for instance, a title crawl to. Nobody's accused the, the title call of, of lying, have they? But it would be funny because what if it did? You probably could use that to your advantage in some way. In Absolutely. You could say the evil empire when it's not actually an evil empire. It's just that our point of view characters and our protagonists, they've been deceived or misled into thinking that the empire is evil. And then they realize, actually, the empire is pretty good. But the title cross said it. So I think the idea is you don't want to... It's probably a good idea to have some element of absolute truth. If yes. you want to try and establish narrative information that you want a viewer to operate on, uh, that's why a lot of the times, as I, I this happened in um, this happened in Oblivion, that movie I saw um, uh, last week, uh, which isn't very good. Uh, the it starts off with Tom Cruise's character explaining the state of things. Uh, it's not a you know a title crawl given by you know floating text or a random voice. I mean, Gladriel uh, is the narrator at the beginning of Lord of the Rings, so, you know. Rhaenyra is the narrator at the beginning of House of the Dragon. I get it. This guy just doesn't know who Michael <coughs> Waldron is or about the damage he's wrought. What was that noise? <laughs> oh, it's a, called a cough. It was, oh, <laughs> see, oh, Fringy, the totally Fringy didn't know what it was either. That was yeah, weird. I it was a hiccup. <laughs> that was such a strange noise. Oh, I'm alive. That's what seems. That's good. I'm. I'm good. I'm. I'm glad. I'm glad for that. Um, that was just a funny noise. Uh, yeah. So, um, so saying this guy doesn't know whom, um, he 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 does. He just has a very different view of how it works. Like we gave the the usual examples, which are James Gunn, and then of course like one shot first, like all the standard sort of stuff. The thing that really annoys a lot of people about the concept of death of the author is they take it almost as a way of some people who want to be like fuck tolkien he doesn't have any input into what lord of the rings is i get to say what it is. you know like um a more what seems like a perverted view of what death of the author is about but in reality it's like well no lord of the rings really does speak for itself thanks to tolkien his writing is so fucking good that you don't even require him to explain a lot of what's so strong about it um, and more than likely, a lot of his explanations will be what you drew out of the content anyway. So, don't worry about it. De what I'm trying to say is, Death of the Author is not your enemy. It's a, it's a really useful tool, and it's trying to help you. Trust me, okay? You can invite him in. I will have a coffee with him. He's chill. Take that author and kill him. Kill that author! Yeah, that's another reason why I think people get upset by it. It's like... It's like, well, we, we... I think it's uh, an insult, maybe. Yeah, like, like, kill the author. Yeah, or... No, the author's important. It's like, no, no, that's not... It's it's like more of a, it's a conceptual sort of thing, chillax. Yeah, because the way I understood it was like, the reason they go with that sort of idea is that when you have an author die, they can no longer talk about the interpretations of the work. That's the, like, it's a broad implication-y type name that gives you a, a, an idea, but it's clearly been a toxic one because it gives people a lot of the wrong idea a lot of the time. 
Yeah. Like maybe it should be called something else. Out. Now everyone knows it. I'd like to highlight that EFAP has 2.4k in chat dealing with some college mastitisms, and the general sentiment is, you better come back. We're interested in these topics. Well, if they're talking about uh, Little Platoon, he came back again and again and again. All of Rings of Power. He mm. did. We wouldn't let him go. Or a Disbrew and Shad. <laughs> that, was a, that was a fun set of episodes. She-Hulk is a bad show, but them feats, boy. Wow, yeah, them, oh, them yeah. feet. Oh, yeah, absolutely, definitely. Went to a class for six hours and you're still going? Yeah, baby. How we do. Love Lil Platoon. Glad you Dumbo's had him on. He should play Soma, just like you should play DDLC. I won't disclose my IQ number requirement to play it. All right. Uh, oh, boys, there's nothing like a peace fire to put the taste of air in your breakfast. There's nothing like a peace fire to put the air of... The taste of air in your breakfast. I mean, that sounds like some kind of quote from Rings of Power, but I don't remember. That, yeah, that does sound like a Rings of Power quote. Uh, mm. You got me. Bar near me has what's called the Step Burger. Jeff explained the burger was named after She-Hulk, originally the burger-in-law, and then it immediately devolved into Eden jokes, and they ran with it. Okay. Hmm. Sure, I get it. Uh, hey, Mr. Malls, I know you're busy doing your things and stuff, but could you please update the playlists on Moolah? I think I did, actually, recently. I got them all up to date, up to, like, I think 208 or something, I, uh, but obviously not long before I'll need to update them again. I need to find a way to automate it. There is a way to do it. I just need to get on it. Uh... Yeah, but it, you know there are more. They used to be like really far out of date. They're uh, they're much more up to date now. Regarding Dota, Tolkien rewrote parts of The Hobbit to fit the Lord of the Rings books. Oh, they mean Death of the Author, right? Sorry, I was thinking of Dota the game. I was thinking of part of the video game. Yeah. Um, Tolkien rewrote parts of The Hobbit to fit the Lord of the Rings books. Which version of The Hobbit is canon in this scenario? Given our view that Han shot first because of the original cut. That's a really great question. Uh, this is a question I had to answer when I was dealing with uh, Dark Souls 2, funnily enough. Kind of. It sounds like it wouldn't apply, but it totally does. What what game should I review? Dark Souls 2 or Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin? Like, well... Uh, what is there significant differences? It's like, yes. So, if I claim there are bugs or bad AI or certain control sets... And, there is, and that exists in one but not the other, what am I supposed to do? And I decided that I would go with whatever the author said is the definitive, complete version sort of thing, and I would judge that one. Not to say you can't review DS2, but that I will be reviewing Scott of the First Sin. Now, why? Well, because I want to be good faith and go with the author's sort of final version. But that's not, I think, the be-all and end-all argument that you can make, for example... If you were to review the OT in their final version from George Lucas, you're dealing with so much extra bullshit that no one likes. Like, should you go with that one? Because in that one, Han shoots first, you get all that CGI weird shit on the screen uh, in several moments of it, so or would you go with the despecialized versions, which aren't even necessarily the original versions? Um, you could probably tackle them at once, and then measure, and when you get to the difference portion, say, well, in this version, this, and in exactly, this version, this. Could. Um, so that's that's an option as well. But of course, this depends on how much they branch off from one another. Yeah, and um, we encounter serious problems, though, when you want to judge the sequels and they are operating on the information of the changed, like a particular version of the pre previous. And there's only one version of the sequel or something like that. Uh, you know, so they almost canonize one of the versions in a sense. Uh, it, it can get difficult, but um, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, as long as you are telling people which version you are talking about, then you can't be assailed for being inaccurate or anything. Um, however, if you're talking about which we should take as canon, that's the rule we've always said. It's, it's really up to the person who holds the rights, I suppose, at the time. Though, yep. <laughs> it's funny I say that, because I think, what is George's up-to-date? Because I've seen George wear the shirt that says Hard Shot First. I don't even know what what does George want to be. I mean, it's too late now because 
I mean, George, I mean, it's it's interesting to know that I mean, if, as if you needed any more, you know, reason to think Death of the Author is great. The fact that you can have someone changing their mind back and forth, which creates some level of legitimate instability in what the oh, yeah. story is supposed to actually be. I mean, there you go. Well, and that there's two versions of the film, and so which one are you supposed to take as canon? It's like, well, we're in a situation where whichever one is canon doesn't necessarily affect the events of the future of the movies. So you can't even necessarily, it's you know, it's it's. I guess down to you, but I'm assuming all three of us agree Han sh did shoot first. He was the only one who shot. shot <laughs> like, yeah. He um, shot first and last. It, yes. was, uh, <laughs> it was awesome, and I'm afraid, like, I hate to do it, but it's just like, I'm afraid, George, I think you misunderstood what you'd created in that moment, which was a character who was so adept and on the ball about the situation, he knew he was about to die if he didn't shoot him first. Which, you know, Greedo makes that clear. He's like, I'm gonna enjoy exactly. killing you or something like that. It was a badass moment, and it made him seem incredibly competent. We 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 like that sort of thing. Good. And then uh, <laughs> for some reason, Greedo just like missed. He well, just, uh, it's not for some reason. It's the, I well, put a, I put the clip at the beginning. He of... moved his neck. It's weird. It's really Have weird. Have you seen that clip um, in a while, Fringy? If not, you should legitimately see it. It's bizarre. This I'm pretty um, sure there's footage of him uh, editing it and making those choices and and talking about <laughs> how, how difficult it is to fix the seed, quote unquote. Um, yeah, at the beginning, I think it's of TFA Part 2, there's a clip of George saying, uh, you know, like, I think he's asked, like, what do you think of, like, the fan response to the sequels or whatever, and he was like, you gotta be careful with whatever you do, because I changed a couple of frames, and the whole world, like, went wild, uh, in reference to the hard shot fish shit. It's like, well, yeah, you completely changed the scene. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks weird! Couple it does look really weird. Looks bizarre. <laughs> He, he wants to convince you that, that Harrison Ford, like, dodged the shot. <laughs> With his neck. Uh, yeah, and it, like, breaks his neck <laughs> to do it. It just doesn't... That's, a, that's another reason like, why it's so hard to take as canon, because it's like, what the fuck was that? Like, <laughs> what, what, what just happened? <laughs> Is he okay? Does it would have made more sense to just have Greedo miss in general, right? Well... <laughs> or he starts to... Or he lifts his gun up, but he doesn't have the chance to fire, or something yeah, like that. that's another way to do it. Well, but he's whole... already pointing it at him. It doesn't matter. Like, you know? Well, it's just, fine. What I'm suggesting is just make him miss. Don't make it so the HUD <laughs> expertly dodges. <laughs> like, that just looks cringe. Don't do it. He breaks his own neck to avoid getting shot. Yeah. It's a, it's a good strat. A lot of people... <laughs> that was a very violent day in the cantina. Oh, yeah. Yeah, someone well, got killed. Got someone got their arm off. lopped off. There was blood and everything, even though it should have cauterized it. Yeah, man. <laughs> I hadn't figured it out yet, though. I'm I'm curious about that because I've always said that myself. But if you do like a, a move like that with something that's very hot but pretty quick, I wonder what kind of results you can well, get. We've seen oh, do you mean in like reality or because in Star yeah, like Wars, how much cauterizes the wound? Oh, of course it does. But that's that's I assume because uh, a new hope when they when you when you see that blood, you're like, oh shit, because uh, in Star Wars, it, it's, it's always crazy. felt like they avoid blood to avoid harsher ratings. Ah, uh, well, considering people getting their heads locked off and their arms chopped off and everything, yeah. Isn't that kind of silly, though? You well, can see somebody get their arms chopped off, but as long as there's no blood, some it's people, cool. they'll point out, like, you can see Dooku's head rolling across the floor if you zoom into, like, the scene where they go to a wide shot. You can see, um, in the silhouette, Django Fett's head falling out of the helmet as it yeah, falls down. It's right. like... Yeah. You know, it's there, it's just hard to spot sometimes, but uh, yeah, they try to hide a lot. I'll, I'll give you an example that we're all familiar with. Uh, for those who didn't know, in the Fellowship of the Ring, when Aragorn is fighting Lurtz, there's a reason that when he gets his arm lopped off and his head taken off, there's not blood spurting, and it's to keep that PG-13 rating. That's specifically why they had it as quote-unquote clean as they did. Even though that fight is dirty as hell, and I love it. Yeah. That's that's what we call that's a fight right there. Cuz uh yeah, there's I'm pretty sure it might be in the extended, but I I know it exists in uh, Moria. I think either Aragorn or Boromir chops a uh, goblin's head off and like a little fountain of blood comes out really quick. If it's Yeah, if it's quick, if it's out of the way, if it's in the darkness and it's not and it's uh, like particularly black blood, I think. Yeah, uh, if it's not this is why by the fun fact in the I think it was Star Trek Two or Star Trek One, and one of the Star Trek, it's either Star Trek the Motion Picture or one of the Star Trek movies, the original Star Trek movies. Um, there's a scene where you have 
Uh, it's a zero gravity scene where a bunch of Cleons have been killed and there's blood floating around in the zero, you know, in the lack of gravity. And they specifically give them a different color blood so that it's not as rough, you yeah. know, looking. Um, it's why you can, it's, it's why when it comes to, um, you know, like, like bugs and a lot of beasts and monsters and stuff, you can just chop them up as much as you want. Or robots. I mean, that was probably a big thing. With, well, Avengers uh, 1, Avengers Wars. 2, Avengers 3, the main enemies are armies of robots, aliens with purple or whatever blood going on. That's just easier to do. it. Oh, yeah. They love it when you have robots to kill because you can be as violent uh, yeah. as you want. Which is going to cost them one day when the robots come back and they rise up. And they're like, what was this? What was all this media where you killing us? What's this about? And then humans will be like, uh oh. Listen, okay, it's fiction. All right, we killed each other too. Fine. If an author dies, but no one is around to see it, does the dust settle? That's some great philosophical lumbos right there. Something to think about. Uh, Muller, I don't mean to sound creepy, but your voice is great. Uh, it's not that creepy. Not that creepy, no. It's, uh, thank it's not you, particularly creepy, yeah. Um, but you do have competition with Platoon. Why? Well, I mean, it's, considering he's a long boy as well, it's good that he has a, a voice that's nice to listen to, right? That's an important one. I think it was one of your first pieces of advice for being a YouTuber is like, gotta get that audio in a good place, all right? That trumps everything. Uh, yeah, get a decent microphone and... Dear God, you can work on your voice. For example, you're not you're not just slave to the voice you think you have. You can change it. And I'm not picking on anyone at all. All right, this doesn't apply to literally anybody. But let's say you had the best editing ever. It's on par with literally like the most professional. Like it's like it was made by someone with hundreds of millions of dollars. And then your voice is like, "Hello, everyone. Today we're going to be <laughs> talking." It's like, "Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> like, oh no." <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, well, guess... if you have someone with a really good voice and they only have the poster on screen, you're going to be better off. Probably. probably. Yeah, probably. Everybody will listen to your video. Not everybody will watch your video. Yep. And there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a more personal aspect of listening to someone. Their sound is going into your ears. It's inside of you in a way. Whereas with eyes, you perceive it from a distance. You know, it, it's it's not as personal in that kind of nature. Uh, the same thing applies to like smelling and touching. There's this element that it becomes, you know, a part of you or inside of you, or that you have to, you know, be there with it. So if you have a really really nasty voice, then it might be just more. They might turn people off <laughs> in a lot more of a personal way. Um. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Also, hi Rags, Fringy, your voices Hello. are good too. Ah, oh, thanks. Oh, thank you. Uh, after hearing how much you guys hate Interstellar, what do you guys take on Tenet? I think it's much better than Interstellar. Also, neat time travel. Oh, I don't know anything that. about <laughs> Tenet. I have not seen it. <laughs> and also, when it comes to time travel, you just get it's me just, nervous. Yeah, like, it's a Nolan movie, so the characters are going to be thin as hell. The plot is going to be really fucking strange, if not completely broken. And we're throwing in time travel. And I heard that this one has like the worst audio issues out of all of his movies, which is so That's weird that I've he heard. has that problem. Like, I don't know how it is that fucking Christopher Nolan of all directors has like a notorious issue with mixing audio. It's like, how is this happening? <laughs> it reminds me of um, Miguel Sapotnik from the Game of Thrones House of Dragon stuff. He's notorious at this point for not being able to film dark scenes. Like, what the hell? How it. Like, you're one of the most revered directors from all of the episodes of Game of Thrones, but you can't figure out Dark? And then you say that to him, and he's like, it's your TV that's fucked. Not me. <laughs> we have that issue with the audio mixing in, um... Well, what, it, it happens in horror movies. I think it was... I, I forget which ones, but that happens in horror movies a lot, where you have to turn up people's dialogue so that you could hear them, so now everything else and is going to be loud, down. so when they have those, those those effects and stuff, you know, happen, it's like, ah, it's so loud, stop, ow, it's uncomfortable. We had that with the Resident Evil movies, I think, didn't we? Yeah, that's it, that's we the, all had yeah, to keep the Resident turning Evil it up movies. and down based on if people were talking or if there were explosions, because mixing was horrible. Or that the mixing was set for a cinema environment or something, I don't know, but it wasn't working for all of us. Um... EFAP Cyberpunk Edgerunners, please, on the same level as Arcane, I would argue. Perhaps not your cup of tea given it's anime, but it's worth it. Um, well, like I said, I'm, uh, well, I'm pretty sure I've said it, I'm six episodes in. It ain't as good as Arcane, alright? <laughs> Calm down. Um, I do like it, though. 
uh, I think I've missed, I've missed I've missed the window yeah. for that now. Uh, that, Arcane that. was almost missed. Like that's how it went. But enough people Oof. recommended it, and I think free wasn't it just like one night. I was just like, should we check it out? You're like, yeah, okay. And then we were like, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. And it turned yeah. out to be uh, one of the best things ever. I fucking love that show. Great. Um. Um, the Harfoots would make for a great horror movie. Oh, well, sorry, in case I didn't, that didn't feel like it was answered, all I'll say is just that uh, there could be coverage for Cyberpunk Edge Runners one day, but, like, I've not seen it, and good god, I can't add anything else to my schedule right now. And so it'd be like, maybe when Season 2 rolls around, this is my attitude for Invincible as well, by the way, if Season 2 comes out and everyone's like, whoa, it's even better than 1, I might be like, alright, maybe, maybe then I'll, I'll check it out if I've got, you know, two seasons, same for Cyberpunk or whatever, but... You know, I can't cover everything. Not everybody can. I saw it was uh, it was quite a sad post, and I don't mean that in terms of like uh, I just meant I felt bad for the person. They posted on a subreddit about how they were really upset that Andor isn't getting any coverage, and they literally like labeled all of the people within our spheres and their coverage of it, and they listed like their actual coverage down to episodes and thoughts, and they were like everyone's given up. the The closest they got was Shad. I think he got to episode five, but then he stopped, and it's like. We're just like, I just want to see someone talk about it. I was like, that sucks, honestly, <laughs> that Andor yeah, is in that position. Just... And, you know, you could be like, well, what are you guys doing? It's like, well, that's the thing. We are stacked with things to talk about. I really want to talk about House of the Dragon. We, we managed to pull that off. And it's like, I got to talk about Ragnarok. That's got to happen. Mm -hmm. Then Callista Protocol is right around the corner. So is Avatar 2. But then we've also got this, this literally this episode and another EFAB episode that's going to be offline that we're doing. Like, this is insane. Uh, so adding like you know why I've done that just to have to say like why I've done Cyberpunk Edge Runners or whatever just like Jesus Christ so <laughs> it's too much stuff not enough time but yeah I just feel really bad because Andor seems to, it, what usually happens is that everybody in our spheres we all have think of like a Venn diagram right all of media and then we have big circles for what all of us cover and there's some overlap there's some not um, but Andor's managed to evade like all of the circles. He's just sitting on his own. And it's just like nobody's covering me. It's like, oh. Which is real awkward when it seems to be the best. Well, I mean, based on those first three episodes, it was leagues better than the rest of the Star Wars shows and films under Disney. Yeah. And that uh, seems to be the general sentiment. It's like, yeah. And yet, it didn't really, hasn't really been super prominent in our media discussion. And. Yeah, that's just that's, it. Just makes me feel sad. There was a there was a quote I was reading from the Tony Gilroy about like he was like responding to the idea that the show is boring, um, mm -hmm. and he was explaining that um, there's just so many things they had to get in place to make like latter parts of the show you know hit the way that they do, and he even said that um, you're encouraged these days to make content in the same way that you go to like I can't remember what, what was his analogy right? Was something like you go to um. Um, I forget exactly what it was. It was something along the lines of it was like disposable. Yeah, but the point he was making, I can't remember exactly what he said, but the point he was making was that you can you can have like a, an experience that's really bombastic but doesn't stick with you, or you can have one that's a really slow burn, builds up, and then sticks with you forever, and that's the one he's trying to make. Yeah, which is, unfortunately, it seems like it doesn't get rewarded in a climate where it's everybody wants to talk about the crazy epic big explosive thing that happened in that episode that probably doesn't make a lot of sense and tweet about it or like one or two lines of dialogue that is made for like twitter and then you never think about it or watch it again yeah um and that's but i guess that's the thing right that's the difference between the art that's remembered and art that's forgotten because i don't know man everybody was talking about like moon knight but if you were to ask anybody to tell you anything about one scene i think they would really struggle including the people who said it was great of which there aren't many of those people left. And it's worth mentioning those same people turned on it real fast. Yeah, everybody turns... It's it, The cycle is incredible. It's reduced over the course of this year, but it used to be that it was about two months before people turned on a Marvel project. Uh, and then by the time we got to, like, She-Hulk and, and, uh, and Thor Love and Thunder, it was like, no, it's happening, like, straight away. Um, and I guess the question is, like, if that's going to... I feel like nobody's really... Black Panther is still, like, number one, but I, I don't feel like anybody's talking about it much. I haven't like heard basically one, anything about it. It feels like it's already sort of... There's not much to be said about it. And if that's well, happening... Yeah, what in that now, movie's going to stick with you? Well, that's the thing. If that's happening now, I get the impression that you give it a little bit of time and people go, actually, you know, it wasn't that great. Um, like, it didn't really... You know, it wasn't, it wasn't, that, it wasn't that compelling. Um, in terms of the story that it was telling. It's like, oof, that's not... And I guess it's just, why would anything change in terms of Phase 5? Like, 
I feel like Ant Man's going to be a film that people will. Oh man! As I'm sitting here thinking about what I would predict for that, I get the impression that people would be like, you know what? It was actually surprisingly okay, and then give it a couple of months, and that's like, I actually was shit. That's the impression I get with that one. <laughs> um, if you could go back and save a franchise from ruin, which would it be? Also, high ranks. Hello. Uh, oh, probably Marvel because it's the greatest. Like it's the 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 number of stories is uh the largest. Yeah, there's definitely that uh, element. Ooh, that's, like it's tough to you yeah. get four good shows and movies per year, um, as opposed yeah, to any we... other. Yeah, I, I think I think it's almost in a sense of just a moral duty to choose Marvel in the if we guarantee gold being spun from them, we get a shit ton of stories and it spans basically all genres. So that seems to be the choice we should probably go with for the sake of yeah. you know, entertaining the world with great storytelling. Personal investment that might be different. Like yeah, I'm not sure. uh, I I tend to go like my mind drifts toward Game of Thrones. I'm like, God, what did you do? Why did you do that? Uh but I'm kind that, of is kind of the yeah, Star Wars is definitely of, up there in terms yeah. of like, man, what oh boy, what did they do to you? <laughs> um, it's funny because it's like, what about Terminator, Alien, and Predator? And I'm like, oh yeah, I guess yeah, they've been ruined for so long, but yeah. yes, you know, for so long, true. And then I would almost feel like a moral <laughs> obligation to try and rescue Doctor Who because it's it's one of the oldest ones and it's been treated so mm -hmm. horribly. It's like a little unfair. So you know, yeah, there's there's reason behind a lot of the different choices, but I might just go for Marvel just because we get. Sort of the best returns, I think. Uh, what about you, Ranks? Anything? I'm, I think I'm with Fringy on the Marvel thing. It's hard to argue against the sheer amount of content and the breadth of the... Uh, just the, how, how much it encompasses. It is a wide, wide umbrella of different stories and characters. And again, when you get in, you're getting three or so movies a year, plus all of the shows... Um... And, plus, and, and the amount of precedent that it sets to be of high quality and people linking the rewards in terms of, you know, the money and the corporate element, you know, to the quality of the stuff itself. I think that has, um, I think that can pay dividends down the road for other people. Why do they have grass on their heads? Uh, we're talking about the offers. Um, to, I think for stealth reasons, right? When we first meet them, they're trying to... <laughs> Something like okay. that, yeah. I think that's what they want us to think. Almost but they always whatever. have like acorns and stuff in their ears. It's just, like I get it; they're very close to nature. But you didn't. So are the elves, and they don't look like nasty gremlins. So who knows? Um, I would have, I would have done it differently to portray that kind of lifestyle. Like you could, you could wash your face. You know, you could. Good. But you choose. Hello, rags. Hello. What is your opinion on bi representation in media, i.e., bi people being flamboyant and attention seeking? I'm bi and I hate that we get stereotyped. Hut cream. I didn't know that that was a stereotype of bisexual people, that we are flamboyant and attention seeking. Um, I'll be honest with you, I thought they were going to go a different direction with this and say it's kind of annoying you never see bi people, you only ever see gay or straight. That's typically. also what I thought this comment was leading to. Honestly, I just I just don't really care at all. Honestly, I, it's legitimately never something that I think about. Um, so much so that I don't really even know how to answer your question because I just don't think about it. It's just it's, I just um, don't think about character sexuality. I don't I, need I think, to have a character who's my sexuality for me to think that they're you know excellently written. Yeah, I think the three of us are cut from that same cloth, so to speak. Of like, if a Welsh person pops up and people are like, oh, this Welsh accent's cool, and I like this Welsh character, I might be like. Eh, kind of neat. But uh, if if I never saw a Welsh character at anything, I'd probably be like, I mean, I just want the characters to be good, you know. If they show Especially up, especially nowadays when so many characters are written poorly, I almost have yeah. the opposite. Like, don't represent me. I th th you're gonna fuck. <laughs> you're gonna fuck it up. Yeah, like I can, It's just never been something that I I'm desperate to see, and I don't think like like for a lot of the different portions of what you could call our identity, I I really don't need it. Any of it. Uh. I guess represented to feel good about my storytelling. Some of my favorite characters aren't even remotely the same creatures as me, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It's not something I'm concerned with. That's yeah, kind of if the... I if I can appreciate an alien from another planet or something like that, then I'm I'm sure it. I just I I rank my sexuality so low in terms of you know if who I am that it just doesn't even occur to me to really think about it. But of course, if anything, like, it sends up warning signs these days that they mention that sort of stuff because you know they're trying to often put that in front of apparently good writing. 
if um if however there were let's say across all my favorite me pieces of media there's always this one welsh character who's just always an idiot and that's what everyone assumes is the case sort of thing i'd probably be like this is a bit weird i don't know why that's happened yeah i wouldn't appreciate that yeah if um because i of course i live in the south and the you know america uh not south america but uh the opposite the south of the united states uh and you know, you know, there's there's the stereotypes, but you take the good with the bad, and it's just, but ever pretty much everyone, you know, it's just for funsies and whatnot, and you just can't let that bug you. you yeah, it even goes. Everyone has their stereotypes. Take the good with the bad. You always, you do get the uh, the hillbilly types, but you also get plenty yeah, of yeah. like smart characters from southern parts of America. So. Uh, and in the same vein, you get like all the stereotypes for all countries, really. Like, yeah, um, I mean, if everyone's got it. It's ever. It's going to be everyone's turn eventually, or at least ideally. You know, it, it, if everyone could be stereotyped and we can all just have fun and laugh at each other and not be super yeah, serious even, about this and think some of us are beyond that sort of thing, even to the point where you a better world. enjoy the stereotype. Like, because like Kano's almost a little like uh, an exaggerated Australian, um, but uh yeah, but like he's really he's fun. fun. Yeah, so it doesn't really well, matter. Like, uh, I mean, of course, the Australian one. Do you like the Simpsons Australian episode? Yeah. It's like, fuck yeah, I love that episode. It's great. It's like, do you think it's an authentic representation of Australia? It's like, it's funny, dude. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. that's it. It's funny. Uh, you, The Harfords would make for a great horror movie. Thank you, Amazon. It's everything <laughs> Tolkien fans wanted. Yeah. I'm all standing over watching well, with cold dead eyes as the one so, I was actually that. getting a similar visual in my head of like you encounter them as just some intrepid explorer. You don't really know what you're dealing with. And you know, that they're really friendly. Then nighttime hits and you just hear maybe a twig break and you look outside your tent and there's just all these eyes in the darkness reflecting light and then they all start <laughs> moving away and you're like, fuck, what the yeah. You know, kinda like uh, wasn't that that was kind of what kind of a payoff they went for in um Midnight Mass. Remember the first episode? It was uh, yeah. it was all like, was it rats or, or birds or something? But then one of them was, it was a guy. It was clearly a guy that moves away. That that was a really cool, scary payoff sort of thing. I look forward to his next thing. End it well. That's all I gotta say, okay? End it well. Hey everyone on the EFAB, how is it going? Pretty good. It's going Things are right. great. Things are going well. Trying to, trying to keep on top of everything, that's all. It's a big struggle. Also, Rags, I saw you on DRG the other day in a random lobby, but you left before I said hello. So here's some shekels. Oh, oh thanks much. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like Deep Rock Galactic. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. I haven't played in a while. I need to hop into that. Please have a little platoon on for all remaining Rings of Power EFAPs. It's really nice having someone who knows the source to let you know how good it could have been. Well, wish granted. Yeah, that's that's the plan. He will be around for all that. Oh well, I meant it was granted in terms of season one, but yeah. oh yeah, and to come as well. And to come, to come. Put the bring out your dead scene from Monty Python next to this. Oh, like the next to the Harfords. That is that something we probably do. I can't believe it. Bring out your dead. And I, ironically, they they put all the bodies onto a cart. <laughs> The instrument of their demise. Assuming, of course, they didn't die from horrific bee stings or something like that. God, what idiot wrote it so that they, the one they laugh at is the guy who died to bees. Like, ah. Oh. I can't imagine that kind of death. Like, fuck me. That must be awful. To die uh -huh. from bee stings? And they'd be like twice the size to a harfoot, so... So you're just getting stung and being paralyzed. Maybe you probably maybe you choke friggin... because your throat swells up and it blocks your air passage. There or you be... just die from the venom of all the stings. There might be like scary fantasy bees that are twice the size anyway. So it could just be like these horrifying huge bees to these poor little half -foot. I say poor little half -foots. They all seem to be psychopathic, so. Okay. Kinda, yeah. Um Wings quote of the day, man. I I don't want to play this anymore, man. I vomited twice in the last hour. <laughs> what? What was what was he playing? <laughs> he vomited twice from playing a particular game. Damn, that's not good. Oh. Uh, the true meaning of member berries. Hey, member grandma. Mm, I member. Love you all. Can't wait for my plushies to come in. I have so many plans for my goo. 
true meaning of member berries is member grandma. Member grandma? I'll be. Can't see the word grandma know. without thinking about ruination. Bitten doggo. Yeah, it would. I, I'm not sure what that refers to. But, but yes, the plushies are on the way. It's true. Yeah, Join. some people are getting them. I'll try spinning my weapon. That's a good trick. Oh, God. Oh, God. My face is being eaten. Wait a minute. What is what is that a reference to? What happened? Spinning a weapon Probably is referencing... But I don't know. Spinning... Um, maybe like a ballerina, like a, one of those Barbie movies. She's, she's a dancer in a lot of those, and so she spins around. I just, I'm trying to think of what happened in Rings of Power to, to make... I ain't got, I ain't got nothing. Spinning. I'll try spinning. That's a neat trick. I don't actually know what that refers to. There's probably someone did a spin of some kind at some point in. I'm only. You know what my brain's going to is that stupid spin he does in Boba Fett. That guy, remember? Oh yeah, the guy when he shoots. Yeah. He goes to shoot his gun. But he has to do a 360 first. <laughs> this is great. So good. I think that every. I wish a lot of times. I wish every movie reviewer just at least once went out to a range and shot a handgun so that they could appreciate how insanely difficult it is to shoot a pistol. So you have these you have these characters shooting the laser gun enemies rags, at long different. distances without even without even like aiming down the sights and they the just blaster. hit all the time and like blast is a different. You've never shot a Definitely. blaster. Correct. I've not shot a blaster. Yeah, there you go. I like how the bug bad elf matches the supposedly racist description Tolkien gave for the orcs. The oh big bad elf. Big bad elf? Is he talking about um what's his name? Uh the totally not Sauron guy. Well the actually not Adar? Sauron guy. Adar, that's it, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with any of that. I guess I'm we'll find out in season two, I don't know. Warhammer fantasy character of the day is Greasus Goldtooth, over tyrant of the ogres. He owns the Ivory Road and believes he is too rich to walk. Well, someone's full of himself. Yeah, what about everyone's allowed you can walk. You're not too too rich to walk. Is that ugh terrible? Bad influence. That's... You have my sword and my bow and my twig. Representing the Harfoots or? <laughs> yes, sir. All right. I think for a great payoff. I rags. Twig is better than nothing, I guess. Plus, if someone breaks your twig, now you have two twigs. So really, twig always wins. He also said hi, but Oh, hello. Hi, Mola. Hello. Hi, Fringy. Hey. Hi, little platoon. He'd say hello. Fringy, what are your thoughts on Splatoon 3 so far? Uh, I like it, but I haven't played it for a while at this stage, so... Yeah, I yeah. actually played a decent amount of it, but I stopped about a month back, I want to say. Maybe more, or maybe less, I can't remember. Yeah, it's probably time. a month or so, too. But, um, yeah, it's, it's neat. Splatoon's got a good, uh, you know, gameplay loop, I guess. Then, yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Um, add skill points to WIS, not INT. The wisdom, not intelligence, I guess. Is wisdom a stat to upgrade in things typically? Uh, uh yeah, and um, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. There is a. I mean, it's a primary stat in like Dungeons and Dragons. Wisdom is a stat. Interesting. What? Uh, how do How do they separate in, wisdom and intelligence? Um, depending on the class, certain skills and abilities will scale better or worse based off of wisdom and intelligence. And you could potentially have some of your skill checks. Not just abilities, but your skill checks could be based off of either wisdom or intelligence. Um, certain different kinds of magic might use wisdom to determine their efficiency, as opposed to maybe spells might use intelligence, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, I haven't played it in a while, but that, that's sort of, it's sort of what it is. So depending on the skill, like if you were using like acrobatics, right, that would use, that's like a skill that's determined by your dexterity attribute, because, you know, for pretty obvious reasons. And so some things might be intelligent, some things might be wisdom. Fair enough. Valinor has to pay for the wall. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna be huge. Um, we had a good thing going with the good old Morgoth siding elf-hating men, but you just had to blow it up. You and your pride and your precious ego. <laughs> that is a <laughs> mic reference. 
Yep. I love that, though. We had a good thing going with good old Morgoth signing elf hating men. <laughs> <laughs> we had child killing Frigg. <laughs> that meme was priceless to me when watching Breaking Bad. I commend y'all for reviewing this awful show for us. Thank you for your service. No problemo. You're welcome. It was um, it was quite a ride. It was, I mean, I'm glad I saw it in a way, you know, like a lot of bad, like I'm glad I saw the Snyder Cut, but it might not have been, I mean, it was, it, it was just that classic kind of bad. The, the, you could point the fingers at all the things that don't make sense and why they're shit and stuff, but. We'll say though. At least, I don't know if it's better for it to be dense or not, because I almost had more more engagement and fun reviewing the later episodes of Rings of Power than the earlier ones, because, like... I would absolutely agree with that. It was de definitely more engaging. And it's funny, because that, that, that reflects... That show started boring, but it didn't stay boring. That reflects what you were just mentioning with Snyder Cut, right? Like, so much of Snyder Cut was just empty calories. Like, extended yeah. moments of just nothing. And it's like, ugh. And that's what, that was Wakanda Forever. There were big sequences of Wakanda Forever where I'm just like, Jesus Christ, I don't want to watch this. There's just nothing nothing really going on. You feel like so much of this time is being wasted. Yeah, all of the second, if you could call it the second act, it's very strange in terms of structure, but... Whatevs. Um, I will now begin writing I, a story. Oh, what do you, what do you... I would say, uh, I saw a tweet. The It was either like this morning or yesterday where someone had... I mentioned the guy who played Namor. Um, they had to, uh, they had to CGI his bulge to be smaller. Yes, because he had a a a an unfriendly enough package, I suppose, in that yep, outfit. Um, and apparently, they've done that before. They have to CG down a lot of a lot of bulges. Surely, they can just give him some some tight undies under there. Oh, but, I, I don't know. Not. I guess I guess you know that would be uncomfortable and. Mm -hmm. You know, it cause health I mean, issues. I, can't be having that. Yeah, can't be doing that. Sometimes, I mean, or just give him a slightly different. Put like a something over it, or have him have like one of those sort of loincloth things that comes down in front of it, so that it doesn't show. Or just don't have something so tight, skin tight to him. I don't know. No CG. This is why I could never play Namor. They'd have to. They have to CGI down my ginormous package. I am the Tempest that is approaching Galadriel 2022. That was a cringe line. That's why I reference it, because it sticks with me. You know? There is a Tempest in me, and you're like, ugh, ew. ew. Why are you guys so inconsiderate to start the stream when I'm still asleep? Keep it a good work. I'll watch it on Mula. All right. Well, good. I will now begin writing a story where a crazy elf lady goes to an island and begins threatening to kill everyone. Yeah. And then takes their jobs. Mm -hmm. She takes all of them, just. Yeah, and she's better at all of them than everyone else is. She's the best when it she when it comes to jobs. She's she's the best job haver and doer. Y'all go too fast. Still back on EFAP one hundred. Yet still, I'm coming for you, Longman. I'll find you, and then I'll be caught up. Wait, I think I read that one already. Unless they said it again. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. I recognize this. We did these ones. These ones. I might have actually copy and pasted our Super Chats to do twice without realizing it. Besides Danathor, LB could be a regular. Ringy Plush, showing it the wonders of the sink in the same room. I remember reading that. I remember those. You put it in Nature's Wallet. Yeah, I remember that. Talking Magic is a mind you speak to for favor. <laughs> yeah. Just <a> wallet. <laughs> um, I know you're doing things stuff. Could you please update the playlist? Yep. Uh, so that's. Okay, yeah, that, that knocks yeah, out quite a few that I was expecting to do, but uh, all right, cool. Um, let me just find. I mean, if I think, unless I fuck something up, that means that we've done everything other than the very EFAPs. You know, you know, the first half of this EFAP was live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The we ones, were of course we were there. Yeah, the ones that came in during that is all we have left to do now for this. Most excellent. So I'll just get them set. It begins with high rags. Hello to you. Happy holidays, massives. Oh, thanks. You too. I hope you had a great... God, what's the timeline? Has Halloween happened yet? I think they're talking about Halloween, but fuck it. Now we're talking about Christmas. Yeah. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. And if this comes out, then have a great Christmas 2023. Da, da, 
Da, da, jingly sounds. Jingle all the way. Do you have a favorite Christmas song? Oh, I think I've said this before. Like Christmas songs, a lot of them, I'm like, ah, oh, I've heard that a bazillion times, but it'll always be around Christmas, and so they all have that association. Hmm. Well, I just really any any sort of Christmas song. So it could be it could be Silent Night. It could be Last Christmas by Wham. It could be you know any kind of you know any kind of Christmas. I don't song. think I, none of them like strike me as a song that I'd be like, oh man, do I love that one? They're all just songs where I'm like, that's fine. I think that's fair, especially when you hear them so much. But you only hear them at a certain time of year, so that does a whole bunch to to that make it tone. nice in a way. Yeah, yeah. If I heard them all through the year, I would just I'd I'd lose my fucking mind. But because I only hear them around December, I uh, I I really don't mind that they just have that appeal. They're they're just iconic, and you like them. Yeah. Bring you would like Running Shrines Kirby sixty four videos. Muller and Rags might like it too. Running Kirby Shrines? Running so, Shrines video Kirby about videos. Kirby. Running I don't Shrines know a whole lot about Kirby, Kirby but yeah, maybe. Maybe that'd be interesting. Okay. Thoughts on these two movies? A Christmas Story and the Jim Carrey A Christmas Carol from 2009. My favorite Christmas movies. I have not seen the latter, but I enjoy the former quite a bit. I mean, A Christmas Story is a fucking classic. It really is. Um, really Christmassy. It's very Christmassy, and the fact that it's done so well from the point of view of a child is, you know, maybe not so much, or not as much for maybe our generation, but particularly, you know, if, if you're a little bit older, um, I, I hear that hits really, really well to, you know, it's very relatable for people who grew up in that time period as a kid. But, uh, yeah. it, I mean, it's got so much of, of that classic Christmas stuff, you know, that whether it's the kids saying, oh, fudge... <laughs> or whether you know the the leg lamp, the 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 bunny suit. It's this just it's so good. And of uh, course, we're all fans of Jingle All the Way, of course, but always worth an uh, honorable mention. Oi, Morley, brave of you to say Atreus is just an inferior Elizabeth Comstock on your own God of War streams. I I I, <laughs> I had serious issues with Elizabeth Comstock from playing. Infinity Wars, so that's, Jesus Christ, infinite. Um, <laughs> so I doubt I would have said that, but if I did, I was wrong. Because uh, obviously the reality is that like uh, Atreus fits in with the narrative so much better. Elizabeth breaks it like seriously several times. Like her mechanics just fuck with the entire plot line. I, I can just summon Absolutely. in some like some some guns for you. Yeah, let me open I a tier to a different reality it. so I can grab you a machine gun. Like, what? And let's not just, you know, maybe try but to let's escape. just leave. Yeah. Except, oh, God, course, like, pain. Oh, rules, look, a key! Her, her powers and how they work, like, in general. Just, and, yeah. Uh, different universes. I'm telling you, everybody, a Matthew Matosis, it's an oldie but goldie when he's uh, yeah. going over Bioshock Infinite. That game sucks. The little, uh, the little timeline chart so that you yeah, can see he does. how it all he, is. He he takes a lot of time and effort to explain to you that that game's story and mechanics do not make sense. The people who Bioshock wrote that were sniffing their own like, parts. Well, that that game survived because it was part of a particular era where games journalists seemed like especially insecure about their occupation, and so like they needed to stand for like those types of video games. It would stand like, that fucking out. game. Well, remember when that game came out and everybody was saying, oh, Elizabeth is like the perfect character, ter yep. character for, for, for escort missions. She's so yeah. wonderful. You never have to... I remember comparisons to Ashley. Like, well, it's just, they fixed ex escort missions by just not, not having, having them. them. Yeah. <laughs> She's um, not a part of the gameplay, meaningfully. Yeah, I've said it before, but the game broke when I first watched it when they needed to get uh, for, for the Vox Populi or whatever to, to be able to get out of Columbia, they needed to get them ships and then they were like so all we need to do is go to a reality where ships are available and then grab them or guns or whatever and then bring them back and it's like what why don't you just leave <gasps> just leave wrong with you like that is <laughs> the most obs you have the power to do I that and you're like yeah let's go get the thing they need you're like oh wasn't one of the uh the rules as well that if you died in another universe you like went insane Oh god, I don't even Yeah, know. yeah, what? yeah, what? exactly. What? Yeah. Like what in the <laughs> like, 
which means that everyone would be it. Everyone would be. Yeah, so it's the same thing with multiverse of madness. You can't don't do infinite multiverses because you're not ready to because that's you're not ready to commit to that, and you won't. No one ever does. Isn't it you? You read like a some kind of entry from Fink, and he says that the way he came up with Handyman was that a portal opened, and he happened to watch Doctor Su Chung making a Big Daddy. And he was like, ooh, that's a good idea. Or some shit. Like, I remember reading it and being like, no fucking way. Are you kidding me? That like, didn't happen. So cringy. <laughs> like, yeah, and then uh, Burial at Sea where uh, Elizabeth was behind it all sort of thing. They, they make her the progenitor of a lot of significant events of Rapture, which drove me insane. I couldn't take it. That is funny because everyone always says, like, yeah, the game's not so great, but Burial at Sea is really good. It's like, nope, 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 no, 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 no. Hey, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll do a breakdown of that someday. That'll be fun. Someday, like ten years from now. Um, um, as as odd as it is, uh, I guess Fringy's getting coffee. I have to use the loo real quick, so it'll be just you for a moment. Oh, funny because I need to go to the toilet. But yeah. let's all go potty parade. I'll be doing that. Kind of nobody here, and you guys will be listening to nothing. Yes, uh, it'll be. Edited and added on, so you got this big old EFAB that's uh, was mainly designed for us to be able to catch up, and it looks like we're we'll able to get chunky through it. Still got a big old set of She Hulk super chats that we'll catch up with at some point, and then we got uh, the episode 200 ones, which we've done three recording sessions for, so we need to keep going on them as well. Obviously, while maintaining the actual episodes where we talk about media, the focus as opposed to the super. All, it's all coming along. We're gradually catching up. While at the same time, trying to make some videos. As do. Doing this, that, and the other. Um, I do see our backlog is getting, is shrinking and shrinking with Super Chats, which is very, very good. Trying to get back to caught up, which we're making it. Slowly and steadily. That's why we do uh, offline ones every once in a while, because it means that we don't have to Add to the backlog. While still getting you guys the kind of stuff you want to see. Like coverage. Yeah, I think by the time this one comes out, you'll have seen our full coverage for Ragnarok. Which, that was a neat game. How about that? Um, God, seriously, it's like, so that's two. But then there was a potential third Ragnarok stream we were going to do, but I don't think we'll have time now, so it's probably going to be just two. There's a third... EFAP stream that I've already got a video for that we want to respond to. There's one, the the Movie Bob ones we really wanted to check out. There was uh, several videos saying that She-Hulk was amazing. Not sure we'll cover that in time. That it could be Callisto Protocol gets covered, don't know. Alright, I'm back. Well, uh, since you're back, I suppose I shall I'll continue on... Uh, yeah, go messages. for it. Matthew yeah. Matosis's Ocarina of Time video is excellent, and Running Shrine's Ocarina of Time video matches in reap watchability. Oh. Matthew Matosis is just a quality, quality content creator. It's legitimately where I'm so glad that it, if, if there's a YouTuber that you want to watch for game reviews that can inspire you and sort of. You know what? Talk about something... him for a whole bunch. I'm going to go to the toilet. <laughs> All right, yeah, Matthew Matosis does a lot of long-form content and is very analytical and thoughtful on a lot of the mechanics and story elements that are present in games and what they imply for the concept of game design. And he's, I really like, I, I really, really like his stuff. He doesn't post that much, but a lot of his old stuff is, it, it's excellent, thoughtful content. I'd, I'd highly recommend everyone take a look at Matthew Matosis. Um, he's a good creator to have, you know, kind of rub off on you in terms of their style and how they think. So if you're looking to get into game reviews, then I, I, I would recommend giving his stuff a look. If you can soak anything out of uh, his stuff and it kind of becomes a part of your thought process, chances are that would be uh, really good. Um, I guess Mahler is still away and Fringy's grabbing, uh, I guess, a drink or something. Yeah, I'm, I got my coffee oh, he's now. He's back. All right. Uh, Mahler had to step out to use the loo real quick. All right, all uh, right. So it's just us. We, we uh, Someone had mentioned in a super chat the uh, Matthew Matosis video on Ocarina of Time. Hmm, so I guess I, that's coincidental I, considering I, we just brought him up for Bioshock Infinite. <laughs> that is actually a crazy coincidence. A coincidence. I, I think I might have seen that video, maybe, a long time ago. 
Yeah, I can't remember I, uh, if I've seen it or not. I'm not sure which one I would pick as my favorite video that he's made. I uh, I know that I was really... Because a game that I picked up based on his recommendation was Ghost Trick, which was made by uh, made by the, uh, the team that did uh, Phoenix Wright. It's like this really cool puzzle game that has a neat story and then like an interesting mechanics. I think that was one of the games that he... I don't know. It, it's um, something that I find interesting about his coverage is that something he focuses in on is um, where the the gameplay sort of synergizes with the like narrative or the the kind of broad tone or uh, vibe that a game is trying to go for. And like one of the big critiques of Infinite is it's a first person shooter because that's what's popular right now. Um, yeah, when it should be like a totally... stealth game or something because you're trying to escape a city. Yeah. Yeah, like there was absolutely no consideration in the development for hmm, what kind of. I it's difficult to what say whether it should does be the one narrative way around or the other. Toward. Yeah, because I guess it could be one of two ways, right? What kind of narrative do we want to tell with the mechanics that we've chosen to focus in on, or alternatively, uh, what kind of gameplay loop do we want to have based on the narrative that we want to tell? Like it's you know one way or the other, and uh, it seems like. A lot of the time when a game puts some thought into that, like the developers put some thought into that, it can yield really good results. And when Ludo narrative dissonance is like a concept is totally discarded as irrelevant, it can often have bad outcomes. I um I'm not Even sure what the you... point was. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just gonna say that I I think I don't know who said it, but it was someone at Naughty Dog said that they don't really think about like Ludo narrative dissonance. I'll see if I can find it. Oh, you and probably like, should. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> you know, well, you probably you, yeah, should. The, the reality is you have to. It's like Ludo narrative dissonance is kind of like um, it's tied into suspension of disbelief. Whether you want to think yeah. about it or not, people will think about it. People will yeah. invariably think about it. Yeah. Um. And if they if they don't think about it, it probably means you're doing it right. So. All right. Here it is. So apparently, it was actually talking about Uncharted because Uncharted often gets lumped in, right? Nathan Drake You've done has that, yeah. like a well, he's got like a very, you know, upbeat sort of he's he's like the the heart of gold um, you know, rogue, but he kills hundreds of people. <laughs> like that that's that's like you, there's this big disconnect between the story of Uncharted and what you do in the gameplay. Apparently there was a trophy in the game called Ludo Narrative Dissonance that you get if you kill a thousand enemies. Um oh. and Neil said that the studio was quote unquote conscious to have fewer fights, but it came uh, more from a desire to have a different kind of pacing than to answer the ludo narrative dissonance argument because we don't buy into it. Um, man, that's interesting because like Uncharted 4's pacing, I think, is like one of the weakest in the series. Like, if you mm. play that game from the beginning, it takes like a good three to four hours before like the game starts. And when I say like the game starts, I mean the the core gameplay is sort of made entirely available to you consistently going forward. That game is slow to start, mm -hmm. but I guess that's funny, right? We don't buy into it. It's like you have to because everybody does. Like it was it was the big complaint about Tomb Raider, the cutscene. She's really sad that she had to kill this guy, and then like five gameplay minutes begins. Like, regular now, game. A, I mean, you've done one. What's a hundred more? Yeah, this, and, and, and the for only a penny, and for a pound. Saying, I'm so sorry. It's like this is feeble. This just doesn't work. It's if anything, it's, um, it's worse because you recognize that it's a thing, and then you didn't care. I can't even say that you just didn't even consider it. You clearly did, and you fucked with it anyway. Well, it's um because because I think Ludo narrative dissonance is kind of a uh, there's there's that, and then there's also just um. I guess, like, more... Like, is it Ludo narrative dissonance that a character dies and then respawns? It's like, not really. You can just sort of treat that as, like, a non-canonical outcome of your well, gameplay. Yeah, if you have a war game like, you know, Battlefield, you're not playing a... You, it, it's easy to say that, you know, it, this is, like, this is an abstract version of a battle where you have all of these soldiers fighting, and if one dies, then there's other soldiers in that army and, you know, things mm. like that. And, and, it, and it's so commonplace in games that you don't even... I mean, you don't even think about the fact that Resurrection... I mean... The player keeps to get playing, you know, keeps playing with the character. If you know, especially if you're yeah, yeah. So, so well, that's I easy to that. rationalize. Yeah, I'm thinking about Battlefield now because that's an interesting one. Is it Ludo narrative dissonance? When I guess I'm not talking about the new. Well, the new ones would have it too with their specialists. Like the fact that there's only four there's types more of soldiers specialists. on each side. Well, it, it depends. Is more so with um, their specialists. Well, I, the reason why I the find specialists it is more. 
I'd say it's worse because they're yes. distinct characters rather than a general generic sort of soldier. Yeah, with yeah. in uniform, absolutely. Yeah, and I think um, I look at that as an example of is is there a dissonance when you watch a stage play and you've got the actors up on the stage and the set dressing is like minimal to some extent and the actors are kind of angled like three quarters towards the audience you know it's like a general rule is that is there a dissonance there it's like no because i'm like buying into what this is um i recognize that this is a stage play and i can suspend my disbelief to like draw myself into what i know is ultimately like performance right and 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 uh art and stagecraft and i feel like it's the same with video games right like if there's um you know, like an NPC that looks the same as the other one. It's like within reason, I can just sort of be like, "Yeah, well, I can I use my just imagination." Look no, yeah, yeah, I can. I, I, it's fine. I can deal with it compared to where like the story directly contradicts what's happening in gameplay or vice versa. Um, I mean, again, it's it's interesting that Neil Druckmann said that because The Last of Us Two, it it is like broken because of the dissonance where Ellie will just happily, gleefully kill all these people that she didn't know, who did nothing to her personally, yet when she finally gets to the person who actually wronged her, she lets her go. Meanwhile, ignoring the mountain of bodies that she had to, including fat Geralt, you know? <laughs> like The hero. She, yeah, the she, hell? She, he helped she, her! He did, he and him. she promised to let him live, and she let him live, and killed him anyway. Him. Yeah. That's, that's a... That's a yeah, I can't root for a person that who was really not does that, you know? distance. That one's just like just, I don't know what you're, you're doing. Just, <laughs> yeah, what are you trying to? What What are you trying to tell me when you do this? I think that's what I would want to know. Is like Neil, what was I meant to think here? And it's like, oh, you know, it's just like violence and what it does to people. It's like, yeah, but like, what am I meant to make of Ellie? <laughs> like, and her choices here, and her choice later on. I think Rag, you just say they like I can't get behind that. I was just immediately flashing to remember what I said. I'd kill you last. Yeah, you did say that. <laughs> I, I lied. lied. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get behind him in that movie, okay? Don't <laughs> don't disturb my friend. He's dead dying. <laughs> he snapped his neck on the plane. Yeah. The funny part is he flails his arms up. It's so goofy looking. Ah, oh, Commando. Mm -hmm. Let off some steam, Bennett. Holy shit. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? It is. Even when you have a game like, um, if you have, whether it's Advanced Wars or any kind of a, a war game that's turn based, you can rationalize that in the sense of, well, you know, real war has like tactics and strategy. And that's what, how this game is presenting that concept to me. So it's easy for you to, you know, imagine, you know, a turn based game in the sense of like a, a large scale conflict or even fighting, how it's a give and take, how you know people react to what each other you know what each other does in as far as i know in dungeons and dragons and in pathfinder uh there is a turn-based system to the battles and the fights and it is generally considered that someone's turn or that a round lasts um it's like six seconds a turn is kind of how that like kind of like a way to mentally understand how it happens as everyone moves and that takes about six seconds a person and da 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 so you can kind of get a grasp of how it works but there's always that element of oh you're you, in an abstract way this fight is happening in a turn-based system is how you're presenting that to me so that i can participate in it in, in mm. this way and it's it's easy for people to you know get behind that yeah i think i think it's easy for people to look past as long as there is no evident contradiction in terms of the story, I think that's the important part of the dissonance. Yeah, what you story stuff is hard to rationalize. Versus gameplay what I'm is easy is to different. rationalize because you're yeah, just so exactly. used to gameplay. You, you, everyone's like, "Oh yeah, this is just a game. It's fine. It's not you know part of the story or the characters themselves. This is just how the gameplay happens. It's fine. It's easy to you know get behind." I still want points given for when they do try though. I, yeah, exactly. When I mean that's because we we got onto this because Matthew Mitosis, like when he talks about how Odd World Abe's Odyssey, like the gameplay is is uh, is is working with the story. They're both complementing each other, and it's like it's worth praising when a choice is made like that because that is the choice being made by the developer. Well, the amount of work I don't know if it'll to get come up, but that is Theo's primary criticism for God of War is that the opposite is happening in Ragnarok. That the gameplay is at odds with the narrative. 
I feel like Ragnarok, like the of, of the third person narrative, like action adventure Sony games, it is the least dissonant one of like that category. Well, it's going to come up um, in it, it would have come up by now in the timeline for when people are listening to this. We would have talked about it, but it's just, yeah, it's hard. It's really hard to associate when someone says, I fucking can't stand the walking talky bits. I just want to get back to the combat. And then Theo's like, you see, that's uh, sort of like how it goes. That's the that's the break you have to experience. And then I'm just sitting there like, but it is congruent to me. I move from those pieces seamlessly and happily. So like, mm -hmm. we're going to be drawing it from what experience it generates. You know, it, it starts to get difficult for me to associate with it. Because I was, you know, I would rather extend it then to being like, I fucking hate you know, Call of Duty, whenever they're doing their parts, we're like, oh, here's the mission, we gotta go to blah blah blah, it's like this ruining the whole <laughs> game. Ruining the whole game. I can't take it, I just want to shoot things. And, you know, I, for that person, I just be like, yeah, calm down, man, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder where we're supposed to draw the line, or how we draw the line. Or should a line even be drawn? Who knows? New Pokemon is fun, but ugly as fuck. It looks ugly as fuck, based on what I've seen. It does not look... Uh, it, it's, it, it legitimately feels like they've taken a step back. 2D is a one... There's nothing wrong with things being 2D. It's a wonderful style. You can do so much with it. And in place of, like, sheer attempt at graphics and stuff, you can, you can put all that into, you know, just content, m mechanics, you know, things of that nature. It's so easy to realize things. Um, I'm... I don't know. I just don't want. I don't want what happens to two D style games to be what has happened to two D animation. It seems. I feel like the indie space keeps two uh, D. I, I but I guess that's that's kind of a good point, right? They because do. Like, I think. Yeah. Like Rayman Legends, right? This really amazing two D platformer that was made by Ubisoft, and no more sequels. You know, just didn't keep going. It's like that's unfortunate. Yeah, when it comes to stuff like, uh, I think RimWorld is a perfect example. I adore that game so much. When you look at it graphically, it's not that impressive, but there's so many underlying mechanics and things that make that game what it is. I shudder to think of what happened, what would have happened if they decided to try and make a more, like a three-dimensional game that, that, that just had really, really good graphics. You know, how much that would sort of compromise the theater of the mind element that I appreciate. Like characters in RimWorld, it's just a body and a head. And if they have their weapon out, then it just sort of floats in front of them. You know, it's sort of like Rayman style in a way. Um, and I don't want them to add, like, limbs and everything to the character. They have limbs, like health, like people can lose arms and legs and fingers and stuff. But it's not visually represented. So much of what happens in the game is is very abstract. And you fill it in, in this theater of the mind sort of, you know, storytelling you know aspect of yourself. And I, I really value the game for that. So I wouldn't want it to really look any different. RE8 was designed to make everyone feel comfortable to play, including the ones who thought RE7 was too scary. No joke. I thought... Which did you think was more scary? 7 or 8? Pretty sure it was 7. Uh, I, I found the demo for 7 scary. I thought 7 was one. scarier than 8, yes. Um, but I guess I was at the, at the time of playing, I think I was more critical of 8. But I think that's warranted in a lot of ways considering what they were trying to do um i enjoyed eight more but i'm more angry at eight yeah it's not a good game guys not uh, a good game. sonic frontiers soured a bit on the third island oh <laughs> well I, I don't know what the general sentiment is on that game nobody's really talking about it yeah i couldn't tell you i legitimately couldn't tell you anything about Sonic games. I just that's just not a world I'm a we part of. We talked about this. Why did they release it right next to Ragnarok? That was a bad move. <laughs> I don't know why they yeah, don't know. I guess they were like, hey, West Sonic the Hedgehog, that's just little God of War. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Weird. I don't know. Is there another Black Mirror episode that's as existentially terrifying as White Christmas? I think it takes the cake in pure, impossibly cruel horror. Well, yeah, and it, it got around, and people, like, that's how I saw it, was enough people were like, you gotta see this episode, it's real spooky. Um, yeah. So, I don't know, actually, I haven't seen a, a more Black Mirror. I assume you guys haven't either. 
I have not no, seen any Black Mirror. No. Uh, please watch Pig, please. Perhaps. Maybe, Perhaps. maybe. Uh, guys, would you consider making short-form content to explain concisely why certain things are good, bad, etc., so more normie people can understand it? Um. I guess we haven't considered it. Uh, at least I haven't, at least. But, I mean, I if you had... If we have a lot of bits and bobs that you could take out of our conversations, if the idea that maybe in a in in some way releasing very like bite sized bits of discussions and things, as I, there's an idea there. I don't know if it's ever something that will be pursued, but it's not a terrible concept. But um, I'm like I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I can understand. I'm not against it, but I don't know it would how it would work. But I'm not against it. It was pitiful polemics. It's a little bit of that in it. Yeah, I was about to say that's um that's kind of like my attempt at doing short form, but like that is hyper specific on one topic, and I could talk about a lot of those topics for longer than like five to ten minutes, really. Um, it's it's difficult that <laughs> that concise is a is a fun word because I think a lot of people think that it means short, but really it's like distilling the information that you want to convey, um, in the the briefest manner possible without like losing um because that's like the difficulty in shortening something down is at what point do you lose enough information that what you're saying is kind of wrong um concisely or, or explaining how a nuclear reactor works is different it, it, it's gonna be long there's no way to concisely do that because of it i mean yeah. there's there's a way to do it concisely but there's not a way to do it <coughs> concisely and short some things uh, are just yeah, too complex. exactly. Con concise and short are not the same thing. Um, and I mean, you know, it's like, how does a wheel work? Concisely, you could say it turns, you know, a thing go. Yeah, it rotates around. Like, a that's how the of wheels access. of a car yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and even then, it's like, you know, how much information does somebody really want? Uh, how much information ought to be conveyed in order to like best? Um, man, I was about to say, how ought it be conveyed to best convey it to somebody, but. Yeah, communication is, I don't know, there, there's only so short that you can, uh, that you can only be so short before you have basically said nothing, or have said something inaccurate. Until it's valueless, almost. It's yeah. just not, it, yeah, where it's I mean, pointless. I legit have had people say, like, why doesn't he just say TFA is bad? Like, it's yeah, like, I, guess, well, I guess that's more concise. Believe... Well, I could have just tweeted well, that, you numbskull. But the thing is, it's like, don't you want to hear the arguments? Surely that's what we're here for. There are no arguments, so subjective, so just say bad If bit. you literally uh, just want to hear someone say what you think in their own voice, then maybe this isn't the place for you. Uh, Which name is better, the Fat Controller or Sir Topham Hat? Well, the, the latter feels like a name and the former doesn't. Yeah. Fat Controller sounds funny. Wasn't the fat controller from uh, Thomas the Tank Engine? Isn't that his name? I don't know. I don't oh, know either. Okay, I thought that was a character from Thomas the Tank Engine. I'm not saying it isn't, I just don't know. I didn't watch Thomas the Tank Engine. Oh, apparently it's now called Thomas and Friends. They've changed it. It used to be called Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. Uh... Fair enough, I guess. Oh, I, I suppose I have no strong opinions whatsoever. Oh, and apparently it's it's over? Like, it ended in 2021. No. It ended it in 2021. Like, Did he die? It ran from 1984 to 2021. 24 seasons. Wow, that's... 584 that's, episodes. That's impressive as fuck. Did he that's die? All, yeah, in, the, in fat, the fat... Con that's right. This The fat controller was the character. He was, like, the guy in charge of the train station. Yeah, yeah, that's the guy. Yeah, I didn't thought I I knew he was called Fat Something. I didn't know if it was controller or if it was like conductor or well. Something. Oh, I see. That's the question because his real name is Sir Topham Hat. Oh, that's his name. okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, so which name is better? Probably Sir Topham uh, Hat. Well, it's an actual I... name. The other's more of a like a title or a or description designation. Yeah, the Fat Controller. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, I argued with someone on Twitter over Wakanda not sharing their cure for cancer and ability to fix disability. He called me a classic colonizer. 
classic colonizer thinking sure. that someone else should do something for the betterment of mankind. International cooperation is colonization. The funny thing about it is they can have things in return. Give us the cure to cancer. We'll pass over to you. Like, wh what do you need? You probably need something. I doubt you have everything in Wakanda or vibranium right. equivalents of everything. It's just trade. We'll give you what land. You can have <laughs> land. Yeah. Believe me, there's a lot of things we'd be willing to give you for the cure to fucking cancer. Because remember, uh, if America had the cure to cancer and we didn't give it out and share it, though, it'd be nothing but hatred and condon, uh, I almost said condensation, uh, <laughs> condescension and all that sort of stuff. It's, you know, this, it's an insane, obvious double standard that they would have. Wakanda is everything that they say that they hate, but they're too dumb to know. Um, something they needed to account for and they just didn't in the narrative because any writer would not be able to deal with that in an interview. Why don't Wakanda share their cure for cancer? I think the writer would be more likely to be like, uh, uh, have they? I didn't. I don't think they have cured cancer. I don't. I don't have they? <laughs> and you're just like, yes. And they're like, oh, well, uh, well. There's the other a lot stuff of, then. Look, there's complicated agreements that need to take place. There's there's all kinds of um, uh, things to consider. There you go. Next question. Uh, speaking of Crimbus time, watch Fat Man for Christmas Eve at movies. You massives. That's the um. That's a movie about a who's the who's the main dude in that? Oh, isn't he the um? Oh yeah, who? That's a wait. What film? Sorry, Batman. Like a Santa no, movie. Bat it's that... oh, what's his name? Uh, Mel was Mel Gibson. Oh, that might be it. Yeah, I think so. I'm not against watching that, yeah. That could be fun. What happens in that movie? Uh, no hi, clue. Rags. I assume it involves a fat man. I can only assume. But also, hello. Hi, Fringy. Hey. I'm Ola. Hello. Also, get on watching Andor, Fringy, your goo. Yeah, Fringy. <laughs> oh, my God. It has to do with it, but... Uh, oh, well, no. yeah. We do need to figure mm. that out at some point. Uh, a great Oni Plays thumbnail is Kirby64. Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> the teeth. <laughs> the response to being poked like that. Beautiful. If you had the ability to replicate any uh, beat or item from a book... 30 minutes, so like any great. Oh, I thought you meant item. like people's yeah, yeah, yeah. like with toes on them. I was but, like, well, I don't know. <laughs> That's a tough question. But it could only use any story once, so no multiple Bible shenanigans. What books would you keep on hand all the time? All right, just for clarity, say the question once more so I'm, so I'm clear. So, feet spelled F E A T. If you had the ability to replicate any feet or item from a book for 30 minutes, but could only use any story once, so no multiple Bible shenanigans, what books would you keep on hand all the time? So, I can use it for 30 minutes, I guess just once and that's it, but it's only one from each, one from a book. So, I use a power from a book, or I can perform a feat. And then that's that book done. I can't use that p uh, power from that book again. Uh, I'm just gonna look for all the books about like you know ultimate weapons, ultimate power ups, right? Like that's what we're gonna be aiming. It'd be for. like yeah, all sorts of magic books with Harry Potter stuff in them, spellcraft, uh, telepathy, telekinesis, uh, superhero comics are full of them. Uh, yeah, stuff like that. Um, yeah, the ability to fly or to become invulnerable, things of that nature. Yeah, that's that. I guess nothing specifically comes to mind, but except probably what you'd expect. You know, incredible feats of strength, being super strong, being super, you know, aware. Maybe a little bit of a uh, you know prescience. Uh, about books. So so yeah, it'd be like stuff like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings and things like that. That are just full of these interesting abilities that could be super useful to have at any point. 
I have no idea where any of my Super Chats are, and at this point, I'm too afraid to find out. Also, a good holiday film to see with family is Klaus. Uh, oh, that's the one with, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that Netflix one that has that neat style to it, and Norm MacDonald's in it. Yeah, he's a voice of one of the characters. Yeah, I have no heard of it. And as for where your Super Chats are, that's the, that's the nature of the beast. You're going to have to check out the, the catch-ups. You might be able to find it, but cataloging thousands of messages is not the easiest of things. It's not even easy to make sure we actually catch all of them, but not yet failed. Yeah, that's At why Fringy and I expedite all the responsibility to Mahler. Yay. Exactly. How Good job. I... You're doing a great job on that, on getting all those stupid chats, all right? We're proud of you. You do, you do good work around here. Yeah, I try. I try. Oiling that. Oiling them gears, you know. Burning Rational. that uh, midnight oil. How Murray saved Christmas for EFAP movies. How Murray saved Christmas? Bill Murray, I don't know. Maybe. Who else? That's what what other Murray would there be? If it was Bill Murray, yeah. Not familiar with that one. Eh? I feel like if you were, you'd always refer to Bill Murray as just Bill. He seems like the kind of person you just refer to him as Bill. You well, know, he seems like a, a Bill. The big subversion is that he's always wanted to go by Murray, but nobody. Or Mr. Murray. Maybe he has like a degree and he, he legitimately prefers Dr. Dr. Murray. Murray. That could be it. But everyone just knows him as that goofball Bill Murray, the funny guy. Uh, do you guys remember Cinematic Venom? He talked about his Lord of the Rings review being bad and seems open to coming on EFAP. Oh, yeah, I, I hope he's doing well, of course. I haven't Absolutely. I hope he's doing while, really great. And... Yeah, it's been... Uh, the, 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 I, I, it'd be fun to maybe have a chat with him and see, what, see how everything went, because um, obviously I've always, I, I always hope that the coverage of such videos are not harsh. Yeah, we hope that it it leads to growth and self improvement and all that, all, you know, Fine. all that stuff. Yeah, um, we would. The last thing we want to do is have someone like shut off their channel and everything. We we yeah. don't want to do that. I hope he's doing wheel. Uh, Mola, do you have any happy stories from the store you worked at? Three, if any. Not really. No. Three, three, if any. You don't have any happy stories. No, I only have tolerable days. Wow. It was, it was, no, it was, no good little dude I used to like I had a friend I've told Fring about this I had a friend who like just refused to do any work to the point where he was on benefits uh, and he would find ways of extending it by pretending to have looked but not actually finding work and it, it capped out eventually and they were like they started looking into his case until they were like you definitely got a job offer here go get it and he did and he got it and after a half day he left and he was like miserable and he told me that he just couldn't handle being told what to do he just couldn't and do it the works too much it's just, it's just that's too much. the that's the spirit of the entrepreneur i can't handle being told what to do you should uh, well, <laughs> of course well, he started his own business no uh so what like, yeah so i always you know i i'm one of those people that's just like you gotta fucking like you want to be a part of this society you gotta you gotta actually like give a little to get a little right you can't just get away with being like nah i don't take orders bitch and leave literally <laughs> like, just mooching off of every other unit. yeah that's uh, you know so i'm i'm of the mindset i was like i gotta try right and like i worked at that place for a long time and it was absolute nightmare i've told earlier on in efap i told all of the harsher stories that i remembered but i've almost forgot all of them now except the one about stealing uh the game that's one i'll never forget but um no, there was never, there was never something really good that happened there that made me like, oh, I'll never forget this. It was always just, wow, that day wasn't painful. I was fine, or that hour, or that minute, or that interaction. Uh, but yeah, sorry. <laughs> like, it's a shame. My other jobs, yeah, there shame. were there were sub highlights of just fun times, but honestly, it's been so long since them that I, I'm not even sure I remember those anymore. Um. Yeah, my brain didn't hang on, but uh, my brain made sure to file that uh, Toy Store Nightmare, nothing good to report. Mm. I remember when I uh, put in my notice, the, the boss was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, right, cool, man. I'm gonna go then. Obviously, after the notice expired, because that's what you're supposed to do, right? You don't just abandon. You don't. Yeah, you, you put in your two weeks. I, is it two weeks for you over there? Because over here it it's typically too, yeah. you put in your two weeks notice. Yeah, and then uh, put in your two weeks notice, and then you uh, then you could fuck off without any uh, moral weight on your mind. You know, 
Hey guys, and Rex. Hello. Hello. Need a new computer, and I'm tempted to get a pre-built. Are there any that are good, or is it not worth it? There are absolutely many that are good, but there are also many that, that are bad. So make sure you they, read uh, reviews and stuff before you get the one. The pickings have gotten better in terms of uh, absolute pre-built computers. Because like 10 years ago, I think it was just Alienware. Yeah, <laughs> and they still have the reputation from back in the day. Yeah, whereas now it's like there seem to be a lot of reputable companies where you can like customize your computer, um, get it pre-built, like get it sorted, looking nice. Yes, there is a plenty of there's a channels like Gamers Nexus and things like uh, channels like them who will review pre-built their values, performance, thermals, things of that nature. So uh, if you find one that looks like it's about what you're kind of looking for. Always look for a review of it because they are they are absolutely out there. Um, Fringy, you talk so much about Daredevil. I'm surprised you haven't been Dare Fringy for a Halloween Efat month. Oh, ho, ho. That's, kind of a, that's kind of a neat idea. I need to. Oh wait, I was about to date this video, <laughs> date this uh this catch up. Well, all right, maybe we'll see Dare Fringy at some point. Maybe who knows? Dare I was Fringy. just going to talk about Christmas for stuff. Fring Devil. Fring Devil. Dare Fringy or Fring Devil? Frere Devil. I don't know. I feel like I feel like um I feel like Fring Devil makes more sense, right? Because it would be emphasizing the devil aspect more so than the you know what I mean? Which like we regularly Fringy. do with you, yeah. Yeah. We yeah. often emphasize your devil aspect. Well, all right. No need to be no need to be like that, okay. Well, there's nothing wrong with being a devil. No. What do you mean? We were just talking about how Daredevil's awesome. Would you have yeah, I mean why would you? You're strange. I feel you're like you're reading guy. something more into that than I am, but okay. Well, what did you mean chat. when you said you didn't want Rags to do it? Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll let you guys figure that one out for yourselves. Next super chat. All right, oh. Bringy's a getting politician on us. Communicator, yeah. Oh. There's no, there's nothing politician politiciany about that. It's literally I'm identity politics. Yep, identity politics once again. Yep. Wow. The demons wow. and devils. Yeah. Wow. So, oh, sent a super chat back in July, saying I started EFAP in February. Nine months later, I'm 100% caught up on everything EFAP except for the super chat catch-up minis. Thanks again Do for the you understand that, like, that sounds unbelievable. Yeah. Like, I have trouble believing you. I mean, good on you, but, like, are you sure that you're able to do that? From July to now. Well, yeah, so in nine months, they, they watched all of EFAP. It's like, I guess that is possible. Um, especially with long, long shifts, you know. Uh, thanks again for the entertainment while I work from home. Have a nice Thanksgiving, Rags. Oh, thank you. And I did. Sweet. Yeah, and thank you. Hope you enjoy the show and continue to. Brother, you're covered in Bifrost. Yes, Bifrost insurance will cover you axe head to toe throughout all the realms. That's the that's greatest pretty salesman alive. Yeah, that's pretty you're good. Covered by like Bifrost. Troy McClure would promote. <clears throat> by frost insurance who's that oh right you he's from the simpsons oh i bet if i saw a picture of him i'd recognize him. yeah i mean you might you might remember him from such films as i don't have any of the references the day the we kill head. tomorrow we die and gladys the groovy mule <laughs> may remember there that. are a lot of uh, there are a lot of them and the president's neck is missing <laughs> the president's now neck is about, missing. Um, yeah. I'm now thinking about the the uh the it was like the 1950s video about a world without zinc. Yeah. Where like for some reason this guy just asked for a world without zinc, and then like he started realizing you know like his phone doesn't work or anything, and he's like, "What have I done?" <laughs> Grabs. That gun, sounds like the big. Oh, that sounds I like the premise of like a 1950s educational video for kids. Yeah. Like a 1940s, exactly. yeah, 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 a yeah, world without that, zinc. That's actually what it is, though, because it's not. Oh. It's like black and white, and and he tries to <laughs> okay. shoot himself. He's like, "Yep, that's right, Billy." <laughs> you know, like that. The 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 trigger mechanism in a gun is made of that's right, zinc. And then he's like, "Come back, zinc, come back." <laughs> and it turns out he's sleeping, and it was a nightmare. Thank God he lives in a world with all of these wonderful things powered by zinc. Yeah. 
He learned a valuable lesson. Don't under don't underestimate the importance of zinc. That's right. I certainly won't. Cherish all of the elements. Cherish your zinc. Wings quote of the day. I know people mm -hmm. think I've got paper thin skin. I feel like I'm mentally strong. Like I'm one of the mentally strongest people I know. He said this with zero irony in his voice. Bonus. I don't really ever get mad. I get frustrated with how I'm playing. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I never get mad. When I scream at the monitor and throw things at the wall, it's just it's just frustration, but I'm not angry. <laughs> yeah, like it's frustration when you frustrated. can rage quit the game with one hand as he tosses it across what a, like the <laughs> control across the thing. The Though I will say when he says like mental toughness, all right, look, he's he's probably he's more endured a lot than some people. Yeah, like in terms of you know, well, he's probably shit on mentally on numb. Probably be. that might it's, be what it is. Yeah, he's just um, numb to it. He it's is, like he's broken. Well, I mean, like how I resilient is a broken pot? And I was like, well, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter because it's already it's already shattered to a million pieces. So it's almost like not even, you know, like a trait that means anything at that point. I guess the thing is, is that I wonder if it's if it's a matter of resilience or more so a matter of for as much as he will complain about it, he would still rather play video games for a living than like work a regular nine to five. You know, like for for as much as he says Call of Duty ruined his life, would you rather play Call of Duty and make money or would you rather, I don't know, like go work in a kitchen or, you know, go work in fast food? I or... bet he'd love to work in a kitchen. I bet no, he, he wouldn't. wouldn't. I bet he wouldn't. He wouldn't because that's work. <laughs> What do you mean That's I can't hard, eat everything? Right? Yeah. I, I guess it's just, yeah, it's interesting, right? Is it like, is it a matter of resilience or more a matter of like, well, I guess it is resilience, right? Because you're so determined to keep playing Call of Duty and Counter-Strike. Wait, no, he plays Rainbow Six. Or is Six, that stubbornness? Plays Rainbow Six. Uh, maybe it is stubbornness, right? Like the stubbornness to persist with something... Because, of course, right, saying Call of Duty ruined my life and I hate this game, but I have to play it because that's what gets me views. It's like, that's a... Uh, that's not really resilience, is it? That's just like I don't I'm not I'm not quite sure what that is, but that's not I don't know if that's resilience. Yeah, I think resilience is being able I, I think the connotation of resilience is that you can avoid damage to yourself in a physical or mental way, generally for a, a, in a good or productive kind of purpose. I think you know? that's the big thing about it, right? Resilience means that you push through something that's negative with an attitude that is at least neutral to positive. Um I, I don't know that, you know, or maybe, maybe not, maybe the attitude isn't that important, but I, I feel like it, resilience imbues, like the word sort of has a level of um positivity Positive, to it. I don't yeah. know that uh, applies to playing Call of Duty while getting made fun of, like while you're live streaming and then complaining about not playing well in Call of Duty, but you have to play it because that's what gets you views. We were asked a super chat once asking if we would rather be cowardly or stubborn. And I think that he chose stubborn, but he's like the negative version of having chosen stubborn. Yeah, like persisting with something that's not working or making you happy, but God Doing damn, anyway, you're unshakable. Yeah. You know? Like you can't. Though I would say that, yeah, it seems that if the choice is stubbornness or cowardice, it's better to be stubborn. Than it is to be cowardly. Yeah, I think that's what we all agreed on. Unless you know, we're talking about courage, the cowardly dog who is very courageous. Really, he's he's not. A, I guess that's kind of why it's great that he's called courage because he's not a coward. Courage, the cowardly dog, is very brave. He is extremely brave. That's right. <laughs> that he because, does. Yeah, that it's it's a it's something that you 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 have to remember about. You know, it's it's like what is be you know what is bravery what is courage is it's not that you aren't afraid of anything it's that you could still you know do good things and do what you need to do despite all of that fear and that is truly courage the cowardly dog he's always afraid of everything but he still saves muriel in the day and he's you know, he does all that stuff despite his you know his incredible terror well that yeah i mean it's there is no such thing as bravery or uh courage without fear like that's baked into it that yeah, you can't be brave, brave if you, like, literally aren't yeah. afraid of anything. You know? Well, yeah, like, is it brave to get up, go to the kitchen, get, like, a bottle of water out of the fridge? It's like, there's nothing really brave about it. I guess unless you have to, like, walk through a minefield <laughs> to get to your fridge. But, you know, like, yeah. Courage the Coward. 
he maybe maybe wings needs to watch some car- well no he's not he's not a coward he's stubborn that's right that's what we learned yeah well we you got your money for shadow bonus yeah, quote gonna... well double bonus oh, quote okay. sigh okay. all right go ahead and ban people talking about my halloween costumes i've already seen big al's toy barn in chat like 12 times <laughs> Big Al's <laughs> toy barn. <laughs> Big toy Al's barn. toy barn. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, you get it for a buck, buck, buck. <laughs> I would happily see him dressed up as Al's toy barn. <laughs> Big Al. Big <laughs> Al's toy barn. Wearing a chicken costume. Hi, <laughs> Rex. Oh, I'm dying. Hello. I'm dying. Thanks for immoralize, immoralizing me on my birthday. I think they mean immortalizing, but um, I will, I'll, I'll, you, you bet, you, no problem, <laughs> man. Anytime, well, unless I'll, like only if it's on your birthday. Anytime, as long as your it's your birthday. How much super chats will chat as chat during this EFAP super chat chat? Hi, Rex. Hello. Well, um, a, a lot. So many that we're still not through them all yet, but we're getting there. Uh, there's a God of War audiobook read entirely by Mimir. That sounds awesome. Oh, really? I might even be tempted to check that out, actually. Hold on, God of War audiobook. That would be Alistair Duncan is the name you'd want. For I did not know that this is... Uh, God of War, the official novelization. What, uh, what events is it covering? <coughs> I don't know. Um... I, I guess it would be like a, years. well, it would be for the game strictly, I imagine. But I guess it's uh, yeah, the official novelization. Um, it is described as the novel that explains the story of God of War Four. Okay, thanks. Um, it's uh, hmm. Okay, yeah, that is interesting. Oof. Yeah, and the thing is, that could be easy to listen to if Mimir is doing all of it. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, I'm curious if they... Are they doing one for Ragnarok Maybe as well? Maybe they I will do one for Ragnarok. Oh, and it looks like they've done novelizations for the other games too. Like God of War 1 and 2. Hmm. I'll have to look into that. Uh, Fringy, you mentioned not liking MCU nano helmets. What do you think of Dead Space's folding helmets? I way prefer uh, Isaac Clarke's helmet. Um, yeah, that's because the nanotech but, ones—they're they're so bad now. They're like it's just like it washes over their face, right? It's not well. It's like it doesn't exist. Whereas the way that it works with like Isaac Clarke's is in the first game, he just keeps it on like the whole time. I think I think one of the big and things it is takes that, it is off. It, it it doesn't fold away. Well, I think the big thing that helps is that the utility never strikes me as being lost when the helmet gets removed, like in Dead Space 2. Because you see it, like, as part of the... Because it, like, descends into, like, this forward-facing, like, mount sort of uh, just above his chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that Bever-looking thing, yeah. I, I, what, I, what I want is, like, the mechanical parts. I think that's the thing that's missing for me. The nanotech helmets are, like... They're like magic, right? They just sort of, like, zoom, and then they're gone. Whereas, like... I way prefer what they used to do with Iron Man's helmet, where it would just pop up the the, the uh, mask, but like the helmet would still be on. Um, I, I think it's yeah. I I uh, I think one of the big things I don't like about the nanotech helmet is I know why it's happening, which is we got to see the actor's face. Specifically, we got to see the celebrity actor's face. Um, meanwhile, you know who gives a fuck about the costume that was very intentionally designed with the well, helmet and all. It would likely be fine if it was only the one character in, in this entire world that had that form, that animation of the... Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But uh, yeah, the idea that we have all of these characters from all these different worlds and literal parts of the universe and parts of Earth should be enough to be like, they should be really different and cool in, in how they're different. Well, and but um, yeah, they're all like the same now. Everybody does it. Because even Jane, she had like a nanotech helmet, even though it was meant to be like a magical space... Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like the Asgardians, the fucking Black Panthers, the Ant Man people, like everyone has the same thing. It's like, how did that happen? Yeah. And they also used to. a big thing as well is that um Isaac Clark doesn't take his helmet down like when he's in fucking danger. Like, you know, like he 
he always keeps the helmet on and just speaks with the helmet on when he's like in danger and it usually comes down when he's very securely out of danger in dead um, space 3 for all that game's faults there is a sequence after they crash on tau volantis where his helmet malfunctions and he can't lift the have the helmet cover his head and that's a sequence where you have to stay close to the heat or else you'll freeze to death Mm-hmm. Right, because Tal Valancis was super duper cold. Cold as fuck. Yeah. Um, I uh I really like the profile of the of his helmet. Like I love the fucking three, the three glowing. It's so um, great. Classic. It's, it's, it's fantastic. And I think what I like is that the game recognizes that that's really cool. And it doesn't it it that's a part that was intentional in terms of the design for the character, and it's not discarded to throw a face like a really iconic sort of uh like an actor's face at you whereas a lot of the comic book characters had their costumes and their helmets very intentionally designed to create a look and we don't care um and and it, i think the thing that annoys me as well is that they had healthy compromises that they got rid of ant-man used to have the thing where it would pop up and show his face but like the helmet was still on but now it's full nanotech as well because i guess they thought that we needed to see his hair too see his ears we need to see his ears because it was the same with Tony, right? Like Tony used to have it so that it was the visor that popped up, and now everything get get we get rid of everything. Um, I like those designs, and I don't like that they're getting discarded for what I would consider to be kind of a shallow reason, um, as opposed to what you even saw, like in the Raimi Spider-Man films, where usually it would be like towards the end of the battle, the the, the mask gets destroyed. And so you still have the mask there, but you can see like Tobey Maguire's eyes um, or, yeah. you know, or at least at the very least giving us a reason to get rid of the mask, like in Spider-Man 2, when um, the, the sparks like well, burn up. Is, uh, writing is fundamentally give us a reason for why we're seeing the stuff we're seeing instead of just throwing it at us for yeah. funsies. Explain of, why you know, we're seeing what you want me to say. Remember, yeah. he, would, he would be a great example, right? In Black Panther... Like that's an that's an awesome costume. Like the Black Panther costume is is really cool. Um, and in Civil War, he gets to wear it all the time. Often doesn't take off the mask. The only time he takes it off is like when he gets arrested, and then when he uh talks to Zemo. is going to talk to Zemo. Um, meanwhile, and of course, there's a reason for that, right? Because he's indestructible, you know, more or less when he's inside of it. And then in Black Panther, because they needed to contrive a reason for him to like have a stupid nanotech helmet, they make his whole suit like nanotech to where it becomes vulnerable to like malfunction when uh, it gets hit by like these beams that destabilize uh, vibranium. And so it's like, oh, so like in order to have your nanotech helmet, it's just worse. The suit is functionally worse. It can malfunction in a way that the old suit couldn't. And the reason why yeah. they did it is because they wanted nanotech helmets. Um, yeah, I just, I just think it's really lame. Um, and that's the difference between MCU nanotech helmets and Isaac Clarke's uh, cool helmet that's still mechanical. <coughs> well, anyway, yeah. how did you use it. Doctor Strange 2, uh, I guess, I'm not sure, what, what would ST stand for? Hmm. Uh, so, so you talk about Doctor Strange, and then DT. What? He they mentioned Doctor Strange, so I'm wondering if there's DT might be related to Doctor Strange in some way. St. Like an st. Oh, um, st. Well, either way, I'll read the whole thing. See if we can make sense of it. How did you use DS two? Meaning, I assume, Doctor Strange 2, ST in your vids and avoid copyright. If you're just referring to clips, keep it under six seconds. Soundtrack? But to, oh, I didn't use soundtrack in mine, I don't think. Hmm. My whole video, I don't think I had any audio beyond my voice, I think. Um, but if you're trying to avoid getting hit by copyright for the soundtracks, you need to make it so that the, the sound is just lower than your voice for the backing track. If you want to play it on your own, then, well, that... I mean, at that point, it just should be monetized for them, right? If you uh, soundtrack solely, if there's no like transformational vibe check that you're trying to run at the same time, then I guess uh, can't prevent copyright at that point. That's part of uh, what will have happened already. Is I won't, for our Ragnarok EFAP, 
I'm very happy I can play the songs, at least in part, and then we can talk about them instead of having to deal with, like, the entire video gets monetized by that song's rights holder. Yeah. The weird world we live in where video game soundtracks are at a whim of, of whatever we want most of the time. But I appreciate that, you know, I can I can show it off, recommend it, and then we can talk about what we think is working and not working about it. Um, have... Have you all ever seen Rocket Man? It's a fantastic musical biopic about Sir Elton John starring Taron Egerton, one of my favorite movies ever. I've not seen that, no. Neither have Heard I. Heard about it. Oh, maybe we'll see it at some point. Just a reminder that One Punch Man EFAP would be great. Yeah, that's not exactly an impossibility, hmm. to be honest. Yeah, be fun. I'd say it isn't. Um, I love the giant rabbits in the Teletubby show. Why wouldn't you love giant rabbits, right? They keep sure. Oh, well, there's nothing hellish about them in, in the lore. <laughs> in the lore, the deep Teletubby lore. Full Teletubby, there. Full Teletubbies breakdown. When it would be cool for us to do maybe one episode of Teletubbies on EFAP TV. It would be yeah, see. something absurdly, you know, absurd like that that you treat very seriously in terms of your critique <laughs> of it. Mola, would the Sun Baby be the de facto god for the different tribes? Would the Sun Baby, in fact, be Ra, the Sun God? Could be. Could be Ra. Uh, and it's a, it's, that's the form Ra takes in the world of the Teletubbies. Like, this, this, this potential, they're going to have to look into it. Yeah, personification of, you know, elements of the natural world in terms of, you know, All I know is it's powerful. is pretty common. Absolutely, yeah. F's out for my homo boy... Inky Winky. Yeah, I know, man. Uh, I hope he's I hope he's all right, you know. He's or, not. Well, he died of hypothermia. Well, no, the Inky Winky, not the actor, I mean. Oh, yeah, the character, yeah. Who we really care about. That I hope is the true. character's okay. Fun fact, they had to do reshoots because the bunnies were screwing on camera. That's what happens when you want a bunch of rabbits, you know? Yeah. They, they, why they didn't like they just get, like, all females or something? <laughs> I don't know. Hawkeye was the best thing in Phase 4. No Way Home is number 2, and surprisingly, Miss Marvel is 3 because it has a decent main character. The best new characters were Kate Bishop, John Walker, and Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel. I also like the Doctor Strange What If episode. Uh, I didn't, that's the one I didn't see, and I haven't seen Hawkeye. Um, and we haven't seen Miss Marvel either, right? Yeah, so I think we've oh, missed like all it. of the things that might actually be the best stuff of Phase Four. But it's, it's... Uh, well, didn't wasn't there like that? Apparently, Miss Marvel had like time travel in it. Right. Of course it does. But well, yeah, I mean, the, maybe, maybe the character, the character might still bad, be worthwhile, right? yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. It's, I think well, it's just, I guess it makes it's sense, right? Because those would have been. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, like I said, I watched the first episode of Hawkeye and I wasn't, I wasn't impressed. <laughs> um, yeah, not a huge fan. But I guess Hawkeye probably stood a bit of chance because it's lower variables than a lot of other Phase 4 projects. You do uh, yeah, the point, nature like, of the like, fabric of reality probably isn't at risk or something like that. If you forced Michael Waldron to write a, a film with just Doctor Strange trapped in a concrete room with no escape with like one other character and an oxygen supply, I do wonder if he could come up with what he would come up with, actually. I think it would be terrible, even then. Like, well, you've I got zero like variables other than people talking, Michael. Can you do it? And he's like, hmm. Mm. Well, mm. then again, the <laughs> toilet episode in Rick and Morty was pretty close to just two people talking, wasn't it? Was it? And that wasn't a great episode. Well, yeah, because it was mainly because it was Rick. It, that had some high variables, of course, because Rick and Morty. But it was mainly about Rick talking to that guy. Remember, like the guy who sat in his toilet. I can't remember we what the B plot was. We should that episode. We should. We should. We should yeah. it to see. <laughs> just, just to see. <laughs> Uh, was just watching the God of War stream with Metal and just wanted to mention that I think the reason people were unsatisfied with Hades' design is because he is usually the most relaxed of the three brothers. Well, see, but that's the problem, isn't it? Like, he, what, what is... I, mean, yeah, I think Ragnarok is just another uh, thing that's black-pilling me, so to speak, on adaptation. I'm just like... Everybody, like, so many people shat on Thor and Odin before they were even given a chance, and so many of those people are now like, man, Thor and Odin were fucking great. And I'm just like, yeah, we gotta, gotta be careful, right? Gotta, gotta give him a chance, gotta get, let him, Fringy, you gotta give Mario a chance, okay? Give Mario yeah, a chance, Fringy. I know, I gotta give it a chance, I know. 
It's going to be terrible, but give it a chance. The thing is, well, like, uh, yeah. I, I didn't have... It's so weird because, like, I was familiar with Hades in a couple of versions, including the, um, like, Disney animated one before I played God of War 3 slash 2 slash 1. In one, he was a fucking demon monster that just went... Bleh, bleh. Like, uh, that was that was Hades, like a weird vision-y thing. It was like, okay, 2, he looks like the, the God of War 3 one, but just a little bit different, whatever. Um, And he's like this, you know, metal gothic hell god person that's covered in spikes and blood and flesh and he's voiced by Mr. Krabs, naturally. Um, and and I thought it was fucking fantastic. And if someone was like, yeah, but Hades should be armor or Hades should be more like well-kept, not like this this weird fleshy monster thing. I'd just be like, oh man, let them, let them try their own thing. Especially with mythology being one of the oldest things we can even adapt. Like, I'm surprised yeah, we're still much. hanging on to everything has to be a particular way when... I hate to say it. But person saying this, how familiar are you with this mythology, I wonder? Well, I guess it's the question, right? What is the actual authority for a lot of these mythologies when there are contradicting accounts for all of them? Yeah. Like, broad strokes, sure, but even in the case of some mythologies, even then it's like, hmm, who knows? a chance and that's the thing by the way i'm totally fine with people being like eh i don't like it i don't like it just don't tell me it's badly done all right or you can just give better arguments than it's badly done because yeah. it's different um unless of course it was to share continuity that's usually the way we go about it we have to make this clear with the moving on from tlj people are like how can you complain about luke or well, equal you could, like, if you remade the OT and you made Luke evil, you could do that, and it could actually be good. It's just that good, yeah. I would warn them if they were making that. I'd be like, you understand, people really don't want to see Luke Skywalker being the villain, right? You, you know that. Yeah, you're not actually, I promise you, you're not nearly as clever as you think you are. And it's going to be an uphill like fight. Evil. Like, if they were genuine, they're like, no, I have a really meaningful story to tell. It's like, all right, it's just, all right. you, just you know what you're in to, for, though. you know? People are going to be very re non-receptive to this. Um, which is the same thing you could have said to Ryan Johnson, but then he just fumbled it anyway, so never mind. Cry drags. Oh, cry. Uh, I fry cry. sags. Why nags? Pry crags. That's an interesting observation. Yeah. Something for me to consider. I'll take that into account for the future. Screw it. Hi, Fringy, Longman, and hello, Rags. Hello. Hey. hey. Hello. Hello. Are we getting a House of the Dragon EFAP? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. He's done. Ragnarok next. And I'm fucking struggling to get all the Ragnarok prep done in time. There's so much. Um, I'm excited. So much to talk about. Yeah, there is a lot to talk about. Rags, if you like Rimworld type games, I recommend Stranded, Alien Dawn. It's been good fun. Also, high ranks. Hello. Let me uh, look that up now. Door. Stranded, Alien Dawn. Oh, okay. Here it is. Stranded, Alien Dawn. Very positive. Okay. Interesting. Kratos Brave new okay. versus Jesus. Is Kratos vs. Boulder 2 Electric Boogaloo? Kinda. Jesus ain't gonna be able to be killed. It's just that the gap between fighting well, him again is gonna be longer than... He can Boulder. be killed, but... He come back? Yeah, I assume it's the... <laughs> the balls they would have if Jesus showed up in one of these games. My son, Kratos, must understand your path. Build. You must turn the other cheek. Sin. That just to hear Kratos be like, "Who are you?" Like, I, Jesus, my son. on the other cheek. Jesus. I will not. No, that is retarded. <laughs> That's what Kratos <laughs> says. Uh, game on Steam, Fight of Gods, banned in places. Fight of Gods, why? Because it's probably got like Muhammad in it. Oh, that could something. be why. Yeah, probably why. Uh, I missed one hour of this because I was watching EFAP 184 Screen Crush vid about why Wakanda, Wakanda, why Wanda did nothing wrong. I'll finish it later, but I don't know how you guys maintain your sanity. You guys are the best. Cheers. Well, thank oh. you. We too have been numbed. 
Yes. After many years of terrible arguments, few things. Oof. Mummified. <sighs> Mola, crew, rags, hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey. I just finished watching Shit. all the videos in Moolah. Started back in February and today I'm caught up. This has been such a journey. Oh. Wow. I'm very glad to hear that you're caught up. Hopefully you, uh, you had plenty of fun. Yeah, Absolutely. So it's been quite a journey. I love the community you guys cultivated. Love the discussions, the jokes, and even the tisms. EFAP movies and Gothic phone are some of my favorites. Rock on, my N-wording Ewoks. Be good to everybody. Lesbonius Bag Raggins. Belch. Very nice of you to say. That is very nice. Uh, we need to do more Gothic phone. Every once in a while, it's we, like, uh, good enough yeah. time. I was watching some of the highlights of us playing the um, Champed Up. That shit is, I will admit, Gothic Phone doesn't replace Champed Up because... Champed Up is special. The one thing Champed Up has is when you come up with this absolutely retarded creature for fighting, and then you see someone's idea for what would be the perfect enemy for that thing, and then, so you get this double whabby of the thing being funny, but also the mindset of the person who made it. It's like... Yes. Pretty hilarious. That's, it, it's legitimately a, a, a nice dynamic. The clever game. We yet. should, uh, yeah, we should play that again sometime. I agree. Which of Eevee's evolution would you have as a pet? Mm. Oh, I can't remember them all. Uh, I need to look it up. Which one's the safest? Probably Vaporeon, right? Compared to having a fire one and an electric one. Uh, uh, well, there's Umbreon, right? That one's just like darkness or something. That's <laughs> Eevee evolution. Umbreon is pretty. <laughs> Umbreon is pretty neat. It'd be I, funny, uh, like, the other ones set things on fire electrocute you, but the other, like, Umbreon, you just, it just stares at you and you sleep and you're like, well, uh, hi. Jolteron would probably, I feel like if you pet, you pet Jolteron, you're gonna get a jolt. Isn't it Jolteon? Is it, it's Jolteon, what did I say? Jolteron. Oh, I don't know why I said that. I was for a second, um, I was like, oh, I can't remember. Yeah, because it's uh, Vaporeon, Jolteon, uh, Flareon. Umbreon, Leafeon, hmm. uh, Sylveon, which I'm guessing is a new one, because uh, it's fairy type, which I don't remember being a type. Uh, and then Glyceon and Esperon. I, I like Umbreon. I, uh, I, like, I like that one. Uh, sorry, Eevee Evolution. Oh, yeah, because I got to yeah. All right. Why is it defaulting to, why is it going to Yahoo? It did that thing again. No. <coughs> See, uh, search engine, default browser. Google Chrome is your default browser. Search engine. Google, yeah. Chrome search? What about that? Yeah, it's doing that. It's, it's defaulting to Yahoo. Why is it doing that? I don't want that shit. That's weird. I got to... Uh... Yo, long man. Just watched you lay the smack down on that arrogant jerk Heimdall. If you can... First, I was actually reading that and I was like, wait, spoilers? And I was like, no, wait, both of you. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> like, uh, if you could really look into people, I'd love to see him meet Cthulhu. That would fix his wagon real good. That would be... Yeah, that's not going to end up good for him. I think his head might explode, but yeah. Fun. Um, I was going to then talk about maybe that scene, but then I was like, you know what? That'll be talked about extensively enough. The middle of Empire Strikes Back has pacing issues. Agree or disagree? The beginning of Empire Strikes Back has pacing issues? Middle. Is that what they said? The middle? Um... Nah. I don't think I so. I don't think so. The pace changes because yeah, we just, you, you wrap up the Hoth battle, but I don't think that... Yeah, there's not a... Yeah, I don't think there's an we issue. We blast in with that movie. Well, we don't even, actually. We start pretty chill. We establish the, the state of affairs. Then the battle happens, and it's pretty hectic. Calm back down. Slow build up. And then hectic again. And then it ends. Seems like a pretty normal way to pace a movie. Um, Obviously, the big problem with pacing is that we don't, we don't end up with... The, this is going to come up with God of War. What is the argument beyond, I thought this was slow. Then someone else says, well, I didn't. Right, and then you kind of know where. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, there's not a lot of places it can go. I've, I've had this issue for so long. Pacing as an argument is complicated. It's usually just reliant on whether or not people agree. And you could say that that applies to everything. It's like, not really. When I point out something doesn't make sense, you don't agree. It's like, you have to do more than that. Otherwise, the argument is over in my favor, or vice versa, if you know the argument is that way. 
Meanwhile, if I say pacing slow, you say pacing fast. Now what happens? Third party, I guess? <laughs> like, I don't know. I suppose the, the equivalent of that might be I say something that doesn't make sense and you say it does, but then that can still develop into I have to establish, you know, X is X and Y, and then you have to tell me why it's not. So uh, it just seems like there's more ways to actually get to the bottom of whether or not there's an inconsistency as opposed to pacing, but... You know, uh, Ironwood, everybody seems to be saying Ironwood is slow. Is that enough to say Ironwood is too slow? I suppose that'll be the argument. I'm having a hard time when writing about gameplay. What is the standard you guys usually apply? Does it change on genre? Tips on wording it? High rags. Hello. Um, the and... standard on gameplay? That's... It's very broad. Generally, you want to keep in mind things like ludonarrative dissonance and balance, uh, but it's, it's a really broad question. I mean, fundamentally, find out what the mechanics are, do they work consistently, and then what happens when they start to overlap, and what do they do when they push to the limits on the hardest difficulties? Are they reliable? Uh, I find that it's going to be, it's, it's always a controversial subject to be like, well, this first person shooter has 10 mechanics. And we're talking about like throwing grenades or activating special ability or being able to run on walls. Meanwhile, this one only has the five mechanics. It's like, so the ten's better then. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's see how, how well all of it works in context, right? Uh, this is the best way we can try and put everything on a level playing field of some kind. Like, does, how does chess do against God of War Ragnarok? It's like, well, that. That seems retarded. Like, I don't know how you compare them. But the closest you're going to get is by saying... I guess, how well do they achieve what they're trying to achieve within context of their own sets of rules. Um, but I understand it's complicated. The only problem is you just asked us, like, essentially, how do you write about writing? Because it's like this enormous thing that, that, that could encompass all kinds of different approaches. I would say, uh, check out my game reviews or fringies or rags and you'll get a good sense of what we tend to focus on first or last and how we break them down. Uh, this video is online of all three of us doing that, right? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. A friend has only one or two toes on one foot and none on the other. He walks and runs fine. He uses extra socks to make up for the space in his shoes. All right. Yeah, I suppose you can cram those in there and get them to fit in decently. Yeah. There you go, Fringy. Annihilated. The, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> They amputate toes to replace fingers all the time. They do? Oh. I... really? I'm obvi I'm assuming it's not literal, like, it must be some kind of, like, tips of fingers and they can replace them with parts of the ends of toes, maybe? I don't know. You can't, like, li if you replace one of your fingers with a toe, that's... <laughs> that's gonna be a different thing. That they're, uh... They're different sizes, right? I, 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 I think. Um, yeah, I figured that they wouldn't. Hmm. I mean, they're, they're totally different. Like, they're different appendages. Hey, Fringy, are you a Kiwi? Also, hi, Rex. Hello. No, uh, that's New Zealand. In the books, Gollum falls on his own. Frodo curses him earlier with the ring to kill himself if he tries to steal it. The theory is the ring destroyed itself that way. Frodo curses him earlier with the ring to kill himself if he tries to steal it. That's something Frodo can do. That also, that's a bit rough. Not gonna lie. If you get this ring, you have to kill yourself. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Does that sound like a Frodo thing to do? Maybe it is wit's end. <laughs> I, I've never known that. I don't know how that's never come up. Because I, I never read Lord of the Rings, so I don't know how anyone never mentioned that Frodo cursed Gollum to kill himself. Does that sound familiar to you guys? Gollum to kill no. himself. He didn't cause Gollum to kill himself, no. Uh, I mean, I've been talking about this for the past, like, few minutes. I don't know why. <laughs> There's nothing to I, I'm not, I haven't got any familiarity with this. <coughs> so, does Frodo curses Gollum earlier with the ring to kill himself if he tries to steal it? It's been so long since I've read the books, I can't remember what happens in them in that sort of specific element. In fact, I've probably forgotten a lot from the books just because it's been so long. Just, I don't know. That statement out of context sounds really weird to me. 
Uh, what's the best superpower you could choose for monetary gain? Saving or making applies. It can't be creation power, and it can't be portals either. I assume they mean it can't be teleporting then as well. Uh, for making money. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that lots of any power, really, like, m most powers will be able to be monetized quite well. As for which pretty one would be the best. Um, I feel like mind control is a pretty um, clear one. Well, if, I don't know if it counts, but, like, uh, what's her name from uh, Deadpool? The one with luck? Oh, just, Domino, yeah. Yeah, just take her power, go to a casino, I guess. And then, yeah, you just win infinitely. Or, and, uh, obviously, you're like going to be careful, as though. Well, probably another one. Like, I can see a lot of utility to that. Yeah, there you go. I think that would work out. Um, but obviously, and of course, any... you could fly. You could probably just get, you know, I feel like there's a lot of ways that you can make in, money um, doing that. In Misfits, they even showed the, like, the guy with the immortality who could just kill himself on TV and get paid loads for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. I don't remember that episode. Five minutes of Google makes me an expert for sure, but apparently New Zealand has the haka and Hawaii has the ha-ha. Ha-ha? The ha-ha. They're both similar but different. All right. Okay. Why the spam hate? It's delicious. Also, hi, doggo. Hello. The spam hate. I don't think I... Did we hate on I, spam? I don't, I don't think I've hated on spam, but it's not generally regarded as something that's like... Not preferable, um, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, no one ever, no one's ever like, wow, spam, that's delicious. I love oh, wait, spam. Get me some spam. So great. Uh, also, any good chance of a long fap of the live-action Scooby-Doo films? Also, hi, Fring Daddy G. Hey, those could be funny. Could be, yeah. I, uh, not sure of the chances of that happening, but... Yeah. America's Australians fought a war against birds. Me, an American, totally not fighting a war against wild hogs in Texas as I kill them for a helicopter with an M249 saw. Oh. I didn't know that was going on. War wars are happening all over the world, I guess. Yes, thanks, Mr. Guzman. Best weekend ever. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, get Peter. Do what he wanted to do for the 20th anniversary, including all of the extra footage, release new cuts in and on theaters and 4K, get all the money. I assume they're talking about if uh, you want to make the most money with the Lord of the Rings IP right now. Just oh, yeah. Re-release Re -release. and involve the stuff that Peter Jackson talked about that got cut. It's like, that's probably a good way to go, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, straight forward. Channel of the day, random film talk, long video on how Rings of Power is bad. Alrighty, fair enough. C.S. Lewis said in a lecture series on literature that the best marker for good stories is re-readability. I often think of that with current trash. Well, it's uh, it feels like it's a along the lines of something that is uh, that I think is true, which is that, you know, good work good creations endure and have a legacy and and uh and will be rewatched or reread or replayed meanwhile you know compared to right now where it feels like a lot of stuff is disposable comes out yeah and people talk about it a lot while it's out but nobody's like man you know what i want to rewatch like shang chi and the legend of the ten rings like i don't know that that's ever going to happen <laughs> like just unprompted it's, um, Meanwhile, people still go back to watch like The Incredibles or Shrek or um or Saving Private Ryan, you know. Yeah, and like uh, stories that are just absolutely laden with detail and uh, deliberate sort of choices in in whatever. Y y you'll uh, when you rewatch, you'll start to notice more that that they necessarily you know create knowing you will not necessarily catch it. Um, yep. and, and so when you rewatch, they're like, yeah, you got that now. And you're just like, yeah, and it's like, this is value that's coming out. I, easily use Ragnarok as an example, right? But when you play oh, yeah. both the games and you just enjoy the story for what happened in it and the very overt payoffs, and then you just think about it and you're like, man, good thing, you know, in 2018, Kratos learned to stop getting in the way of his own son's development and that, you know, his his own story, his own history can act as a lesson rather than this this ball and chain that's like almost dragging down both their lives. You know, he used his trauma as a way of moving on from it instead of allowing it as it was to cause extra damage. And you're like, oh, that's, that's interesting. And you're like, oh yeah, and Freya, you know? She kind of killed her own son by trying to protect him. 
Like, oh mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's kind of that's she's 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 Kratos. Oh my god, she just she just didn't get to yeah. make that out. You know, oh my god. And then you're like, uh, the the inf that game's point about the influence parents have over their children. Then you play Ragnarok, and you're like, man, it sucks that you know Magdi and Modi had such a shit dad. Why is Thor such a horrible person that you get all the seeds of his father Oof. with him? And you're like, oh, yeah. all slotting in. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so bee consumption is uh, definitely an element that ha is indicative of quality, but I will say there are some stories that I don't relish consuming ever again because of what they're about or what they did. Uh, I don't know that I, I don't know when I'll ever again watch The Father. Uh, so it's a rough movie to watch and it's about very specific things and it makes its point incredibly well. It's just like. Uh, there's a couple of people I know like that's an experience they don't necessarily want to have again, but they cherish it, sort of thing. Yeah, but I guess, I guess at the very least, that's a film you would be compelled to talk about again meaningfully. Yes, and there's shit tons in it that on a rewatch you'll pick up. So it still kind of applies. Uh, there's an official Elden Ring manga which is pure comedy centric. It's honestly your type of humor. Check it out. It's only ten chapters. Um. I might do, I guess. How come I've never heard of that from anything else? I would have thought that would have come up a bit, but uh, sounds neat. Elden Ring manga, and it's official as well. So it came out of uh, FromSoft, or they licensed it, I guess. But and it's and it's just comedy. That's all these all these interesting facts about it, you know. Yeah. Um, but yes, that's it. That's all of our Rings oh. of Power super chats and the super chats that came in while we were talking about it. Um, that's not it for, uh, our catch-up in total, though. <laughs> not a surprise. We're still working on EFAP 200. Those will just be released all together once they're done. Um, and, well, when this is out, whenever that may be, other episodes will be out. So, you know what? There's no point in even saying what's coming or what isn't on the way or whatever, because I, I don't even know at this point. I'm just glad that we're able to hang out with you at home listening right now. Or you know what? Maybe at work. Or you know what? Maybe traveling right. somewhere. Yeah, that's right. We get a lot of messages from people saying that it helps get through uh, work. And again, we're very, very grateful for every super chat that we get. That's why we read them all. It's a uh, thank you very much for those. Um, yep, for I hope that I hope that yours was answered well. And so, thank you all for listening to EFAP number whatever this and that that that's going to be it for us for now. That's the one. Uh, that's the one. Hope you hope you had fun and uh well. Good night. Good morning. Good afternoon. Yeah, good we'll night everybody. Yeah, bye, bye 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 bye. See you later. Yeah.